End of three weeks he was crowned by the legate, in the vacancy of the patriarch, but the Venetian clergy soon filled the chapter of street. Sophia, seated Thomas Morosini on the ecclesiastical throne, and employed every art to perpetuate in their own nation the honors and benefices of the Greek Church. For without delay they Successor of Constantine instructed Palestine, France and Rome Of this memorable revolution To Palestine he sent, as a trophy The gates of Constantinople, and the chain of the harbor, five end Adopted, from the assis of Jerusalem, the laws or customs best Adapted to a French colony and conquest in the east in his epistles, the natives of France are encouraged to swell that colony, and to secure that conquest, to people a magnificent city, and a fertile land, which will reward the labors both of the priest and the soldier. He congratulates the Roman pontiff on the restoration of his authority in the East, invites him to Extinguish the Greek schism by his presence in a general council, and implores his blessing and forgiveness for the disobedient pilgrims. Prudence and dignity are blended in the answer of Innocent. 6. In the subversion of the Byzantine Empire, he arraigns the vices of man, and adores the providence of God, they Conquerors will be absolved or condemned by their future conduct. The validity of their treaty depends on the judgment of Street. Peter, but he inculcates their most sacred duty of establishing a just subordination of obedience and tribute, from the Greeks to the Latins, from the magistrate to the clergy, and from the clergy to the Pope. 1 return, see the original treaty of partition, in the Venetian Chronicle of Andrew Dandolo, p. 326-330, and the subsequent election in Villehardouin, no. 136-140, with Duckenge. In his observations, and the book of his Histoire d. Constantinople sous l'Empire de François. 2. Return after mentioning the nomination of the doge by a French elector his kinsman Andrew Dandolo approves his exclusion. Quidem venit orum fidelis et nobilis senex, usus orationi satis. Probabili, N.C., which has been embroidered by modern writers from Blondes to El Ebo. 3. Return, Nystus p. 384, with the vain ignorance of a Greek, describes the Marquis of Montferrat as a underscore maritime underscore power. Dampardian de oikaiske paralion. Was he deceived by the Byzantine theme of Lombardy which extended along the coast of Calabria? 4. Return they exacted an oath from Thomas Morosini to appoint no canons of street. Sophia the lawful electors, except Venetians who had lived ten years at Venice, and C. But the foreign clergy was envious, the Pope disapproved this national monopoly, and of the six Latin patriarchs of Constantinople, only the first and they Last were Venetians. 5. Return, Nystus, p. 383. 6. Return, the epistles of Innocent III are a rich fund for the ecclesiastical and civil institution of the Latin Empire of Constantinople, and the most important of these epistles, of which the collection in two volume in folio is published by Stephen. Balias, are inserted in his Gusta, in Muratori, Scripture. Rerum.
Italicarum, Tom. 3P LC 94105. In the division of the Greek provinces, 7 the share of the Venetians was more ample than that of the Latin Emperor. No more. Then one fourth was appropriated to his domain, a clear moiety of. The remainder was reserved for Venice, and the other moiety was distributed among the adventurers of France and Lombardy. The Venerable Dandolo was proclaimed despot of Romania, and invested after the Greek fashion with the purple buskins. He ended at Constantinople his long and glorious life, and if the prerogative was personal, the title was used by his successors till the middle of the 14th century, with the singular, though true, addition of lords of one-fourth and a half of the Roman Empire. 8. The Doge a slave of state, was seldom permitted to depart from the helm of the Republic, but his place was supplied by the underscore bail underscore, or regent, who exercised a supreme jurisdiction over the colony of Venetians, they possessed three of the eight quarters of the city, and his independent tribunal was composed of six judges, four councillors, two chamberlains, two fiscal advocates, and a constable. Their long experience of the eastern trade enabled them to select their portion with discernment, they had rashly accepted the dominion and defense of Adrianople, but it was the more reasonable aim of their policy to form a chain of factories and cities and islands along the maritime coast from the neighborhood of Ragusa to the Hellespont and the Bosphorus. The labor and cost of such extensive conquests exhausted their treasury, they abandoned their maxims of government, adopted a feudal system, and contented themselves with the homage of their nobles, nine for the possessions which these private vassals undertook to reduce and maintain and thus, it was that the family of Sanna acquired the Duchy of Naxos, which involved the greatest part of the archipelago. For the price of 10,000 marks, the Republic purchased of the Marquis of Montferrat the fertile island of Crete or Candia, with the ruins of a hundred cities, ten but its improvement was stinted by the proud and narrow spirit of an aristocracy, eleven and they. Wisest senators would confess that the sea, not the land, was the treasury of street. Mark. In the moiety of the adventurers they. Marquis Boniface might claim the most liberal reward, and. Besides the Isle of Crete, his exclusion from the throne was compensated by the royal title and the provinces beyond the Hellespont. But he prudently exchanged that distant and difficult conquest for the kingdom of Thessalonica Macedonia, twelve days journey from the capital, where he might be supported by the neighboring powers of his brother-in-law the king of Hungary. His Progress was hailed by the voluntary or reluctant acclamations of the natives, and Greece, the proper and ancient Greece, again received a Latin conqueror, twelve who trod with indifference that classic ground. He viewed with a careless eye the beauties of the Valley of Tempe, traversed with a cautious step the Straits of Thermopyl, occupied the unknown cities of Thebes, Athens, and Argos, and assaulted the fortifications of Corinth and Napoli, 13, which resisted his arms. The lots of the Latin pilgrims were 
regulated by chance or choice or subsequent exchange, and they abused, with intemperate joy, their triumph over the lives and fortunes of a great people. After a minute survey of the provinces, they weighed in the scales of avarice the revenue of each district, the advantage of the situation, and the ample or scanty supplies for the maintenance of soldiers and horses. There presumption claimed and divided the long-lost dependencies of the Roman scepter, the Nile and Euphrates rolled through their imaginary realms, and happy was the warrior who drew for his prize the palace of the Turkish Sultan of Iconium. 14 I shall not descend to the pedigree of families and the rent roll of estates. But I wish to specify that the Counts of Blois and Street Paul were invested with the Duchy of Nice and the Lordship of Demotica, 15. The principal fiefs were held by the service of Constable Chamberlain, Cupbearer, Butler, and Chief Cook, and R. Historian, Geoffrey of Villehardouin, obtained a fair establishment on the banks of the Hebrus, and united the double office of Marshal of Champagne and Romania. At the head of his knights and archers, each baron mounted on horseback to secure the possession of his share, and their first efforts were generally successful. But the public force was weakened by their dispersion, and a thousand quarrels must arise under a law, and among men, whose sole umpire was the sword. Within three months, after the conquest of Constantinople, the Emperor and the King of Thessalonica drew their hostile followers into the field, they were reconciled by the authority of the Doge, the advice of the Marshal, and the firm freedom of their peers. 16. 7. Return, in the Treaty of Partition, most of the names are corrupted by the scribes, they might be restored, and a good map, suited to the last age of the Byzantine Empire, would be an improvement of geography. But, alas Danville is no more. 8. Return, their style was Dominus Quart Partis et Dimiti. Imperii Romani, till Giovanni Dolfino, who was elected Dogen. The year of 1356, Sanuto, p. 530, 641. For the government of Constantinople, see Dukenge, Histoire DC, p. 37. 9. Return, Dukenge, History DC, p. 26, has marked the conquests made by the state or nobles of Venice of the islands of Candia, Corfu, Cephalonia, Zanti, Naxos, Peros, Melos, Andrus, Mycon, Syro, Cea, and Lemnos. 10. Return, Boniface sold the Isle of Candia, August 12, A.D. 1204. See the Act in Sanuto, p. 533, but I cannot understand how. It could be his mother's portion, or how she could be the daughter of an emperor Alexius. 11. Return, in the year 1212, the Doge Peter Zani sent a colony to Candia, drawn from every quarter of Venice. But in their savage manners and frequent rebellions, the Candiates may be compared to the Corsicans under the yoke of Genoa. And when I compare the accounts of Belen and Tornafit, I cannot discern much difference between the Venetian and the Turkish island. 12. Return, Vilharduin, number 159, 160, 
173-177, and Nystis. P. 387-394, describe the expedition into Greece of the Marquis. Boniface. The Chennaiate might derive his information from his brother Michael, Archbishop of Athens, whom he paints as an orator, a statesman, and a saint. His encomium of Athens, and the description of Tempe, should be published from the Bodleian Ms. of Nystus, Fabric, Bibliot, GRC, Tom, 6P, 405, and Wood, have deserved Mr. Harris's inquiries. 13. Return, Napoli di Romania, or Napolia, the ancient seaport of Argos, is still a place of strength and consideration, situate on a rocky peninsula, with a good harbour, Chandler's Travels. Into Greece, p. 227. 14. Return, I have softened the expression of Nystus, who strives to expose the presumption of the Franks. See the Rebus. Post C. P. Expugnatum, P. 375-384. 15. Return, a city surrounded by the river Hebrus, and 6. Leagues to the south of Adrianople, received from its double wall. The Greek name of Didymotiachos, insensibly corrupted into Demotica and Dimot. I have preferred the more convenient end. Modern appellation of Demotica. This place was the last Turkish residence of Charles XII. 16. Return, their quarrel is told by Vilharduin, no. 146-158 with the spirit of freedom. The merit and reputation of the marshal are so acknowledged by the Greek historian, p. 387. Megapara touvtvn dar and wundunam in straight umasi, unlike some modern heroes, whose exploits are only visible in their own memoirs. Asterisk note, William D. Champ Light, brother of the Count of Dijon, assumed the title of Prince of Achaia, on the death of his brother, he returned, with regret, to France, to assume his paternal inheritance, and left Vilhardu in his underscore Bailey underscore, on condition that if he did not return within a year Vilhardu in, was to retain an investiture. Brossets ad. To L. E. Bo, Vol. 17 p. 200. M. Brossett adds, from the Greek chronicler edited. By M. Butchen, the somewhat unkight trick by which. Vilharduin disembarrassed himself from the troublesome claim. Of Robert, the cousin of the Count of Dijon. To the succession. He contrived that Robert should arrive just fifteen days too late, and with the general concurrence of the assembled knights, was himself invested with the principality. Ibid p. 283. M. Two fugitives, who had reigned at Constantinople, still asserted the title of emperor, and the subjects of their fallen throne might be moved to pity by the misfortunes of the elder Alexius, or excited to revenge by the spirit of Morzuifal. A domestic alliance, a common interest, a similar guilt, and the merit of extinguishing his enemies, a brother and a nephew, induced the more recent usurper to unite with the former the relics of his power. Morzifal was received with smiles and honors in the camp of his father Alexius, but the wicked can never love, and should rarely trust, their fellow criminals, 
he was seized in the bath. Deprived of his eyes, stripped of his troops and treasures, and turned out to wander an object of horror and contempt to those who with more propriety could hate, and with more justice could punish, the assassin of the Emperor Isaac and his son. As they tyrant, pursued by fear or remorse, was stealing over to Asia, he was seized by the Latins of Constantinople, and condemned, after an open trial, to an ignominious death. His judges debated the mode of his execution, the axe, the wheel, or the stake, and it was resolved that Morsiful 17 should ascend the Theodosian column, a pillar of white marble of 147 feet in height. 18. From the summit he was cast down headlong, and dashed in pieces on the pavement, in the presence of innumerable spectators, who filled the Forum of Taurus, and admired the accomplishment of an old prediction, which was explained by this singular event. 19. The fate of Alexius is less tragical, he was sent by the Marquis a captive to Italy, and a gift to the King of the Romans, but he had not much to applaud his fortune, if the sentence of imprisonment and exile were changed from a fortress in the Alps to a monastery in Asia. But his daughter, before the national calamity, had been given in marriage to a young hero who continued the succession, and restored the throne, of the Greek princes. 20. The valor of Theodore Lascaris was signalized in the two sieges of Constantinople. After the flight of Morzuifal, when the Latins were already in the city, he offered himself as their emperor to the soldiers and people, and his ambition, which might be virtuous, was undoubtedly brave. Could he have infused a soul into the multitude, they might have crushed the strangers. Under their feet, their abject despair refused his aid, and Theodore retired to breathe the air of freedom in Anatolia. Beyond the immediate view and pursuit of the conquerors. Under the title at first of despot, and afterwards of emperor, he drew to his standard the bolder spirits, who were fortified against slavery by the contempt of life, and as every means was lawful, for the public safety implored without scruple the alliance of the Turkish Sultan Nice, where Theodore established his residence, Prusa and Philadelphia. Smyrna and Ephesus, opened their gates to their deliverer, he derived strength and reputation from his victories, and even from his defeats, and the successor of Constantine preserved a fragment of the empire from the banks of the Maunder to the suburbs of Nicomedia, and at length of Constantinople. Another portion distant and obscure, was possessed by the lineal heir of the Comni, a son of the virtuous Manuel, a grandson of the tyrant Andronicus. His name was Alexius, and the epithet of Great 201 was applied perhaps to his stature, rather than to his exploits. By the indulgence of the Angeli, he was appointed governor or duke of Trebizond, 21. 211 His birth gave him ambition, the revolution independence. And, without changing his title, he reigned in peace from Sinope. To the Phasis, along the coast of the Black Sea. His nameless son. And successor 212 is described as the vassal of the Sultan, whom he served with two hundred lances, 
that Comnian prince was no more than Duke of Trebizond, and the title of emperor was first assumed by the pride and envy of the grandson of Alexius. In the west, a third fragment was saved from the common shipwreck by Michael, a bastard of the house of Angeli, who, before the revolution, had been known as a hostage, a soldier, and a rebel. His flight from the camp of the Marquis Boniface secured his freedom, by his marriage with the governor's daughter, he commanded the important place of Durazzo, assumed the title of despot, and founded a strong and conspicuous principality in Epirus, Talia, and Thessaly, which have ever been peopled by a warlike race. The Greeks, who had offered their service to their new sovereigns, were excluded by the haughty Latins twenty-two from all civil and military honors, as a nation born to tremble and obey. Their resentment prompted them to show that they might have been useful friends, since they could be dangerous enemies, their nerves were braced by adversity whatever was learned or holy, whatever was noble or valiant, rolled away into the independent states of Trebizond, Epirus, and Nice, and a single patrician is marked by the ambiguous praise of attachment and loyalty to the Franks. The vulgar herd of the cities and the country would have gladly submitted to a mild and regular servitude, and the transient disorders of war would have been obliterated by some years of industry and peace. But peace was banished, and industry was crushed, in the disorders of the feudal system. The underscore Roman underscore emperors of Constantinople, if they were endowed with abilities, were armed with power for the protection of their subjects, their laws were wise, and their administration was simple. The Latin throne was filled by a titular prince, the chief, and often the servant, of his licentious confederates, the fiefs of the empire. From a kingdom to a castle, were held and ruled by the sword of the barons, and their discord, poverty, and ignorance, extended the ramifications of tyranny to the most sequestered villages. The Greeks were oppressed by the double weight of the priests, who were invested with temporal power, and of the soldier, who was inflamed by fanatic hatred, and the insuperable bar of religion and language forever separated the stranger and the native. As long as the Crusaders were united at Constantinople, the memory of their conquest, and the terror of their arms, imposed silence on the captive land, their dispersion betrayed, the smallness of their numbers and the defects of their discipline, and some failures and mischances revealed the secret, that they were not invincible. As the fears of the Greeks abetted, their hatred increased. They murdered, they conspired, and before a year of slavery had elapsed, they implored, or accepted, the succor of a barbarian, whose power they had felt, and whose gratitude they trusted. 23. 17. Return, see the fate of Morzuafl and Nystus, p. 393. Vilharduin, no 141-145, 163, and Guntherus, c. 20, 21. Neither the marshal nor the monk afford a grain of pity for a tyrant or rebel, whose punishment, however, was more unexampled than his crime. 18. Return, the column of Arcadius, which represents in Basso. Really Evo his victories, 
or those of his father Theodosius, is still extant at Constantinople. It is described and measured. Julius, Topograph 47, Bandurai, Ad L. I. Antiquit. C. P. P. 507, and C. and Tornafit, Voyage du Levant, Tom 2 Lettre. 12 p. 231. Compare Wilkin, Note, Vol VP 388 m. 19, Return, The Nonsense of Gunter and the Modern Greeks. Concerning this underscore columna fatidica underscore, is unworthy of notice, but it is singular enough, that fifty years before the Latin conquest, the poet Tsetses, Kiliad, 9277, relates the dream of a matron, who saw an army in the forum, and a man sitting on the column, clapping his hands, and uttering a loud exclamation. Asterisk. Note, we read in the chronicle of the conquest of Constantinople, and of the establishment of the French in the Moria, translated by J. A. Butchen, Paris, 1825, p. 64 that Leo VI, called the philosopher, had prophesied that a perfidious emperor should be precipitated from the top of this column. The Crusaders considered themselves under an obligation to fulfill this prophecy. Brosset, Note on El Ebo, Vol. 17 p. 180. M. Brosset announces that a complete edition of this work, of which the original Greek of the first book only has been published by M. Butchen in preparation, to form part of the new series of the Byzantine historian M. 20, Return, The Dynasties of Nice, Trebizond, and Epirus, of which Nystas saw the origin without much pleasure or hope, are learnedly explored, and clearly represented, in the family. Byzantine of Dukenj. 201, Return, this was a title, not a personal appellation. Joinvili speaks of the Grand Comnet, E.T. Sire D. Trafficent. Falmerayer, P. 82 M. 21, Return, except some facts in Pachimer and Nisphorus. Gregoras, which will hereafter be used, the Byzantine writers. Disdain to speak of the Empire of Trebizond, or Principality of the underscore lossy underscore, and among the Latins, it is conspicuous only in the Romancers of the Ziv or XVTH centuries. Yet the indefatigable Duckenj has dug out, fam byz p 192, two authentic passages in Vincent of Beauvais, LXXXI c 144, and the Protonotary. Ogarius, Apud Waiting, A.D. 1279, Number 4. 211, Return, on the Revolutions of Trebizond under the Later Empire down to this period, see Falmerayer, Geschichte. Kaisertham's von Trapezunt, Chapter 3. The wife of Manuel fled with her infant sons and her treasure from the relentless enmity of Isaac Angelus. Falmerayer conjectures that her arrival enabled the Greeks of that region to make head against the formidable Thamar, the Georgian queen of Teflis, p. 42. They gradually formed a dominion on the banks of the Phasis, which they distracted government of the Angeli neglected or were unable to suppress. On the capture of Constantinople by the Latins, Alexius 
was joined by many noble fugitives from Constantinople. He had always retained the names of Xar and Basileta V. He now fixed the seat of his empire at Trebizond, but he had never abandoned his pretensions to the Byzantine throne. Chapter 3 Falmerayer appears to make out a triumphant case as to the assumption of the royal title by Alexius I. Since the publication of M. Falmerayer's work, Munchen, 1827, M. Tafel has published, at the end of the opuscula of Eustathius, a curious chronicle of Trebizond by Michael Panaritis, Frankfurt, 1832. It gives the succession of the emperors, and some other curious circumstances of their wars with the several Mohammedan powers. M. 212. Return, the successor of Alexius was his son in law, Andronicus I, of the Comnian family, surnamed Gedon. There were five successions between Alexius and John, according to Falmerayer, p. 103. The troops of Trebizond fought in the army of Cheldon, the Karismian, against Alaladin, the Seljukian Sultan of Rum, but as allies rather than vassals, p. 107. It was after the defeat of Cheldon that they furnished their contingent to Eliadin. Falmerayer struggles in vain to mitigate this mark of the subjection of the Komni to the Sultan. p. 116 m. 22, return, the portrait of the French Latins is drawn in. Nicetus by the hand of prejudice and resentment, Guten TV and all on. Ecnni IV Ario V, RGA Parasumba Bloscatius in Hini Conto all a day. Tiv TV and Carat Wun H TV and, Musvn Parato IV Barbaroi V Tauto IV. Epexenizato, K Paratauto Oime I then Jusen San and Miroi, K. Tun Kolonix and Tou Logu Perstri Conta. P. 791 edition. Beck. 23, return, I here begin to use, with freedom and confidence. The eight books of the Histo IRDC P. Su Lempire de Francois, which Duckenge has given as a supplement to Vilharduin, and which, in a barbarous style, deserves the Praise of an original and classic work. The Latin conquerors had been saluted with a solemn and early embassy from John, or Joan Nice, or Kalo John, the revolted chief of the Bulgarians and Wallachians. He deemed himself their brother, as the votary of the Roman pontiff, from whom he had received the regal title and a holy banner and in the subversion of the Greek monarchy, he might aspire to the name of their friend and accomplice. But Kalo John was astonished to find that the Count of Flanders had assumed the pomp and pride of the successors of Constantine, and his ambassadors were dismissed with a haughty message that the rebel must deserve a pardon by touching with his forehead the footstool of the imperial throne. His resentment 24 would have exhaled in acts of violence and blood, his cooler policy watched the rising discontent of the Greeks, affected a tender concern for their sufferings, and promised that their first struggles for freedom should be supported by his person and kingdom. The conspiracy was propagated by national hatred, the firmest band of association and secrecy, the Greeks were impatient to sheathe their daggers 
in the breasts of the victorious strangers, but the execution was prudently delayed, till Henry, the emperor's brother, had transported the flower of his troops beyond the Hellespont. Most of the towns and villages of Thrace were true to the moment and the signal, and the Latins, without arms or suspicion, were slaughtered by the vile and merciless revenge of their slaves. From Demotica, the first scene of the massacre, the surviving vassals of the Count of Street. Paul escaped to Adrianople, but they French and Venetians, who occupied that city, were slain or expelled by the furious multitude, the garrisons that could effect their retreat fell back on each other towards the metropolis, and the fortresses, that separately stood against the rebels, were ignorant of each other's and of their sovereigns. Fate The voice of fame and fear announced the revolt of the Greeks and the rapid approach of their Bulgarian ally, and Kalo John, not depending on the forces of his own kingdom, had drawn from the Scythian wilderness a body of 14,000 Comans, who drank, as it was said, the blood of their captives, and sacrificed the Christians on the altars of their gods. 25. 24. Return, in Kalo John's answer to the Pope we may find his Claims and Complaints, Gusta Innocent 3 c. 108, 109 He was Cherished at Rome as the prodigal son. 25. Return, the Comans were a Tartar or Turkmen horde, which Encamped in the Zeeth and Zeeth centuries on the verge of Moldavia the greater part were pagans, but some were Mahometans. And the whole horde was converted to Christianity, A.D. 1370, by Louis, King of Hungary. Alarmed by this sudden and growing danger, the emperor dispatched a swift messenger to recall Count Henry and his troops, and had Baldwin expected the return of his gallant brother, with a supply of 20,000 Armenians, he might have encountered the invader with equal numbers and a decisive superiority of arms and discipline. But the spirit of chivalry could seldom discriminate caution from cowardice, and the emperor took the field with a hundred and forty knights, and their train of archers and sergeants. The marshal, who dissuaded and obeyed, led the vanguard in their march to Adrianople, the main body was commanded by the Count of Blois, the aged doge of Venice followed with the rear, and their scanty numbers were increased from all sides by the fugitive Latins. They undertook to besiege the rebels of Adrianople, and such was the pious tendency of the Crusades that they employed the Holy Week in pillaging the country for their subsistence, and in framing engines for the destruction of their fellow Christians. But the Latins were soon interrupted and alarmed by the light cavalry of the Comans, who boldly skirmished to the edge of their imperfect lines, and a Proclamation was issued by the Marshal of Romania, that, on the trumpet's sound, the cavalry should mount and form, but that none, under pain of death, should abandon themselves to a desultory and dangerous pursuit. This wise injunction was first disobeyed by the Count of Blois, who involved the Emperor in his Rashness and ruin. The Comans, of the Parthian or Tartar school, fled before their first charge, but after a career of two leagues, 
when the knights and their horses were almost breathless, they suddenly turned, rallied, and encompassed the heavy squadrons of the Franks. The count was slain on the field. The emperor was made prisoner, and if the one disdained to fly, if the other refused to yield, their personal bravery made a poor atonement for their ignorance, or neglect, of the duties of a general. 26. 26. Return, Nystus, from ignorance, or malice, imputes the defeat to the cowardice of Dandolo, p. 383, but Vilharduin shares his own glory with his venerable friend, Key Veals Home. Er et goat en evioid, mais mold noma er sages et prius et vigoros. Number 193, asterisk note, Gibbon appears to me to have misapprehended. The passage of Nystus. He says, that principal and subtlest. Mischief. That primary cause of all the horrible miseries. Suffered by the underscore Romans underscore, i.e. the Byzantines. It is an a fusion of malicious triumph against the Venetians, to whom he always ascribes the capture of Constantinople M. Chapter LXI, Partition of the Empire by the French and Venetians Part 2 Proud of his victory and his royal prize, the Bulgarian advanced to relieve Adrianople and achieve the destruction of the Latins. They must inevitably have been destroyed, if the Marshal of Romania had not displayed a cool courage and consummate skill. Uncommon in all ages, but most uncommon in those times, when war was a passion, rather than a science. His grief and fears were poured into the firm and faithful bosom of the doge, but in the camp he diffused an assurance of safety, which could only be realized by the general belief. All day he maintained his perilous station between the city and the barbarians. Vilharduin decamped in silence at the dead of night, and his Masterly retreat of three days would have deserved the praise of Xenophon and the Ten Thousand. In the rear, the marshal supported the weight of the pursuit, in the front, he moderated the impatience of the fugitives, and wherever the Comans approached, they were repelled by a line of impenetrable spears. On the third day, the weary troops beheld the sea, the solitary town of Rodosta, 27 and their friends, who had landed from the Asiatic shore. They embraced, they wept, but they united their arms and councils, and in his brother's absence, Count Henry assumed the regency of the empire, at once in a state of childhood and Caducity. 28 If the Comans withdrew from the summer heats, 7. Thousand Latins, in the hour of danger, deserted Constantinople. Their brethren, and their vows. Some partial success was overbalanced by the loss of 120 knights in the field of Rusium, and of the imperial domain, no more was left. Then the capital, with two or three adjacent fortresses on the shores of Europe and Asia. The king of Bulgaria was resistless and inexorable, and Kalo John respectfully eluded the demands of the Pope, who conjured his new proselyte to restore peace and the emperor to the afflicted Latins. The deliverance of Baldwin was no longer he said, in the power of man, that prince had died in prison, and the manner of his death is variously related by ignorance and credulity. 
the lovers of a tragic legend will be. Pleased to hear, that the royal captive was tempted by the amorous queen of the Bulgarians, that his chaste refusal exposed him to the falsehood of a woman and the jealousy of a savage. That his hands and feet were severed from his body, that his bleeding trunk was cast among the carcasses of dogs and horses. And that he breathed three days, before he was devoured by the birds of prey. Twenty-nine about twenty years afterwards, in a wood of the Netherlands, a hermit announced himself as the true Baldwin, the Emperor of Constantinople, and lawful sovereign of Flanders. He related the wonders of his escape, his adventures, and his penance, among a people prone to believe and to rebel, and, in the first transport, Flanders acknowledged her long-lost sovereign. A short examination before the French court detected the impostor, who was punished with an ignominious death, but the Flemings still adhered to the pleasing error, and the Countess. Jane is accused by the gravest historians of sacrificing to her ambition the life of an unfortunate father. 30. 27. Return, The Truth of Geography, and the Original Text of Vilhardouin, No. 194, Place Rodesto Three Days Journey. Trois Journeys, from Adrianople, but Vijnir, in his version, has most absurdly substituted underscore Trois underscore, and this error, which is not corrected by Dukange has entrapped several moderns, whose names I shall spare. 28. Return, the reign and end of Baldwin are related by Vilharduin and Nystus. P. 386 416, and their omissions are supplied by Duckange in his observations, and to the end of his first book. 29. Return, after brushing away all doubtful and improbable circumstances, we may prove the death of Baldwin, 1. By the firm belief of the French barons, Vilharduin, Number 230. 2. By the Declaration of Collojohn himself, who excuses his not releasing the captive emperor, Kia debitum carnis ex salverat cum carcera. Teen retur, Gusta Innocent 3c 109, asterisk note, compare von Romer. Geschichte Hohenstaufen, Vol. 2p 237. Petito, in. His preface to Vilharduin in the Collection des Memoirs. Relatif sur l'histoire de France, Tom. IP 85, expresses his. Belief in the first part of the tragic legend. M. 30, return, see the story of this imposter from the French end. Flemish Writers in Duckenge, History DC, P. 3. 9, and they Ridiculous fables that were believed by the monks of Street. Albans. In Matthew Paris, History. Major, P. 271, 272. In all civilized hostility, a treaty is established for they exchange or ransom of prisoners, and if their captivity be prolonged, their condition is known, and they are treated according to their rank with humanity or honor. But the savage Bulgarian was a stranger to the laws of war, his prisons were involved in darkness and silence, and above a year elapsed before the Latins could be assured of the death of Baldwin, before his brother, the regent Henry, would consent to assume the title of emperor. 
His moderation was applauded by the Greeks as an act of rare and inimitable virtue. Their light and perfidious ambition was eager to seize or anticipate the moment of a vacancy, while a law of succession, the guardian both of the prince and people, was gradually defined and confirmed in the hereditary monarchies of Europe. In the support of the Eastern Empire, Henry was gradually left without an associate, as the heroes of the Crusade retired from the world or from the war. The Doge of Venice, the Venerable Dandolo, in the fullness of years and glory, sunk into the grave. The Marquis of Montferrat was slowly recalled from the Peloponnesian War to the revenge of Baldwin and the defense of Thessalonica. Some nice disputes of feudal homage and service were reconciled in a personal interview between the emperor and the king, they were firmly united by mutual esteem and the common danger, and their alliance was sealed by the nuptials of Henry with the daughter of the Italian prince. He soon deplored the loss of his friend and father. At the persuasion of some faithful Greeks, Boniface made a bold and successful inroad among the hills of Rhodope, the Bulgarians fled on his approach, they assembled to harass his retreat. On the intelligence that his rear was attacked, without waiting for any defensive armor, he leaped on horseback, couched his lance, and drove the enemies before him, but in the rash pursuit he was pierced with a mortal wound, and the head of the king of Thessalonica was presented to Kalo John, who enjoyed the honors, without the merit, of victory. It is here, at this melancholy event, that the pen or the voice of Geoffrey of Vilharduin seems to drop or to expire, 31 and if he still exercised his military office of Marshal of Romania, his subsequent exploits are buried in oblivion. 32 The character of Henry was not unequal to his arduous situation, in the siege of Constantinople, and beyond the Hellespont, he had deserved the fame of a valiant knight and a skillful commander, and his courage was tempered with a degree of prudence and mildness unknown to his impetuous brother. In the double war against the Greeks of Asia and the Bulgarians of Europe, he was ever the foremost on shipboard or on horseback, and though he cautiously provided for the success of his arms, the drooping Latins were often roused by his example to save and to second their fearless emperor. But such efforts, and some supplies of men and money from France, were of less avail than the errors, the cruelty, and death, of their most formidable adversary. When the despair of the Greek subjects invited Kalo John as their deliverer, they hoped that he would protect their liberty and adopt their laws, they were soon taught to compare the degrees of national ferocity, and to execrate the savage conqueror, who no longer dissembled his intention of dispeopling Thrace, of demolishing the cities, and of transplanting the inhabitants beyond the Danube. Many towns and villages of Thrace were already evacuated, a heap of ruins marked the place of Philip Apolles, and a similar calamity was expected at Demotica and Adrianople, by the first authors of the revolt. They raised a cry of grief and repentance to the throne. Of Henry, the emperor alone had the magnanimity to forgive and trust them. No more than four hundred knights, with their 
sergeants and archers, could be assembled under his banner, and with this slender force he fought 321 and repulsed the Bulgarian, who, besides his infantry, was at the head of 40,000 horse. In this expedition, Henry felt the difference between a hostile and a friendly country, the remaining cities were preserved by his arms, and the savage, with shame and loss, was compelled to relinquish his prey. The siege of Thessalonica was the last of the evils which Kalojan inflicted or suffered, he was stabbed in the night in his tent, and the general, perhaps the assassin, who found him weltering in his blood, ascribed the blow, with general applause, to the lance of street. Demetrius 33 After several victories, the prudence of Henry concluded an honorable peace with the successor of the tyrant, and with the Greek princes of Nice and Epirus. If he ceded some doubtful limits, an ample kingdom was reserved for himself and his feudatories, and his reign, which lasted only ten years, afforded a short interval of prosperity and peace. Far above the narrow policy of Baldwin and Boniface, he freely entrusted to the Greeks the most important offices of the state and army, and this liberality of sentiment and practice was the more seasonable, as the princes of Nice and Epirus had already learned to seduce and employ the mercenary valor of the Latins. It was the aim of Henry to unite and reward his deserving subjects, of every nation and language, but he appeared less solicitous to accomplish the impracticable union of the two churches. Pelagius, the Pope's legate, who acted as the sovereign of Constantinople, had interdicted the worship of the Greeks, and sternly imposed the payment of tithes, the double procession of the Holy Ghost, and a blind obedience to the Roman Pontiff. As the weaker party, they pleaded the duties of conscience, and implored the rights of toleration, our bodies, they said, are xrs, but our souls belong only to God. The persecution was checked by the firmness of the emperor, 34 and if we can believe that the same prince was poisoned by the Greeks themselves, we must entertain a contemptible idea of the sense and gratitude of mankind. His valor was a vulgar attribute, which he shared with ten thousand knights, but Henry possessed the superior courage to oppose, in a superstitious age, the pride and avarice of the clergy. In the Cathedral of Street, Sophia he presumed to place his throne on the right hand of the patriarch, and this presumption excited the sharpest censure of Pope Innocent III. By a salutary edict, one of the first examples of the laws of Mortmain, he prohibited the alienation of fiefs, many of the Latins, desirous of returning to Europe, resigned their estates to the church for a spiritual or temporal reward, these holy lands were immediately discharged from military service, and a colony of soldiers would have been gradually transformed into a college of priests. 35. 31. Return, Vilharduin, number 257. I quote, with regret, this lamentable conclusion, where we lose at once the original history, and the rich illustrations of Duckenge. The last pages.
may derive some light from Henry's two epistles to Innocent III. Gusta, c. 106, 107. 32. Return, the marshal was alive in 1212, but he probably died. Soon afterwards, without returning to France, Duckenge. Observations Sir Vilharduin, p. 238. His fief of Messinopole. The gift of Boniface, was the ancient Maximianopolis, which flourished in the time of Ammianus Marcellinus, among the cities of Thrace, number 141. 321, return, there was no battle. On the advance of the Latins, John suddenly broke up his camp and retreated. The Latins considered this unexpected deliverance almost a miracle. L. E. Bo suggests the probability that the detection of the Comans, who usually quitted the camp during the heats of summer, may have caused the flight of the Bulgarians. Nystus, C. 8 Viliberduin. C. 225. L. E. Bo, Vol. 17 p. 242 m. 33. Return, the church of this patron of Thessalonica was served by the canons of the Holy Sepulchre, and contained a divine ointment which distilled daily and stupendous miracles. Duckenge, History DC P. 2. 4. 34. Return, Acropolita, c. 17, observes the persecution of the legate, and the toleration of Henry, er, asterisk as he calls him. Cludunicatestors. Note, or rather R. V. M. 35, Return, see the reign of Henry, in Duckenge, History DC, p. L. I. C. 3541, L. 2. C. 122, who is much indebted to the Epistles of the Popes. L. E. Bo, History du Bas Empire, Tom XXI, p. 12122, has found, perhaps in Dow Tremon, some laws of Henry, which determined the service of fiefs and the prerogatives of the emperor. The virtuous Henry died at Thessalonica, in the defense of that kingdom, and of an infant, the son of his friend Boniface. In the two first emperors of Constantinople the male line of the counts of Flanders was extinct. But their sister Yolanda was the wife of a French prince, the mother of a numerous progeny, and one of her daughters had married Andrew King of Hungary, a brave and pious champion of the cross. By seating him on the Byzantine throne, the barons of Romania would have acquired the forces of a neighboring and warlike kingdom, but the prudent Andrew revered the laws of succession, and the princess Yolanda, with her husband Peter of Cordonay, Count of Auxerre, was invited by the Latins to assume the Empire of the East. The royal birth of his father, the noble origin of his mother, recommended to the barons of France the first cousin of their king. His reputation was fair, his possessions were ample, and in the bloody crusade against the Albigewa, the soldiers and the priests had been abundantly satisfied of his zeal and valor. Vanity might applaud the elevation of a French emperor of Constantinople, but prudence must pity, rather than envy, his treacherous and imaginary greatness. To assert and adorn his title, he was reduced to sell or mortgage the best of his patrimony.
By these expedients, the liberality of his royal kinsman Philip Augustus, and the national spirit of chivalry, he was enabled to pass the Alps at the head of 140 knights, and 5,500 sergeants and archers. After some hesitation, Pope Honorius the third was persuaded to crown the successor of Constantine, but he performed the ceremony in a church without the walls, lest he should seem to imply or to bestow any right of sovereignty over the ancient capital of the empire. The Venetians had engaged to transport Peter and his forces beyond the Adriatic, and they Empress, with her four children, to the Byzantine palace, but they required, as the price of their service, that he should recover Durazzo from the despot of Epirus, Michael Angelus, or Comnus, the first of his dynasty, had bequeathed the succession of his power and ambition to Theodore, his legitimate brother who already threatened and invaded the establishments of the Latins. After discharging his debt by a fruitless assault, the emperor raised the siege to prosecute the long and perilous journey overland from Durazzo to Thessalonica. He was soon lost in the mountains of Epirus, the passes were fortified, his provisions exhausted, he was delayed and deceived by a treacherous negotiation, and, after Peter of Cordonay and the Roman legate had been arrested in a banquet, the French troops, without leaders or hopes, were eager to exchange their arms for the delusive promise of mercy and bread. The Vatican thundered, and the impious Theodore was threatened with the vengeance of earth and heaven, but the captive emperor and his soldiers were forgotten, and the reproaches of the Pope are confined to the imprisonment of his legate. No sooner was he satisfied by the deliverance of the priests and a promise of spiritual obedience, than he pardoned and protected the despot of Epirus. His peremptory commands suspended the ardor of the Venetians and the King of Hungary, and it was only by a natural or untimely death. 36 That Peter of Cordonay was released from his hopeless captivity. 37 36 Return, Acropolita, C. 14, affirms, that Peter of Cordonay died by the sword, Ergen Makarevi genus K, but from his dark expressions, I should conclude a previous captivity, W.V. Pantavi, Ardent as Mutavi Poisai Sun Pasis Kruisi. Asterisk the Chronicle of Oxer delays the Emperor's death till the year 1219, and Oxer is in the neighborhood of Cordonay. Note, Whatever may have been the fact, this can hardly be made out from the expressions of Acropolita M. 37, Return, See the Reign and Death of Peter of Cordonay, in Duckenge, History D.C. P.L. 2C. 2228, who feebly strives to excuse the neglect of the Emperor by Honorius III the long ignorance of his fate, and the presence of the lawful sovereign, of Yolanda, his wife or widow, delayed the proclamation of a new emperor. Before her death, and in the midst of her grief, she was delivered of a son, who was named Baldwin, the last and most unfortunate of the Latin princes of Constantinople. His birth endeared him to the barons of Romania. But his childhood would have prolonged the troubles of a minority, 
and his claims were superseded by the elder claims of his brethren. The first of these, Philip of Courtenay, who derived from his mother the inheritance of Namur, had the wisdom to prefer the substance of a marquisate to the shadow of an empire, and on his refusal, Robert, the second of the sons of Peter and Yolanda, was called to the throne of Constantinople. Warned by his father's mischance, he pursued his slow and secure journey through Germany and along the Danube, a passage was opened by his sister's marriage with the King of Hungary, and they Emperor Robert was crowned by the Patriarch in the Cathedral of Street Sophia But his reign was in raw of calamity and disgrace And the colony, as it was styled, of New France yielded on all Sides to the Greeks of Nice and Epirus After a victory, which he Owed to his perfidy rather than his courage, Theodore Angelus entered the kingdom of Thessalonica, expelled the feeble. Demetrius, the son of the Marquis Boniface, erected his standard on the walls of Adrianople, and added, by his vanity, a third or a fourth name to the list of rival emperors. The relics of the Asiatic province were swept away by John Vadasis, the son-in-law and successor of Theodore Lascaris, and who, in a triumphant reign of thirty-three years, displayed the virtues both of peace and war. Under his discipline, the swords of the French mercenaries were the most effectual instruments of his conquests and their desertion from the service of their country was at once a symptom and a cause of the rising ascendant of the Greeks. By the construction of a fleet, he obtained the command of the Hellespont, reduced the islands of Lesbos and Rhodes, attacked the Venetians of Candia, and intercepted the rare and parsimonious succors of the West. Once, and once only, the Latin Emperor sent an army against Vedases, and in the defeat of that army, the veteran knights, the last of the original conquerors, were left on the field of battle. But the success of a foreign enemy was less painful to the pusillanimous Robert than the insolence of his Latin subjects, who confounded the weakness of the Emperor and of the Empire. His personal misfortunes will prove the anarchy of the government and the ferociousness of the times. The amorous youth had neglected his Greek bride, the daughter of Vedasis, to introduce into the palace a beautiful maid, of a private, though noble family of Artois, and her mother had been tempted by the luster of the purple to forfeit her engagements with a gentleman of Burgundy. His love was converted into rage, he assembled his friends, forced the palace gates, threw the mother into the sea, and inhumanly cut off the nose and lips of the wife or concubine of the emperor. Instead of punishing the offender, the barons avowed and applauded the savage deed, 38 which, as a prince and as a man, it was impossible that Robert should forgive. He escaped from the guilty city to implore the justice or compassion of the Pope, the emperor was coolly exhorted to return to his station, before he could obey, he sunk under the weight of grief shame, and impotent resentment. 39. 38. Return, Marinus Sinutus, Secreta Fidelium Crucis, L2P. 4, C18, P73, is so much delighted with this bloody deed, that
that. He has transcribed it in his margin as a bonum exemplum. Yet he acknowledges the damsel for the lawful wife of Robert. 39. Return, see the reign of Robert, in Duckenge, History DC. PL 2. C 12. It was only in the age of chivalry that valor could ascend from a private station to the thrones of Jerusalem and Constantinople. The titular kingdom of Jerusalem had devolved to Mary, the daughter of Isabella and Conrad of Montferrat, and the granddaughter of Almeric or Amaudi. She was given to John of Brienne, of a noble family in Champagne, by the public voice, and the judgment of Philip Augustus, who named him as the most worthy champion of the Holy Land. Forty in the Fifth Crusade, he led a hundred thousand Latins to the conquest of Egypt, by him the siege of Damietta was achieved, and the subsequent failure was justly ascribed to the pride and avarice of the legate. After they Marriage of his daughter with Frederick II, 41 he was provoked by the emperor's ingratitude to accept the command of the army of the church, and though advanced in life, and despoiled of royalty, the sword and spirit of John of Brienne were still ready for the service of Christendom. In the seven years of his brother's reign, Baldwin of Courtenay had not emerged from a state of childhood, and the barons of Romania felt the strong necessity of placing the scepter in the hands of a man and a hero. The veteran king of Jerusalem might have disdained the name and office of regent, they agreed to invest him for his life with the title and prerogatives of emperor, on the soul condition that Baldwin should marry his second daughter, and succeed at a mature age to the throne of Constantinople. The expectation, both of the Greeks and Latins, was kindled by the renown, the choice, and the presence of John of Brienne, and they admired his martial aspect, his green and vigorous age of more than fourscore years, and his size and stature, which surpassed the common measure of mankind. Forty-two but avarice, and the love of ease, appear to have chilled the ardor of enterprise, 421 his troops were disbanded, and two years rolled away without action or honor, till he was awakened by the dangerous alliance of Vedasi's emperor of Nice, and of Azan king of Bulgaria. They besieged Constantinople by sea and land, with an army of one hundred thousand men, and a fleet of three hundred ships of war. While the entire force of the Latin emperor was reduced to one hundred and sixty knights, and a small addition of sergeants and archers. I tremble to relate, that instead of defending the city, the hero made a sally at the head of his cavalry, and that of forty-eight squadrons of the enemy, no more than three escaped from the edge of his invincible sword. Fired by his example, the infantry and the citizens boarded the vessels that anchored close to the walls, and twenty-five were dragged in triumph into the harbor of Constantinople. At the summons of the emperor, the vassals and allies armed in her defense, broke through every obstacle that opposed their passage, and, in the succeeding year, obtained a second victory over the same enemies. By the rude poets of the age, John of Brienne is compared to Hector, Roland, and Judas Maccabus, 43 but their credit, and his glory, 
receive some abatement from the silence of the Greeks. The empire was soon deprived of the last of her champions, and the dying monarch was ambitious to enter paradise in the habit of a Franciscan. Friar 44 40, return, rexigitur Franci, deliberationi habita, respondit. Nuncius, se deturum hominum siri partibus aptum, in armis probum. Underscore pru underscore, in bellus securum, in agendis providum, Johannum. Comitum brenensum. Sanat. Secret. Fidelium, L. 3. P. 11. C. 4. P. 205 Matthew Paris, P. 159. 41, Return, Giannoni, Historia Seville, Tom 2 L. 16 P. 38385, Discusses the marriage of Frederick II. With the daughter of John of Brienne, and the double union of the crowns of Naples and Jerusalem. 42, Return, Acropolita, c. 27. The historian was at that time a boy, and educated at Constantinople. In 1233, when he was eleven years old, his father broke the Latin chain, left a splendid fortune, and escaped to the Greek court of Nice, where his son was raised to the highest honors. 421, return, John de Brienne, elected emperor 1229, wasted two years in preparations, and did not arrive at Constantinople till 1231. Two years more glided away in inglorious inaction, he then made some ineffective warlike expeditions. Constantinople was not besieged till 1234 m. 43, return, Philip Musx, Bishop of Tournai, A.D. 1274-1282, has composed a poem, or rather string of verses, in bad old Flemish French, on the Latin emperors of Constantinople which Duckenge has published at the end of Vilharduin, cp. 38, for the prowess of John of Brienne. Naie, Hector, Roll ne ogres ne Judas Macabus Lee. Fears tant ne fit darms and esters com fist Lee Royce. Jehens sel jors et Illinois defers et Illinois de Don La Paru S.A. Force ETSES sends ET Lee Hardiment to Illinois of Watt. 44, Return, See the Reign of John de Brienne, in Duckenge, History. DCPL 2. C. 1326. In the double victory of John of Brienne, I cannot discover the name or exploits of his pupil Baldwin, who had attained the age of military service, and who succeeded to the imperial dignity on the decease of his adoptive father. 45 The royal youth was employed on a commission more suitable to his temper, he was sent to visit the western courts, of the Pope more especially, and of the King of France, to excite their pity by the view of his innocence and distress, and to obtain some supplies of men or money for the relief of the sinking empire. He thrice repeated these mendicant visits, in which he seemed to prolong his stay and postpone his return, of the five and twenty years of his reign, a greater number were spent abroad than at home, and in no place did the emperor deem himself less free and secure than in his native country and his capital. On some public occasions, his 
vanity might be soothed by the title of Augustus, and by the honors of the purple, and at the general council of lions, when Frederick II was excommunicated and deposed, his oriental colleague was enthroned on the right hand of the Pope. But how often was the exile, the vagrant, the imperial beggar, humbled with scorn, insulted with pity, and degraded in his own eyes and those of the nations. In his first visit to England, he was stopped at Dover by a severe reprimand, that he should presume without leave, to enter an independent kingdom. After some delay, Baldwin, however, was permitted to pursue his journey, was entertained with cold civility, and thankfully departed with a present of seven hundred marks. Forty-six from the avarice of Rome he could only obtain the proclamation of a crusade, and a treasure of indulgences, a coin whose currency was depreciated by two frequent and indiscriminate abuse. His birth and misfortunes recommended him to the generosity of his cousin Louis IX. But the martial zeal of the saint was diverted from Constantinople to Egypt and Palestine, and the public and private poverty of Baldwin was alleviated, for a moment, by the alienation of the Marquisate of Namur and the Lordship of Courtenay, the last remains of his inheritance. 47 By such shameful or ruinous expedients, he once more returned to Romania with an army of 30,000 soldiers, whose numbers were doubled in the apprehension of the Greeks. His first dispatches to France and England announced his victories and his hopes, he had reduced the country round the capital to the distance of three days' journey, and if he succeeded against an important, though nameless, city, most probably Kyrle, the frontier, would be safe and the passage accessible. But these expectations, if Baldwin was sincere, quickly vanished like a dream, they troops and treasures of France melted away in his unskillful hands, and the throne of the Latin Emperor was protected by a dishonorable alliance with the Turks and Comans. To secure the former, he consented to bestow his niece on the unbelieving Sultan of Cogna, to please the latter, he complied with their pagan rites, a dog was sacrificed between the two armies, and they contracting parties tasted each other's blood, as a pledge of their fidelity. 48 In the palace, or prison, of Constantinople. The successor of Augustus demolished the vacant houses for winter fuel, and stripped the lead from the churches for the daily expense of his family. Some usurious loans were dealt with a scanty hand by the merchants of Italy, and Philip, his son and heir, was pawned at Venice as the security for a debt. 49 Thirst Hunger, and nakedness, are positive evils, but wealth is relative, and a prince who would be rich in a private station may be exposed by the increase of his wants to all the anxiety and bitterness of poverty. 45 Return, see the reign of Baldwin II till his expulsion from Constantinople, in Dukenge, History DC PL 4 C 134 The End L V C 133 46 Return Matthew Paris relates the two visits of Baldwin II to the English court P 396 637 His return to Greece Armada 
Manu, p. 407 His letters of his nomen formidabile, and c. p. 481. A passage which has escaped Dukenge, his expulsion, p. 850. 47. Return, Louis IX disapproved and stopped the alienation of Courtenay, Dukenge, L4C 23. It is now annexed to the royal domain, but granted for a term, underscore engage underscore, to the family of Boulain Villiers. Courtenay, in the election of Namours in the Isle de France, is a town of 900 inhabitants, with the remains of a castle, Melanges Tires d'un Grand de Bibliothèque, Tom XLV P. 7477. 48. Return, Joinville, P. 104, Edit du Louvre. A common prince, who died without baptism, was buried at the gates of Constantinople with a live retinue of slaves and horses. 49. Return, Sanat. Secret. Fidel. Cruces, L. 2. P. 4. C. 18. P. 73. Chapter LXI, Partition of the Empire by the French and Venetians, Part 3. But in this abject distress, the emperor and empire were still possessed of an ideal treasure, which drew its fantastic value from the superstition of the Christian world. The merit of the true cross was somewhat impaired by its frequent division, and a long captivity among the infidels might shed some suspicion on the fragments that were produced in the East and West. But, another relic of the Passion was preserved in the Imperial Chapel of Constantinople, and the crown of thorns which had been placed on the head of Christ was equally precious and authentic. It had formerly been the practice of the Egyptian debtors to deposit, as a security, the mummies of their parents, and both their honor and religion were bound for the redemption of the pledge. In the same manner, and in the absence of the emperor, the barons of Romania borrowed the sum of 13,134 pieces of gold 50 on the credit of the Holy Crown. They failed in the performance of their contract, and a rich Venetian, Nicholas Quirini, undertook to satisfy their impatient creditors, on condition that the relic should be lodged at Venice, to become his absolute property, if it were not redeemed. Within a short and definite term, the barons apprised their sovereign of the hard treaty and impending loss and as the empire could not afford a ransom of £7,000 sterling. Baldwin was anxious to snatch the prize from the Venetians, and to vest it with more honour and emolument in the hands of the most Christian king. 51 Yet the negotiation was attended with some delicacy. In the purchase of relics, the saint would have started at the guilt of simony but if the mode of expression were changed, he might lawfully repay the debt, accept the gift, and acknowledge the obligation. His ambassadors, two Dominicans, were dispatched to Venice to redeem and receive the holy crown which had escaped the dangers of the sea and the galleys of Veda seas. On opening a wooden box, they recognized the seals of the doge and barons, which were applied on a shrine of silver, and within this shrine the monument of the passion was enclosed in a golden vase. The reluctant Venetians yielded to justice and power, 
the Emperor. Frederick granted a free and honorable passage, the court of France advanced as far as Troyes in Champagne, to meet with devotion this inestimable relic, it was borne in triumph through Paris by the king himself, barefoot, and in his shirt, and a free gift of ten thousand marks of silver reconciled Baldwin to his loss. The success of this transaction tempted the Latin emperor to offer with the same generosity the remaining furniture of his chapel, 52 a large and authentic portion of the true cross, the baby linen of the Son of God, the lance, the sponge, and the chain, of his passion, the rod of Moses, and part of the skull of Street John the Baptist For the reception of these spiritual treasures, 20,000 marks were expended by Street Louis on a stately foundation, the Holy Chapel of Paris, on which the muse of Boileau has bestowed a comic immortality. The truth of such remote and ancient relics, which cannot be proved by any human testimony, must be admitted by those who believe in the miracles which they have performed. About the middle of the last age, an inveterate ulcer was touched and cured by a holy prickle of the holy crown, 53 The prodigy is attested by the most pious and enlightened Christians of France, nor will the fact be easily disproved, except by those who are armed with a general antidote against religious credulity. 54 50, return, under the words underscore per Paris underscore, underscore per para underscore, underscore hyperparam underscore, duck is short and vague, munit genus. From a corrupt passage of Guntherus, History C, P, C, 8, P, 10, I guess, that the purpura was the numus aureus, the fourth part of a mark of silver, or about ten shillings sterling in value. In lead it would be too contemptible. 51. Return, for the translation of the Holy Crown, and see, from Constantinople to Paris, see Duckenge, History DC, PL4C. 1114, 24, 35, and Fleury. History Ecclesiastes, Tom 17 p. 201-204 52, Return, Melanges Tires d'un Grande Bibliothèque, Tom Slyene, p. 201-205 The Lutron of Boileau exhibits the inside, the soul and manners of the underscore Saint Chapelle underscore, and many facts relative to the institution are collected and explained by his commentators, Brossett and D. Street. Mark 53, Return, it was performed A.D. 1656, March 24, on the Nice of Pascal, and that superior genius, with Arnold, Nicole, and C. were on the spot to believe and attest a miracle which confounded the Jesuits, and saved Port Royal, Yvre de Racine. Tom. 6 p. 176-187, in his eloquent history of Port Royal. 54, Return, Voltaire, Siecle de Louis 14 c. 37, Yvre, Tom. 9 p. 178, 179, strives to invalidate the fact, but Hume. Essays, Vol. 2p, 483, 484, with more skill and success, seizes the battery, and turns the cannon against his enemies. 
The Latins of Constantinople 55 were on all sides encompassed and pressed, their sole hope, the last delay of their ruin, was in the division of their Greek and Bulgarian enemies, and of this hope they were deprived by the superior arms and policy of Vedases, Emperor of Nice, from the Propontis to the rocky coast of Pamphylia, Asia was peaceful and prosperous under his reign, and the events of every campaign extended his influence in Europe. The strong cities of the hills of Macedonia and Thrace were rescued from the Bulgarians, and their kingdom was circumscribed by its present and proper limits, along the southern banks of the Danube. The sole emperor of the Romans could no longer brook that a lord of Epirus, a Comnian prince of the West, should presume to dispute or share the honors of the purple, and the humble Demetrius changed the color of his buskins, and accepted with gratitude the appellation of despot. His own subjects were exasperated by his baseness and incapacity. They implored the protection of their supreme lord. After some resistance, the kingdom of Thessalonica was united to the empire of Nice, and Vedases reigned without a competitor from the Turkish borders to the Adriatic Gulf. The princes of Europe revered his merit and power, and had he subscribed an orthodox creed, it should seem that the Pope would have abandoned without reluctance the Latin throne of Constantinople. But the death of Vedases, the short and busy reign of Theodore his son, and the helpless infancy of his grandson John, suspended the restoration of the Greeks. In the next chapter, I shall explain their domestic revolutions, in this place, it will be sufficient to observe, that the young prince was oppressed by the ambition of his guardian and colleague, Michael Palologus, who displayed the virtues and vices that belong to the founder of a new dynasty. The Emperor Baldwin had flattered himself, that he might recover some provinces or cities by an impotent negotiation. His ambassadors were dismissed from Nice with mockery and contempt. At every place which they named, Palologus alleged some special reason, which rendered it dear and valuable in his eyes, in the one he was born, in another he had been first promoted to military command, and in a third he had enjoyed, and hoped long, to enjoy, the pleasures of the chase. And what then do you propose to give us? said the astonished deputies. Nothing, replied the Greek, not a foot of land. If your master be desirous of peace, let him pay me, as an annual tribute, the sum which he receives from the trade and customs of Constantinople. On these terms, I may allow him to reign. If he refuses, it is War. I am not ignorant of the art of war, and I trust the event. To God and my sword. 56 An expedition against the despot of Epirus was the first prelude of his arms. If a victory was followed by a defeat, if the race of the Comni or Angeli survived in those mountains his efforts and his reign, they Captivity of Vilharduin, Prince of Achaia, deprived the Latins of the most active and powerful vassal of their expiring monarchy. The republics of Venice and Genoa disputed, in the first of their naval wars, the command of the sea and the commerce of the east. 
pride and interest attached the Venetians. To the defense of Constantinople, their rivals were tempted to promote the designs of her enemies, and the alliance of the Genoese with the schismatic conqueror provoked the indignation of the Latin Church. 57. 55. Return, the gradual losses of the Latins may be traced in the third, fourth, and fifth books of the compilation of Dukenge. But of the Greek conquests he has dropped many circumstances, which may be recovered from the larger history of George. Acropolita, and the three first books of Nisphorus, Gregoras. Two writers of the Byzantine series, who have had the good fortune to meet with learned editors Leo Alatius at Rome, and John Boyvin in the Academy of Inscriptions of Paris. 56. Return, George Acropolita, c. 78, p. 89, 90. Edit. Paris. 57. Return, the Greeks, ashamed of any foreign aid, disguise. The alliance and succor of the Genoese, but the fact is proved by the testimony of J. Villani, Chronicles L. 6 C. 71, in Muratori. Scripture Rerum Italicarum, Tom. 13 p. 202, 203, and William D. Nangus, Annals de St. Louis, p. 248 in the Louvre Joinville. Two impartial foreigners, an urban four threatened to deprive. Genoa of her archbishop. Intent on his great object, the Emperor Michael visited in person and strengthened the troops and fortifications of Thrace. The remains of the Latins were driven from their last possessions, he assaulted without success the suburb of Galata, and corresponded with a perfidious baron, who proved unwilling, or unable, to open the gates of the metropolis. The next spring, his favorite general, Alexius Stratagopoulos, whom he had decorated with the title of Xar, passed the Hellespont with 800 horse and some infantry, 58 on a secret expedition. His instructions enjoined him to approach, to listen, to watch, but not to risk any doubtful or dangerous enterprise against the city. The adjacent territory between the Propontis and the Black Sea was cultivated by a hardy race of peasants and outlaws, exercised in arms, uncertain in their allegiance, but inclined by language, religion, and present advantage to the party of the Greeks. They were styled the underscore volunteers underscore, 59 and by their free service they army of Alexius, with the regulars of Thrace and the Coman. Auxiliaries, 60 was augmented to the number of 5 and 20 thousand men. By the ardor of the volunteers, and by his own ambition, the Xar was stimulated to disobey the precise orders of his master, in the just confidence that success would plead his pardon and reward. The weakness of Constantinople, and the distress and terror of the Latins, were familiar to the observation of the volunteers, and they represented the present moment as the most propitious to surprise and conquest. A rash youth, the new governor of the Venetian colony, had sailed away with thirty galleys, and the best of the French knights, on a wild expedition to Daphnesia, a town on the Black Sea, at the distance of forty leagues, six hundred one and the remaining Latins were Without strength or suspicion, they were informed that Alexius 
had passed the Hellespont, but their apprehensions were lulled by the smallness of his original numbers, and their imprudence had not watched the subsequent increase of his army. If he left his main body to second and support his operations, he might advance unperceived in the night with a chosen detachment. While some applied scaling ladders to the lowest part of the walls, they were secure of an old Greek, who would introduce their companions. Through a subterraneous passage into his house, they could soon on the inside break an entrance through the Golden Gate, which had been long obstructed, and the conqueror would be in the heart of the city before the Latins were conscious of their danger. After some debate, the Xar resigned himself to the faith of the volunteers, they were trusty, bold, and successful, and in describing the plan, I have already related the execution and success. 61 But no sooner had Alexius passed the threshold of the Golden Gate, then he trembled at his own rashness, he paused, he deliberated, till the desperate volunteers urged him forwards, by the assurance that in retreat lay the greatest and most inevitable danger. Whilst the Xar kept his regulars in firm array, the Comans dispersed themselves on all sides, an alarm was sounded and the threats of fire and pillage compelled the citizens to a decisive resolution. The Greeks of Constantinople remembered their native sovereigns, the Genoese merchants there. Recent alliance and Venetian foes, every quarter was in arms, and the air resounded with a general acclamation of long life and victory to Michael and John the august emperors of the Romans. Their rival, Baldwin, was awakened by the sound, but the most pressing danger could not prompt him to draw his sword in the defense of a city which he deserted, perhaps, with more pleasure than regret, he fled from the palace to the seashore, where he descried the welcome sails of the fleet returning from the vein and fruitless attempt on Daphnisia. Constantinople was irrecoverably lost, but the Latin emperor and the principal families embarked on board the Venetian galleys, and steered for the Isle of Yuba, and afterwards for Italy, where the royal fugitive was entertained by the Pope and Sicilian king with a mixture of contempt and pity. From the loss of Constantinople to his death, he consumed thirteen years, soliciting the Catholic powers to join in his restoration, the lesson had been familiar to his youth, nor was his last exile more indigent or shameful than his three former pilgrimages to the courts of Europe. His son Philip was the heir of an ideal empire, and the pretensions of his daughter Catherine were transported by her marriage to Charles of Valois, the brother of Philip the Fair, King of France. The House of Courtenay was represented in the female line by successive alliances, till the title of Emperor of Constantinople, too bulky and sonorous for a private name modestly expired in silence and oblivion. 62. 58. Return, some precautions must be used in reconciling the discordant numbers, the 800 soldiers of Nystus, the 25,000 of Spangigino, Apuducange, LVC 24, the Greeks and Scythians of Acropolita, and the numerous army of Michael, in the epistles of Pope Urban IV. 
I-129. 59. Return, Kelhimatario I. They are described and named by Pachimer, L2C14. 60. Return, it is needless to seek these comans in the deserts of Tartary, or even of Moldavia. A part of the Horde had submitted to John Vadasis, and was probably settled as a nursery of soldiers on some wastelands of Thrace, Cantacuzin LIC. 2. 601, Return, according to several authorities, particularly a bull Farahoy. Chronicles Arab P. 336, this was a stratagem on the part of the Greeks to weaken the garrison of Constantinople. The Greek commander offered to surrender the town on the appearance of the Venetians M. 61, return, the loss of Constantinople is briefly told by the Latins, the conquest is described with more satisfaction by the Greeks, by Acropolita, c. 85, Pachimer, l2 c. 26, 27. Nisphorus Gregoras, l4 c1, 2, c. Duckenge, History dc p. l v c. 1927. 62, Return, see the three last books, l v v i i i, and the genealogical tables of Duckenge. In the year 1382, the titular Emperor of Constantinople was James de Beau, Duke of Andrea in the Kingdom of Naples, the son of Margaret, daughter of Catherine de Valois, daughter of Catherine, daughter of Philip, son of Baldwin II, Duckenge, L8C, 37, 38. It is uncertain whether he left any posterity. After this narrative of the expeditions of the Latins to Palestine and Constantinople, I cannot dismiss the subject without resolving the general consequences on the countries that were the scene, and on the nations that were the actors, of these memorable crusades. 63 As soon as the arms of the Franks were withdrawn, the impression, though not the memory, was erased in the Mohammedan realms of Egypt and Syria. The faithful disciples of the Prophet were never tempted by a profane desire to study the laws or language of the idolaters, nor did the simplicity of their primitive manners receive the slightest alteration from their intercourse in peace and war with the unknown strangers of the West. The Greeks, who thought themselves proud, but who were only vain, showed a disposition somewhat less inflexible in the efforts for the recovery of their empire. They emulated the valor, discipline, and tactics of their antagonists. The modern literature of the West they might justly despise, but it's free. Spirit would instruct them in the rights of man, and some institutions of public and private life were adopted from the French. The correspondence of Constantinople and Italy diffused the knowledge of the Latin tongue, and several of the fathers and classics were at length honored with a Greek version. 64 But the national and religious prejudices of the Orientals were inflamed by persecution, and the reign of the Latins confirmed the separation of the two churches. 63 Return, a bull feather who saw the conclusion of the Crusades, speaks of the kingdoms of the Franks, and those of the Negroes, as equally unknown, prolegum ad geograph, 
had he not disdained the Latin language, how easily might the Syrian prince have found books and interpreters. 64. Return, a short and superficial account of these versions. From Latin into Greek is given by Hute, de interpretation eetd. Claris interpretibus p. 131-135. Maximus plan Eudes, a monk of Constantinople, A.D. 1327-1353, has translated Xrs. Commentaries, The Somnium Scipiones, The Metamorphoses and Heroides of Ovid, and C. Fabric. Bib Grc Tom. XP 533. If we compare the Ra of the Crusades, the Latins of Europe with the Greeks and Arabians, their respective degrees of knowledge, industry, and art, our rude ancestors must be content with a third rank in the scale of nations. Their successive improvement and present superiority may be ascribed to a peculiar energy of character, to an active and imitative spirit, unknown to their more polished rivals who at that time were in a stationary or retrograde state. With such a disposition, the Latins should have derived the most early and essential benefits from a series of events which opened to their eyes the prospect of the world, and introduced them to a long and frequent intercourse with the more cultivated regions of the East. The first and most obvious progress was in trade and manufactures, in the arts which are strongly prompted by the thirst of wealth, the calls of necessity, and the gratification of the sense or vanity. Among the crowd of unthinking fanatics, a captive or a pilgrim might sometimes observe the superior refinements of Cairo and Constantinople, the first importer of windmills 65 was the benefactor of nations, and if such blessings are enjoyed without any grateful remembrance, history has condescended to notice the more apparent luxuries of silk and sugar, which were transported into Italy from Greece and Egypt. But the intellectual wants of the Latins were more slowly felt and supplied, the ardor of studious curiosity was awakened in Europe by different causes and more recent events, and, in the age of the Crusades, they viewed with careless indifference the literature of the Greeks and Arabians. Some rudiments of mathematical and medicinal knowledge might be imparted in practice and in figures, necessity might produce some interpreters for the grosser business of merchants and soldiers, but the commerce of the Orientals had not diffused the study and knowledge of their languages in the schools of Europe. 66 If a similar principle of religion repulsed the idiom of the Quran, it should have excited their patience and curiosity to understand the original text of the Gospel, and the same grammar would have unfolded the sense of Plato and the beauties of Homer. Yet in a reign of sixty years, the Latins of Constantinople disdained the speech and learning of their subjects, and the manuscripts were the only treasures which they Natives might enjoy without rapine or envy. Aristotle was indeed the oracle of the Western universities, but it was a barbarous Aristotle, and, instead of ascending to the fountainhead, his Latin votaries humbly accepted a corrupt and remote version, from the Jews and Moors of Andalusia. The principle of the Crusades was a savage fanaticism, 
and the most important effects were analogous to the cause. Each pilgrim was ambitious to return with his sacred spoils, the relics of Greece and Palestine, 67 and each relic was preceded and followed by a train of miracles and visions. The belief of the Catholics was corrupted by new legends, their practice by new superstitions, and the establishment of the Inquisition, the mendicant orders of monks and friars, the last abuse of indulgences, and the final progress of idolatry, flowed from the baleful fountain of the Holy War. The active spirit of the Latins preyed on the vitals of their reason and religion, and if the ninth and tenth centuries were the times of darkness, the thirteenth and fourteenth were the age of absurdity and fable. 65. Return, windmills, first invented in the dry country of Asia Minor, were used in Normandy as early as the year 1105, vi. Privé de François, Tom. I. P. 42-43. Duckenge, Gloss. Latin. Tom. 4P. 474. 66. Return, see the complaints of Roger Bacon, Biographia. Britannica, Vol. I. P. 418, Kippies's edition. If Bacon himself, or Gerbert, understood underscore some underscore Greek, they were prodigies, and owed nothing to the commerce of the East. 67. Return, such was the opinion of the great Leibniz, Uvra. D. Fontenelle, Tom. V. P. 458, a master of the history of the Middle Ages. I shall only instance the pedigree of the Carmelites, and the flight of the House of Loreto, which were both derived from Palestine. Chapter LXI, Partition of the Empire by the French and Venetians, Part 4 in the profession of Christianity, in the cultivation of a fertile land, the northern conquerors of the Roman Empire insensibly mingled with the provincials, and rekindled the embers of the arts of antiquity. Their settlements about the age of Charlemagne had acquired some degree of order and stability, when they were overwhelmed by new swarms of invaders, the Normans, Saracens, 68 and Hungarians, who replaced the western countries of Europe into their former state of anarchy and barbarism. About the 11th century, the second tempest had subsided by the expulsion or conversion of the enemies of Christendom, the tide of civilization, which had so long ebbed, began to flow with a steady and accelerated course, and a fairer prospect was opened to the hopes and efforts of the rising generations. Great was the increase, and rapid the progress, during the two hundred years of the Crusades, and some philosophers have applauded the propitious influence of these holy wars, which appear to me to have checked, rather than forwarded the maturity of Europe. 69 The Lives End Labors of millions, which were buried in the East, would have been more profitably employed in the improvement of their native country, the accumulated stock of industry and wealth would have overflowed in navigation and trade and the Latins would have been enriched and enlightened by a pure and friendly correspondence with the climates of the East. In one respect I can indeed perceive the accidental operation of the Crusades, not 
so much in producing a benefit as in removing an evil. The larger portion of the inhabitants of Europe was chained to the soil. Without freedom, or property, or knowledge, and the two orders of ecclesiastics and nobles, whose numbers were comparatively small, alone deserved the name of citizens and men. This oppressive system was supported by the arts of the clergy and the swords of the barons. The authority of the priests operated in the darker ages as a salutary antidote, they prevented the total extinction of letters, mitigated the fierceness of the times, sheltered the poor and defenseless, and preserved or revived the peace and order of civil society. But the independence, rapin, and discord of the feudal lords were unmixed with any semblance of good, and every hope of industry and improvement was crushed by the iron weight of the martial aristocracy. Among the causes that undermined that Gothic edifice, a conspicuous place must be allowed to the Crusades. The estates of the barons were dissipated, and their race was often extinguished, in these costly and perilous expeditions. Their poverty extorted from their pride those charters of freedom which unlocked the fetters of the slave, secured the farm of the peasant and the shop of the artificer, and gradually restored a substance and a soul to the most numerous and useful part of the community. The conflagration, which destroyed the tall and barren trees of the forest gave air and scope to the vegetation of the smaller and nutritive plants of the soil. 691. 68. Return, if I rank the Saracens with the barbarians, it is only relative to their wars, or rather inroads, in Italy and France, where their sole purpose was to plunder and destroy. 69. Return, on this interesting subject, the progress of society in Europe. A strong ray of philosophical light has broke from Scotland in our own times, and it is with private, as well as public regard, that I repeat the names of Hume, Robertson, and Adam Smith. 691. Return, on the consequences of the Crusades, compare the valuable essay of Heron that of M. Choiseul de la Court, and a chapter of Mr. Forster's Maometanism unveiled. I may admire this gentleman's learning and industry, without pledging myself to his wild theory of prophet's interpretation. M. Underscore digression on the family of Courtenay. Underscore. The purple of three emperors, who have reigned at Constantinople will authorize or excuse a digression on the origin and singular fortunes of the House of Courtenay, 70 in the three principal branches, I of Edessa, 2 of France, and 3 of England, of which the last only has survived the revolutions of 800 years. 70. Return I have applied, but not confined, myself to underscore a genealogical history of the noble and illustrious family of Courtenay, by Ezra Cleveland, tutor to Sir William Courtenay, and rector of Honiton, Exon. 1735, in folio underscore the first part is extracted from William of Tyre, the second from Boucher's French history, and the third from various memorials, public, provincial, and private, of the Courtenays of Devonshire. The rector of Honiton has more gratitude than industry, and more 
industry than criticism. I, before the introduction of trade, which scatters riches, and of knowledge, which dispels prejudice, the prerogative of birth is most strongly felt and most humbly acknowledged in every age. The laws and manners of the Germans have discriminated the ranks of society, the dukes and counts, who shared the empire of Charlemagne, converted their office to an inheritance, and to his children, each feudal lord bequeathed his honor and his sword. The proudest families are content to lose, in the darkness of the Middle Ages, the tree of their pedigree, which, however deep and lofty, must ultimately rise from a plebeian root, and there historians must descend ten centuries below the Christian Ra, before they can ascertain any lineal succession by the evidence of surnames, of arms, and of authentic records. With the first rays of light, 71, we discern the nobility and opulence of Atho, a French knight, his nobility, in the rank and title of a nameless father, his opulence, in the foundation of the castle of Courtenay in the district of Gaudinois, about 56 miles to the south of Paris. From the reign of Robert, the son of Hugh Capet, the barons of Courtenay are conspicuous among the immediate vassals of the crown, and Giselin, the grandson of Atho and a noble dame, is enrolled among the heroes of the First Crusade. A domestic alliance, their mothers were sisters. Attached him to the standard of Baldwin of Bruges, the second Count of Edessa, a princely fief, which he was worthy to receive. And able to maintain, announces the number of his marshal followers, and after the departure of his cousin, Giselin, himself was invested with the county of Edessa on both sides of the Euphrates. By economy in peace, his territories were replenished with Latin and Syrian subjects, his magazines with corn, wine, and oil, his castles with gold and silver, with arms and horses. In a holy warfare of thirty years, he was alternately a conqueror and a captive, but he died like a soldier, in a horse litter at the head of his troops, and his last glance beheld the flight of the Turkish invaders who had presumed on his age and infirmities. His son and successor, of the same name, was less deficient in valor than in vigilance, but he sometimes forgot that dominion is acquired and maintained by the same arms. He challenged the hostility of the Turks, without securing the friendship of the Prince of Antioch, and, amidst the peaceful luxury of Turbessel, in Syria, 72 Jusselin neglected the defense of the Christian frontier beyond the Euphrates. In his absence, Zenghai, the first of the Atabeks, besieged and stormed his capital, Edessa, which was feebly defended by a timorous and disloyal crowd of Orientals, the Franks were oppressed in a bold attempt for its recovery, and Courtenay ended his days in the prison of Aleppo. He still left a fair and ample patrimony but the victorious Turks oppressed on all sides the weakness of a widow and orphan, and for the equivalent of an annual pension. They resigned to the Greek emperor the charge of defending, and the shame of losing, the last relics of the Latin conquest. The Countess Dowager of Edessa retired to Jerusalem with her two children, the daughter, Agnes, 
became the wife and mother of a king, the son, Jusilin III, accepted the office of Seneschal, the first of the kingdom, and held his new estates in Palestine by the service of fifty knights. His name appears with honor in the transactions of peace and war, but he finally vanishes in the fall of Jerusalem, and the name of Cordonne, in this branch of Edessa, was lost by the marriage of his two daughters with a French and German baron. 73. 71. Return, the primitive record of the family is a passage of the continuator of Amoin, a monk of Fleury, who wrote in the Zeeth century. See his chronicle, in the Historians of France. Tom 11 p 276. 72. Return, Turbessel, or, as it is now styled, Telbesher, is fixed by Danville 4 and 20 miles from the Great Passage over the Euphrates at Zugma. 73. Return, his possessions are distinguished in the Assises of Jerusalem, cb 26, among the feudal tenures of the kingdom, which must therefore have been collected between the years 1153 and 1187. His pedigree may be found in the Lignage Stiutramer, c. 16. 2. While Jusilin reigned beyond the Euphrates, his elder brother Milo, the son of Jusilin, the son of Atho, continued near the Seine, to possess the castle of their fathers, which was at length inherited by Reno, or Reginald, the youngest of his three sons. Examples of genius or virtue must be rare in the annals of the oldest families, and, in a remote age their pride will embrace a deed of rapine and violence, such, however, as could not be perpetrated without some superiority of courage, or, at least, of power. A descendant of Reginald of Cordonay may blush for the public robber, who stripped and imprisoned several merchants, after they had satisfied the king's duties at Sen's end. Orleans. He will glory in the offense, since the bold offender could not be compelled to obedience and restitution, till the regent and the Count of Champagne prepared to march against him at the head of an army. 74. Reginald bestowed his estates on his eldest daughter, and his daughter on the seventh son of King Louis the Fat, and their marriage was crowned with a numerous offspring. We might expect that a private should have merged in a royal name, and that the descendants of Peter of France and Elizabeth of Courtenay would have enjoyed the titles and honors of princes of the blood. But this legitimate claim was long neglected, and finally denied, and the causes of their disgrace will represent the story of this second branch. Underscore one, underscore of all they families now extant, the most ancient, doubtless, and the most illustrious, is the House of France, which has occupied the same throne above eight hundred years, and descends, in a clear end, lineal series of males, from the middle of the ninth century. 75. In the age of the Crusades, it was already revered both in the East and West. But from Hugh Capet to the marriage of Peter, no. More than five reigns or generations had elapsed, and so. Precarious was their title, that the eldest sons, as a necessary. Precaution, were previously crowned during the lifetime of their. Fathers. 
the peers of France have long maintained their precedency before the younger branches of the royal line, nor had the princes of the blood, in the 12th century, acquired that hereditary luster which is now diffused over the most remote candidates for the succession. Underscore two underscore the barons of Cordonnet must have stood high in their own estimation, and in that of the world, since they could impose on the son of a king the obligation of adopting for himself and all his descendants the name and arms of their daughter and his wife. In the marriage of an heiress with her inferior or her equal, such exchange was often required and allowed, but as they continued to diverge from the regal stem, the sons of Louis the Fat were insensibly confounded with their maternal ancestors, and the new Cordonnais might deserve to forfeit the honours of their birth, which a motive of interest had tempted them to renounce. Underscore three, underscore the shame was far more permanent than the reward, and a momentary blaze was followed by a long darkness. The eldest son of these nuptials, Peter of Cordonnet, had married, as I have already mentioned, the sister of the Counts of Flanders, the two first emperors of Constantinople, he rashly accepted the invitation of the barons of Romania, his two sons, Robert and Baldwin, successively held and lost the remains of the Latin Empire in the east, and the granddaughter of Baldwin the second again mingled her blood with the blood of France and of Valois to support the expenses of a troubled and transitory reign, their patrimonial estates were mortgaged or sold, and the last emperors of Constantinople depended on the annual charity of Rome and Naples. 74. Return, the rapid and satisfaction of Reginald D. Cordonnet, are preposterously arranged in the epistles of the Abbot and Regent Suger, Xiv Cady, the best memorials of the age, Duchesne, Scriptoris History Frank, Tom 4 p. 530. 75. Return, in the beginning of the Zith century, after naming the father and grandfather of Hugh Capet, the monk Glaber is obliged to add, Cujus genus vault in anti reperitur obscurum. Yet, we are assured that the great grandfather of Hugh Capet was Robert the Strong Count of Anjou, AD 863-873, a noble Frank of Neustria, Neustricus, Generos Sturpus, who was slain in the defense of his country against the Normans, Dumb Patry finds Tabater. Beyond Robert, all is conjecture or fable. It is a probable conjecture that the third race descended from the second by Child Brand, the brother of Charles Martel. It is an absurd fable that the second was allied to the first by the marriage of Ansbert a Roman senator and the ancestor of Street. Arnul, with Blidild, a daughter of Claude I. The Saxon origin of the House of France is an ancient but incredible opinion. C. A judicious memoir of M. D. Fonsa Magna, Memoirs de l'Academie. De Inscriptions, Tom. XXP 548-579 He had promised to declare his own opinion in a second memoir, which has never appeared. While the elder brothers dissipated their wealth in romantic adventures, and the castle of Cordonnet was profaned by a plebeian owner, the younger branches of that adopted name were 
propagated and multiplied. But their splendor was clouded by poverty and time, after the decease of Robert, great butler of France, they descended from princes to barons, the next generations were confounded with the simple gentry, the descendants of Hugh Capet could no longer be visible in the rural lords of Tonlai and of Champinales. The more adventurous embraced without dishonor the profession of a soldier, the least active and opulent might sink, like their cousins of the branch of Drew, into the condition of peasants. Their royal descent, in a dark period of four hundred years, became each day more obsolete and ambiguous, and their pedigree, instead of being enrolled in the annals of the kingdom, must be painfully searched by the minute diligence of heralds and genealogists. It was not till the end of the sixteenth century, on the accession of a family almost as remote as their own, that the princely spirit of the Courtenays again revived, and the question of the nobility provoked them to ascertain the royalty of their blood. They appealed to the justice and compassion of Henry IV, obtained a favorable opinion from twenty lawyers of Italy and Germany, and modestly compared themselves to the descendants of King David, whose prerogatives were not impaired by the lapse of ages or the trade of a carpenter. Seventy-six but every year was deaf, and every circumstance was adverse, to their lawful claims. The Bourbon kings were justified by the neglect of the Valois, the princes of the blood, more recent and lofty, disdained the alliance of his humble kindred, the Parliament, without denying their proofs, eluded a dangerous precedent by an arbitrary distinction, an established street. Louis as the first father of the royal line. 77A repetition of complaints and protests was repeatedly disregarded, and the hopeless pursuit was terminated in the present century by the death of the last male of the family. 78 Their painful and anxious situation was alleviated by the pride of conscious virtue, they sternly rejected the temptations of fortune and favor, and a dying Courtenay would have sacrificed his son, if the youth could have renounced, for any temporal interest, the right and title of a legitimate prince of the blood of France. 79. 76. Return, of the various petitions, apologies, and c. published. By the princes of Courtenay, I have seen the three following, all. In octavo, 1. Disturpi et origini domus de Courtenay, adida. Sunt responsa celebera morum muro juris consultorum, Paris. 1607-2 Representation dupto se they tenua l instance faict. Devant l'e roi, par messers de coordonnée, pour la conservation. D'l honneur et dignite de leur maison, branche de la royale. Maison de France, a Paris, 1613. 3. Representation du subject qui. A port Messrs de Sals et de Fravilly, de la Maison de Cordonnay, A.S.E. Retire or du Roy Aum, 1614. It was a homicide, for which the Cordonnays expected to be pardoned, or tried, as Princes of the Blood. 77. Return, the sense of the parliaments is thus expressed by Thuanus principis nomen nusquam in Gallia tributum, nice iis key. 
permers e regibus nostris originum repetunt, qui nunc tantumae. Ludovico nun beat memori numeranter, nom underscore court and i underscore et. Drosensis, a Ludovico crasso genus duce ntes, hodi inter eos. Minime recensenter. A distinction of expediency rather than justice. The sanctity of Louis IX could not invest him with any special prerogative, and all the descendants of Hugh Capet must be included in his original compact with the French nation. 78. Return, the last male of the Courtenays was Charles Roger, who died in the year 1730, without leaving any sons. The last female was Helene de Courtenay, who married Louis de Beaufremont. Her title of Princess du Sang Royal de France was suppressed. February 7, 1737, by an underscore ret underscore of the Parliament of Paris. 79, Return, the singular anecdote to which I allude is related. In the Recuil des Pieces inter Santas et Pu Connus. My Strict, 1786, in 4 Volume 1 2 MO, and the unknown editor. Quotes his author who had received it from Helene de Cordonnet. Marquise de Beaufremont. 3. According to the old register of Ford Abbey, the Cordonnets of Devonshire are descended from Prince underscore Floris underscore, the second son of Peter, and the grandson of Louis the Fat. 80. This fable of the Grateful or venal monks was too respectfully entertained by our antiquaries, Camden 81 and Dugdale, 82 but it is so clearly repugnant to truth and time, that the rational pride of the family now refuses to accept this imaginary founder. Their most faithful historians believe, that, after giving his daughter to the king's son, Reginald of Courtenay abandoned his possessions in France, and obtained from the English monarch a second wife, and a new inheritance. It is certain, at least, that Henry the second distinguished in his camps and councils a Reginald, of the name and arms, and, as it may be fairly presumed, of the genuine race of the Courtenays of France. The right of wardship enabled a feudal lord to reward his vassal with the marriage and estate of a noble heiress, and Reginald of Courtenay acquired a fair establishment in Devonshire, where his posterity has been seated above six hundred years. Eighty-three from a Norman baron, Baldwin D. Brionii's who had been invested by the conqueror, H. A. Weiss, the wife of Reginald, derived the honor of Oakhampton, which was held by the service of ninety-three knights, and a female might claim the manly offices of hereditary viscount or sheriff, and of captain of the royal castle of Exeter. Their son Robert married the sister of the Earl of Devon, at the end of a century, on the failure of the family of Rivers, 84 his great-grandson, Hugh the second, succeeded to a title which was still considered as a territorial dignity, and twelve earls of Devonshire, of the name of Courtenay, have flourished in a period of two hundred and twenty years. They were ranked among the chief of the barons of the realm, nor was it till after a strenuous dispute, that they yielded to the fief of Arundel the first place in the Parliament of England, their alliances were contracted with the noblest families, the Veres, Despensers, Street, Johns, Talbots, 
Bohans, and even the Plantagenets themselves, and in a contest with John of Lancaster, a Courtenay, Bishop of London, and afterwards Archbishop of Canterbury, might be accused of profane confidence in the strength and number of his kindred. In peace, the Earls of Devon resided in their numerous castles and manors of the West. Their ample revenue was appropriated to devotion and hospitality. And the epitaph of Edward, surnamed from his misfortune, the underscore blind underscore, from his virtues, the underscore good underscore, Earl, inculcates with much ingenuity a moral sentence, which may, however, be abused by thoughtless generosity. After a grateful commemoration of the fifty-five years of union and happiness which he enjoyed with Mabe his wife, the good Earl thus speaks from the tomb. What we gave, we have, what we spent, we had, what we left, we lost. Eighty-five. But their underscore losses underscore, in this sense, were far superior to their gifts and expenses, and their heirs, not less than the poor, were the objects of their paternal care. The sums which they paid for livery and season attest the greatness of their possessions, and several estates have remained in their family since the 13th and 14th centuries. In war, the Courtenays of England fulfilled the duties, and deserved the honors, of chivalry. They were often entrusted to levy and command the militia of Devonshire and Cornwall, they often attended their supreme lord to the borders of Scotland, and in foreign service. For a stipulated price, they sometimes maintained fourscore men at arms and as many archers. By sea and land they fought. Under the standard of the Edwards and Henrys, their names are conspicuous in battles, in tournaments, and in the original list. Of the Order of the Garter, three brothers shared the Spanish victory of the Black Prince, and in the lapse of six generations, the English Courtenays had learned to despise the nation and country from which they derived their origin. In the quarrel of the Two Roses, the Earls of Devon adhered to the House of Lancaster, and three brothers successively died either in the field or on the scaffold. Their honors and estates were restored by Henry VII, a daughter of Edward IV was not Disgraced by the nuptials of a Courtenay, their son, who was created Marquis of Exeter, enjoyed the favor of his cousin Henry the Eighth, and in the camp of cloth of gold, he broke a lance against the French monarch. But the favor of Henry was the prelude of disgrace, his disgrace was the signal of death, and of the victims of the jealous tyrant, the Marquis of Exeter is one of the most noble and guiltless. His son Edward lived a prisoner in the tower, and died in exile at Padua, and the secret love of Queen Mary, whom he slighted, perhaps for the Princess Elizabeth, has shed a romantic color on the story of this beautiful youth. The relics of his patrimony were conveyed into strange families by the marriages of his four aunts and his personal honors, as if they had been legally extinct, were revived by the patents of succeeding princes. But there still survived a lineal descendant of Hugh, the first Earl of Devon, a younger branch of the Courtenays who have been seated at Powderham Castle above four hundred years, from the reign of Edward III to the present. 
Our Their estates have been increased by the grand end Improvement of lands in Ireland, and they have been recently Restored to the honours of the peerage Yet the Courtenays still Retain the plaintive motto, which asserts the innocence, and Deplores the fall, of their ancient house 86 While they sigh for Past greatness, they are doubtless sensible of present blessings. In the long series of the Courtenay Annals, the most splendid Ra is likewise the most unfortunate, nor can an opulent peer of Britain be inclined to envy the emperors of Constantinople, who wandered over Europe to solicit alms for the support of their dignity and the defence of their capital. 80. Return, Dugdale, Monastic and Anglicanum, Vol. I.P. 786. Yet, this fable must have been invented before the reign of Edward. 3. The profuse devotion of the three first generations to Ford. Abbey was followed by oppression on one side and ingratitude on the other, and in the sixth generation, the monks ceased to register the births, actions, and deaths of their patrons. 81. Return, in his Britannia, in the list of the earls of Devonshire. His expression, e regio sanguin ordos, credunt, betrays, however, some doubt or suspicion. 82. Return, in his baronage, P.I.P. 634, he refers to his own Monastican. Should he not have corrected the register of Ford Abbey, and annihilated the phantom Floris, by the unquestionable evidence of the French historians? 83. Return, besides the third and most valuable book of Cleveland's History, I have consulted Dugdale, the father of our genealogical science, Baronage, P.I.P. 634-643. 84. Return, this great family, D. Repuarius, D. Redverse, D. Rivers, ended, in Edward V's time, in Isabella D. Fortibus, a famous and potent dowager, who long survived her. Brother and husband, Dugdale, Baronage, P.I.P. 254-257. 85, Return, Cleveland P. 142. By some it is assigned to a Rivers Earl of Devon, but the English denotes the XVTH, rather, than the Zeeth century. 86, Return, underscore ubilapsis. Quid feci, underscore a motto which was probably adopted by the Powderham branch, after the loss of the earldom of Devonshire, and c. The primitive arms of the Courtenays were, underscore or underscore, underscore three torto underscore, underscore gules underscore, which seemed to denote their affinity with Godfrey of Bouillon and the ancient counts of Boulogne. Chapter LXII, Greek Emperors of Nice and Constantinople, Part I The Greek Emperors of Nice and Constantinople, Elevation and Reign Of Michael Palologus, His False Union with the Pope and the Latin Church, Hostile Designs of Charles of Anjou, Revolt of Sicily, War of the Catalans in Asia and Greece, revolutions and present state. Of Athens. The loss of Constantinople restored a momentary vigor to the Greeks. From their palaces, the princes and nobles were driven into the field, and the fragments of the falling monarchy were grasped by the hands of the most vigorous or the most skillful candidates in the long and barren pages of the Byzantine annals. 
one it would not be an easy task to equal the two characters of Theodore Lascaris and John Ducas Vetuses, two who replanted and upheld the Roman standard at Nice and Bithynia. The difference of their virtues was happily suited to the diversity of their situation. In his first efforts, the fugitive Lascaris commanded only three cities and two thousand soldiers, his reign was the season of generous and active despair, in every military operation he staked his life and crown, and his enemies of the Hellespont and the Maunder, were surprised by his celerity and subdued by his boldness. A victorious reign of eighteen years expanded the principality of Nice to the magnitude of an empire. The throne of his successor and son-in-law Vetuses was founded on a more solid basis, a larger scope, and more plentiful resources. And it was the temper, as well as the interest, of Vetuses to calculate the risk, to expect the moment, and to ensure the success of his ambitious designs. In the decline of the Latins, I have briefly exposed the progress of the Greeks, the prudent and gradual advances of a conqueror, who, in a reign of thirty-three years, rescued the provinces from national and foreign usurpers, till he pressed on all sides the imperial city. A leafless and sapless trunk, which must fall at the first stroke of the axe. But his interior and peaceful administration is still more deserving of notice and praise. 3. The calamities of the times had wasted the numbers and the substance of the Greeks, the motives and the means of agriculture were extirpated, and they most fertile lands were left without cultivation or inhabitants. A portion of this vacant property was occupied and improved by the command, and for the benefit, of the emperor, a powerful hand, and a vigilant eye supplied and surpassed, by a skillful management, the minute diligence of a private farmer, the royal Domain became the garden and granary of Asia, and without impoverishing the people, the sovereign acquired a fund of innocent and productive wealth. According to the nature of the soil, his lands were sown with corn or planted with vines, the pastures were filled with horses and oxen, with sheep and hogs. And when Vedases presented to the Empress a crown of diamonds and pearls, he informed her, with a smile, that this precious ornament arose from the sale of the eggs of his innumerable poultry. The produce of his domain was applied to the maintenance of his palace and hospitals, the calls of dignity and benevolence, the lesson was still more useful than the revenue. The plough was restored to its ancient security and honour, and the nobles were taught to seek a sure and independent revenue from their estates, instead of adorning their splendid beggary by the oppression of the people, or, what is almost the same, by the favours of the court. The superfluous stock of corn and cattle was eagerly purchased by the Turks, with whom Vedases preserved a strict and sincere alliance, but he discouraged the importation of foreign manufactures, the costly silks of the East, and the curious labours of the Italian looms. The demands of nature and necessity was he accustomed to say, are indispensable, but the influence of fashion may rise and sink at the breath of a monarch, and both his precept and example recommended simplicity of manners and the use of domestic industry. 
The education of youth and the revival of learning were the most serious objects of his care, and, without deciding the precedency, he pronounced with truth, that a prince and a philosopher four are the two most eminent characters of human society. His first wife was Irene, the daughter of Theodore Lascaris, a woman more illustrious by her personal merit, the milder virtues of her sex, than by the blood of the Angeli and Comni that flowed in her veins, and transmitted the inheritance of the empire. After her death he was contracted to Anne, or Constance, a natural daughter of the Emperor Frederick 499 II, but as the bride had not attained the years of puberty, Veda sees placed in his solitary bed an Italian damsel of her train, and his amorous weakness bestowed on the concubine the honors, though not the title, of a lawful empress. His frailty was censured as a flagitious and damnable sin by the monks, and their rude invectives exercised and displayed the patience of the royal lover. A philosophic age may excuse a single vice, which was redeemed by a crowd of virtues. And in the review of his faults, and the more intemperate passions of Lascaris, the judgment of their contemporaries was softened by gratitude to the second founders of the empire. 5. The slaves of the Latins, without law or peace, applauded the happiness of their brethren who had resumed their national freedom, and Veda Seas employed the laudable policy of convincing the Greeks of every dominion that it was their interest to be enrolled in the number of his subjects. 1. Return, for the reigns of the Nicene emperors, more especially of John Vedasis and his son, their minister, George. Acropolita, is the only genuine contemporary, but George Pachimer returned to Constantinople with the Greeks at the age of 19, Hankius de Scripture Byzant, c. 33, 34, p. 564-578. Fabric. Bibliot. GRC, Tom. 6p, 448-460. Yet the history of Nisphorus Gregoras, though of the Zivth century, is a valuable narrative from the taking of Constantinople by the Latins. 2. Return, Nisphorus Gregoras, L. 2c1, distinguishes between the Achaea or Might of Lascaris, and the Eustachia of Vedasis. The two portraits are in a very good style. 3. Return, Pachimer, LIC 23, 24. NIC. Greg. L. 2. C. 6. The reader of the Byzantines must observe how rarely we are indulged with such precious details. 4. Return, Monoigara Pantwan Ankrupan Onomasto Tatoi Basilet V. K. Jilasacho V. Greg. Akrapal. C. 32. The Emperor, in a familiar conversation, examined and encouraged the studies of his future. Logothete. 499, Return, Sister of Manfred, afterwards King of Naples. NIC. Greg. P. 45 M. 5, Return, Compare Acropolita, C. 18, 52, and the two first. Books of Nisphorus Gregoras. A strong shade of degeneracy is visible between John Vedasis and his son Theodore, between the founder who sustained the weight 
and the heir who enjoyed the splendor, of the imperial crown. 6. Yet the character of Theodore was not devoid of energy, he had been educated in the school of his father, in the exercise of war and hunting, Constantinople was yet spared, but in the three years of a short reign, he thrice led his armies into the heart of Bulgaria. His virtues were sullied by a choleric and suspicious temper, the first of these may be ascribed to the ignorance of control, and the second might naturally arise from a dark and imperfect view of the corruption of mankind. On a march in Bulgaria, he consulted on a question of policy his principal ministers, and the Greek logothete, George Acropolita, presumed to offend him by the declaration of a free and honest opinion. The emperor half unsheathed his scimitar, but his more deliberate Rage reserved Acropolita for a baser punishment. One of the first officers of the empire was ordered to dismount, stripped of his robes, and extended on the ground in the presence of the prince and army. In this posture he was chastised with so many and such heavy blows from the clubs of two guards or executioners, that when Theodore commanded them to cease, the great Logothete was scarcely able to rise and crawl away to his tent. After a seclusion of some days, he was recalled by a peremptory mandate to his seat in council, and so dead were the Greeks to the sense of honor and shame, that it is from the narrative of the sufferer himself that we acquire the knowledge of his disgrace. 7. The cruelty of the emperor was exasperated by the pangs of sickness, the approach of a premature end, and the suspicion of poison and magic. The lives and fortunes, the eyes and limbs, of his kinsmen and nobles, were sacrificed to each sally of passion, and before he died, the son of Vedases might deserve from the people, or at least from the court, the appellation of tyrant. A matron of the family of the Pelology had provoked his anger by refusing to bestow her beauteous daughter on the vile plebeian who was recommended by his caprice. Without regard to her birth or age, her body, as high as the neck, was enclosed in a sack with several cats, who were pricked with pins to irritate their fury against their unfortunate fellow captive. In his last hours the emperor testified a wish to forgive and be forgiven, a just anxiety for the fate of John his son and successor, who, at the age of eight years, was condemned to the dangers of a long minority. His last choice entrusted the office of guardian to the sanctity of the patriarch Ars News, and to the courage of George Musallan, the great domestic, who was equally distinguished by the royal favor and the public hatred. Since their connection with the Latins, the names and privileges of hereditary rank had insinuated themselves into the Greek monarchy, and the noble families eight were provoked by the elevation of a worthless favorite, to whose influence they imputed the errors and calamities of the late reign. In the first council, after the emperor's death, Musallan, from a lofty throne, pronounced a labored apology of his conduct and intentions, his modesty was subdued by a unanimous assurance of esteem and fidelity, and his most inveterate enemies were the loudest to salute him as the guardian and savior of the Romans. 
Eight days were sufficient to prepare the execution of the conspiracy. On the ninth, the obsequies of the deceased monarch were solemnized in the Cathedral of Magnesia, nine an Asiatic city, where he expired, on the banks of the Hermus, and at the foot of Mount Sipilus. The holy rites were interrupted by a sedition of the guards, Musalan. His brothers, and his adherents, were massacred at the foot of the altar, and the absent patriarch was associated with a new colleague, with Michael Palologus, the most illustrious, in birth and merit, of the Greek nobles. 10. 6. Return, a Persian saying, that Cyrus was the underscore father underscore end. Darius the underscore master underscore, of his subjects, was applied to Vedasis and his son. But Pachimer, LIC 23, has mistaken the mild Darius for the cruel Cambyses, despot or tyrant of his people. By the institution of taxes, Darius had incurred the less odious, but more contemptible, name of Koflovi, merchant or broker. Herodotus, 3. 89. 7. Return, Acropolita, c. 63, seems to admire his own firmness in sustaining a beating, and not returning to council till he was called. He relates the exploits of Theodore, and his own services, from c. 53 to c. 74 of his history. See the third book of Nisphorus Gregoras. 8. Return, Pachimer, LIC 21, names and discriminates. 15 or 20 Greek families, K.O. Swa Alloy, OIVH. Megalogan v. Sira K. Crush Sigakrothdo. Does he mean, by this decoration, a figurative or a real golden chain? Perhaps, both. 9. Return, the old geographers, with Salarius and Danville. And our travelers, particularly Pocock and Chandler, will teach us to distinguish the two Magnesias of Asia Minor, of the Maunder, and of Sipilus. The latter, our present object, is still flourishing for a Turkish city, and lies eight hours, or leagues, to the northeast of Smyrna, Tornafit, Voyage du Levant, Tom. 3 Lettre XXII. p. 365-370. Chandler's Travels into Asia Minor. p. 267. 10. Return, C. Acropolita, C. 75, 76, and C. Who Lived Too. Near the Times, Pachimer, LIC 1325, Gregoras, L3C. 3, C. 3, 4, 5. Of those who are proud of their ancestors, the far greater part must be content with local or domestic renown and few there are who dare trust the memorials of their family to the public annals of their country as early as the middle of the 11th century the noble race of the Palology 11 stands high and conspicuous in the Byzantine history it was the valiant George Palologus who placed the father of the Comni on the throne and his kinsmen or descendants continue, in each generation, to lead the armies and councils of the state. The purple was not dishonored by their alliance, and had the law of succession, and female succession. Been strictly observed, the wife of Theodore Lascaris must have yielded to her elder sister, the mother of Michael Palologus 
who afterwards raised his family to the throne. In his person, the splendor of birth was dignified by the merit of the soldier and statesman, in his early youth he was promoted to the office of underscore constable underscore or commander of the French mercenaries, the private expense of a day never exceeded three pieces of gold, but his ambition was rapacious and profuse, and his gifts were doubled by the graces of his conversation and manners. The love of the soldiers and people excited the jealousy of the court, and Michael thrice escaped from the dangers in which he was involved by his own imprudence or that of his friends. I, under the reign of justice and Vedasis, a dispute arose twelve between two officers, one of whom accused the other of maintaining the hereditary right of the philology the cause was decided, according to the new jurisprudence of the Latins, by single combat, the defendant was overthrown, but he persisted in declaring that himself alone was guilty, and that he had uttered these rash or treasonable speeches without the approbation or knowledge of his patron. Yet, a cloud of suspicion hung over the innocence of the constable, he was still pursued by the whispers of malevolence, and a subtle courtier, the Archbishop of Philadelphia, urged him to accept the judgment of God in the fiery proof of the ordeal. Thirteen three days before the trial, the patient's arm was enclosed in a bag, and secured by the royal signet, and it was incumbent on him to bear a red-hot ball of iron three times from the altar to the rails of the sanctuary, without artifice and without injury. Pelologus eluded the dangerous experiment with sense and pleasantry. I am a soldier, said he, and will boldly enter the lists with my Accusers, but a layman, a sinner like myself, is not endowed with the gift of miracles. Underscore your underscore piety, most holy prelate, may deserve the interposition of heaven, and from your hands I will receive the fiery globe, the pledge of my innocence. The archbishop started, the emperor smiled, and the absolution or pardon of Michael was approved by new rewards and new services. 2. In the succeeding reign, as he held the government of Nice, he was secretly informed that the mind of the absent prince was poisoned with jealousy, and that death, or blindness, would be his final reward. Instead of awaiting the return and sentence of Theodore, the constable, with some followers, escaped from the city and the empire, and though he was plundered by the Turkmens of the desert, he found a hospitable refuge in the court of the Sultan. In the ambiguous state of an exile, Michael reconciled the duties of gratitude and loyalty, drawing his sword against the Tartars, admonishing the garrisons of the Roman limit, and promoting, by his influence, the restoration of peace, in which his pardon and recall were honorably included. 3. While he guarded the West against the despot of Epirus, Michael was again suspected and condemned in the palace, and such was his loyalty, or weakness, that he submitted to be led in chains above six hundred miles from Durazzo to Nice. The civility of the messenger alleviated his disgrace, the emperor's sickness dispelled his danger, and the last breath of Theodore, which recommended his infant son, 
at once acknowledged the innocence and the power of Pelologus. 11. Return The pedigree of Pelologus is explained by Dukenge. Famille. Byzant. p. 230, and c. The events of his private life are related by Pachimer, LIC 712, and Gregoras, L28, L324, L4. 1. With visible favor to the father of the reigning dynasty. 12. Return, Acropolita, c. 50, relates the circumstances of this curious adventure, which seemed to have escaped the more recent writers. 13. Return, Pachimer, LIC 12, who speaks with proper contempt of this barbarous trial, affirms that he had seen in his youth many person who had sustained without injury, the fiery ordeal. As a Greek, he is credulous, but the ingenuity of the Greeks might furnish some remedies of art or fraud against their own superstition, or that of their tyrant. But his innocence had been too unworthily treated, and his power was too strongly felt, to curb an aspiring subject in the fair field that was open to his ambition. 14 In the council, after the death of Theodore, he was the first to pronounce, and they first to violate, the oath of allegiance to Musalan, and so dexterous was his conduct, that he reaped the benefit, without incurring the guilt, or at least the reproach, of the subsequent massacre. In the choice of a regent, he balanced the interests and passions of the candidates, turned their envy and hatred from himself against each other, and forced every competitor to own that after his own claims, those of Pelologus were best entitled to the preference. Under the title of Great Duke, he accepted or assumed during a long minority, the active powers of government. The Patriarch was a venerable name, and the factious nobles were seduced, or oppressed, by the ascendant of his genius. The fruits of the economy of Vedases were deposited in a strong castle on the banks of the Hermas, in the custody of the faithful Varangians, the constable retained his command or influence over the foreign troops, he employed the guards to possess the treasure, and the treasure to corrupt the guards, and whatsoever might be the abuse of the public money, his character was above the suspicion of private avarice by himself, or by his emissaries, he strove to persuade every rank of subjects, that their own prosperity would rise in just proportion to the establishment of his authority. The weight of taxes was suspended, the perpetual theme of popular complaint, and he prohibited the trials by the ordeal and judicial combat. These Barbaric institutions were already abolished or undermined in France 15 and England, 16 and the appeal to the sword offended the sense of a civilized, 17 and the temper of an unwarlike people for the future maintenance of their wives and children. The veterans were grateful, the priests and the philosophers applauded his ardent zeal for the advancement of religion and learning, and his vague promise of rewarding merit was applied by every candidate to his own hopes. Conscious of the influence of the clergy, Michael successfully labored to secure the suffrage of that powerful order. Their expensive journey from Nice to 
Magnesia, afforded a decent and ample pretense, the leading. Prelates were tempted by the liberality of his nocturnal visits. And the incorruptible patriarch was flattered by the homage of his new colleague, who led his mule by the bridle into the town, and removed to a respectful distance the importunity of the crowd. Without renouncing his title by royal descent, Philologus encouraged a free discussion into the advantages of elective monarchy, and his adherents asked, with the insolence of triumph, what patient would trust his health, or what merchant would abandon his vessel, to the underscore hereditary underscore skill of a physician or a pilot? The youth of the emperor, and the impending dangers of a minority, required the support of a mature and experienced guardian, of an associate raised above the envy of his equals and invested with the name and prerogatives of royalty. For the interest of the prince and people, without any selfish views for himself or his family, the great duke consented to guard and instruct the son of Theodore, but he sighed for the happy moment when he might restore to his firmer hands the administration of his patrimony and enjoy the blessings of a private station. He was first invested with the title and prerogatives of underscore despot underscore, which bestowed the purple ornaments and the second place in the Roman monarchy. It was afterwards agreed that John and Michael should be proclaimed as joint emperors, and raised on the buckler but that the preeminence should be reserved for the birthright of the former. A mutual league of amity was pledged between the royal partners, and in case of a rupture, the subjects were bound, by their oath of allegiance, to declare themselves against the aggressor, an ambiguous name, the seat of discord and civil war. Philologus was content, but, on the day of the coronation, and in the cathedral of Nice, his zealous adherents most vehemently urged the just priority of his age and merit. The unseasonable dispute was eluded by postponing to a more convenient opportunity the coronation of John Lascaris, and he walked with a slight diadem in the train of his guardian, who alone received the imperial crown from the hands of the patriarch. It was not without extreme reluctance that Ars News abandoned the cause of his pupil, out the Varangians brandished. Their battle axes, a sign of assent was extorted from the trembling youth and some voices were heard, that the life of a child should no longer impede the settlement of the nation. A full harvest of honors and employments was distributed among his friends by the grateful Pelologus. In his own family he created a despot and two Sebastocrators, Alexius Stratagopoulos was decorated with the title of Xar, and that veteran commander soon repaid the obligation, by restoring Constantinople to the Greek Emperor. 14. Return, without comparing Pachymer to Thucydides or Tacitus, I will praise his narrative, LIC 1332, L2C 19 which pursues the ascent of Pelologus with eloquence, perspicuity, and tolerable freedom. Acropolita is more cautious, and Gregoras more concise. 15. Return, the judicial combat was abolished by Street. Lewis in his own territories, and his example and authority were at length prevalent in France, 
Esprit de Loya, LXXVIIIC 29. 16. Return. In civil cases, Henry II gave an option to the defendant, Glanville prefers the proof by evidence, and that by judicial combat is reprobated in the fleet. Yet the trial by Battle has never been abrogated in the English law, and it was ordered by the judges as late as the beginning of the last century. Asterisk note, and even demanded in the present M. 17, return, yet an ingenious friend has urged to me in mitigation of this practice, 1. Underscore that underscore in nations emerging from Barbarism, it moderates the license of private war and arbitrary Revenge 2. Underscore that underscore it is less absurd than the trials by the Ordeal, or boiling water, or the cross, which it has contributed To abolish 3. Underscore that underscore it served at least as a test of personal Courage a quality so seldom united with a base disposition, that the danger of a trial might be some check to a malicious prosecutor, and a useful barrier against injustice supported by power. The gallant and unfortunate Earl of Surrey might probably have escaped his unmerited fate, had not his demand of the combat against his accuser been overruled. It was in the second year of his reign, while he resided in the Palace and Gardens of Nymphum, 18 near Smyrna, that the first messenger arrived at the dead of night, and the stupendous intelligence was imparted to Michael, after he had been gently waked by the tender precaution of his sister Eulogia. The man was Unknown or obscure, he produced no letters from the victorious Xar, nor could it easily be credited, after the defeat of Vedases and the recent failure of Palologus himself, that the capital had been surprised by a detachment of 800 soldiers. As a hostage, the doubtful author was confined, with the assurance of death or an ample recompense, and the court was left some hours in the anxiety of hope and fear, till the messengers of Alexius arrived with the authentic intelligence and displayed the trophies of the conquest, the sword and scepter, 19 the buskins and bonnet, 20 of the usurper Baldwin, which he had dropped in his precipitate flight. A general assembly of the bishops, senators, and nobles, was immediately convened, and never perhaps was an event received with more heartfelt and universal joy. In a studied oration, the new sovereign of Constantinople congratulated his own and the public fortune. There was a time, said he, a far distant time, when the Roman Empire extended to the Adriatic, the Tigris, and the confines of Thiopia. After the loss of the provinces, our capital itself, in these last and calamitous days, has been wrested from our hands by the barbarians of the West. From the lowest ebb the tide of prosperity has again returned in our favor, but our prosperity was that of fugitives and exiles, and when we were asked, which was the country of the Romans, we indicated with a blush the climate of the globe, and the quarter of the heavens. The divine providence has now restored to our arms the city of Constantine, the sacred seat of religion and empire, and it will depend on our valor and conduct to render 
This important acquisition the pledge and omen of future victories. So eager was the impatience of the prince and people that Michael made his triumphal entry into Constantinople only twenty days after the expulsion of the Latins. The Golden Gate was thrown open at his approach, the devout conqueror dismounted from his horse, and a miraculous image of Mary the Conductress was born before him, that the Divine Virgin in person might appear to conduct him to the temple of her son, the Cathedral of Street Sophia. But after the first transport of devotion and pride, he sighed at the dreary prospect of solitude and ruin. The palace was defiled with smoke and dirt, and the gross intemperance of the Franks, whole streets had been consumed by fire, or were decayed by the injuries of time, the sacred and profane edifices were stripped of their ornaments, and, as if they were conscious of their approaching exile, the industry of the Latins had been confined to the work of pillage and destruction. Trade had expired under the pressure of anarchy and distress, and they Numbers of inhabitants had decreased with the opulence of the city. It was the first care of the Greek monarch to reinstate the nobles in the palaces of their fathers, and the houses or the ground which they occupied were restored to the families that could exhibit a legal right of inheritance. But the far greater part was extinct or lost, the vacant property had devolved to the Lord, he repeopled Constantinople by a liberal invitation to the provinces, and the brave underscore volunteers underscore were seated in the capital, which had been recovered by their arms. The French barons and the principal families had retired with their emperor, but they patient and humble crowd of Latins was attached to the country, and indifferent to the change of masters. Instead of banishing the factories of the Pisans, Venetians and Genoese, the prudent conqueror accepted their oaths of allegiance, encouraged their industry, confirmed their privileges, and allowed them to live under the jurisdiction of their proper magistrates. Of these nations, the Pisans and Venetians preserved their respective quarters in the city, but the services and power of the Genoese deserved at the same time the gratitude and the jealousy of the Greeks. Their independent colony was first planted at the seaport town of Heraclea in Thrace. They were speedily recalled, and settled in the exclusive possession of the suburb of Galata, an advantageous post, in which they revived the commerce, and insulted the majesty, of the Byzantine Empire. 21. 18. Return, the site of Nymphum is not clearly defined in ancient or modern geography. But from the last hours of Veda sees Acropolita, c. 52, it is evident the palace and gardens of his favorite residence were in the neighborhood of Smyrna. Nymphum might be loosely placed in Lydia, Gregoras, L. 6. 6. 19. Return, this scepter the emblem of justice and power, was a long staff, such as was used by the heroes in Homer. By the latter Greeks it was named underscore Dicanus underscore, and the imperial scepter was distinguished as usual by the red or purple color. 20. Return, Acropolita affirms, c. 87, that this onnet was after the French fashion, 
but from the ruby at the point or summit, Dukenge, History DC PL VC 28, 29, believes that it was the high crowned hat of the Greeks. Could Acropo lead a mistake? The dress of his own court. 21, Return, C. Pachimer, L2C 2833, Acropolita, C. 88, Nisphorus Gregoras, L47, and for the treatment of the subject Latins, Duckenge, LVC 30, 31. The recovery of Constantinople was celebrated as the Ra of a new empire, the conqueror, alone, and by the right of the sword. Renewed his coronation in the Church of Street. Sophia, and the name. And honors of John Lascaris, his pupil and lawful sovereign, were insensibly abolished. But his claims still lived in the minds of the people, and the royal youth must speedily attain the years of manhood and ambition. By fear or conscience, Palologus was restrained from dipping his hands in innocent and royal blood. But the anxiety of a usurper and a parent urged him to secure his throne by one of those imperfect crimes so familiar to the modern Greeks. The loss of sight incapacitated the young prince for the active business of the world, instead of the brutal violence of tearing out his eyes, the visual nerve was destroyed by the intense glare of a red-hot basin, 22 and John Lascaris was removed to a distant castle, where he spent many years in privacy and oblivion. Such cool and deliberate guilt may seem incompatible with remorse, but if Michael could trust the mercy of heaven, he was not inaccessible to the reproaches and vengeance of mankind, which he had provoked by cruelty and treason. His cruelty imposed on a servile court the duties of applause or silence, but the clergy had a right to speak in the name of their invisible master, and their holy legions were led by a prelate, whose character was above the temptations of hope or fear. After a short abdication of his dignity, Ars News 23 had consented to ascend the ecclesiastical throne of Constantinople and to preside in the restoration of the Church. His pious simplicity was long deceived by the arts of Palologus, and his Patience and submission might soothe the usurper, and protect the safety of the young prince. On the news of his inhuman treatment, the patriarch unsheathed the spiritual sword, and superstition, on this occasion, was enlisted in the cause of humanity and justice. In a synod of bishops, who were stimulated by the example of his zeal, the Patriarch pronounced a sentence of excommunication, though his prudence still repeated the name of Michael in the public prayers. The Eastern prelates had not adopted the dangerous maxims of ancient Rome, nor did they presume to enforce their censures by deposing princes or absolving nations from their oaths of allegiance. But they, Christian, who had been separated from God and the Church, became an object of horror, and, in a turbulent and fanatic capital, that horror might arm the hand of an assassin, or inflame a sedition of the people. Palologus felt his danger, confessed his guilt, and deprecated his judge, the act was irretrievable, they prize was obtained, and the most rigorous penance, which he solicited, would have raised the sinner to the reputation of a 
Saint. The unrelenting patriarch refused to announce any means of atonement or any hopes of mercy, and condescended only to pronounce that for so great a crime, great indeed must be they. Satisfaction. Do you require, said Michael, that I should abdicate the empire, and at these words, he offered, or seemed to offer, the sword of state. Arse News eagerly grasped this pledge of sovereignty, but when he perceived that the emperor was unwilling to purchase absolution at so dear a rate, he indignantly escaped to his cell and left the royal sinner, kneeling and weeping before the door. 24. 22. Return, this milder invention for extinguishing the sight, was tried by the philosopher Democritus on himself, when he sought to withdraw his mind from the visible world, a foolish story. The word underscore of a sinere underscore, in Latin and Italian, has furnished Duckenge, Gloss Latin, with an opportunity to review the various modes of blinding, the more violent were scooping, burning with an iron, or hot vinegar, and binding the head with a strong cord, till the eyes burst from their sockets. Ingenious Tyrants 23 Return, see the first retreat and restoration of Ars News. In Pachimer, L. 2 C. 15, L. 3 C. 1, 2, and Nisphorus. Gregoras, L. 3 C. 1, L. 4 C. 1. Posterity justly accused. The Agelia and Racumia of Ars News, the virtues of a hermit, the vices of a minister. L. 12 C. 2. 24. Return, the crime and excommunication of Michael are fairly told by Pachimer, L. 3 C. 10, 14, 19, and C. and Gregoras, L. 4 C. 4. His confession and penance restored their freedom. Chapter LXII. Greek Emperors of Nice and Constantinople, Part 2 The danger and scandal of this excommunication subsisted above three years, till the popular clamor was assuaged by time and repentance, till the brethren of Ars News condemned his inflexible spirit, so repugnant to the unbounded forgiveness of the Gospel. The emperor had artfully insinuated, that, if he were still rejected at home, he might seek, in the Roman pontiff, a more indulgent judge, but it was far more easy and effectual to find or to place that judge at the head of the Byzantine church. Ars News was involved in a vague rumor of conspiracy and disaffection. 248 Some irregular steps in his ordination and government were liable to censure, a synod deposed him from the episcopal office, and he was transported under a guard of soldiers to a small island of the Propontis. Before his exile, he sullenly requested that a strict account might be taken of the treasures of the church, boasted, that his sole riches, three pieces of gold, had been earned by transcribing the Psalms, continued to assert the freedom of his mind, and denied, with his last breath, the pardon which was implored by the royal sinner. 25 After some delay, Gregory, 259 Bishop of Adrianople, was translated to the Byzantine throne, but his authority was found insufficient to support the absolution of the emperor, and Joseph, a reverend monk, was substituted to that important function. 
This edifying scene was represented in the presence of the Senate and the people, at the end of six years the humble penitent was restored to the communion of the faithful, and humanity will rejoice, that a milder treatment of the captive Lascaris was stipulated as a proof of his remorse. But the spirit of Ars News still survived in a powerful faction of the monks and clergy, who persevered about 48 years in an obstinate schism. Their scruples were treated with tenderness and respect by Michael and his son, and the reconciliation of the Arsenites was the serious labor of the church and state. In the confidence of fanaticism, they had proposed to try their cause by a miracle. And when the two papers, that contained their own and the adverse cause, were cast into a fiery brazier, they expected that the Catholic verity would be respected by the flames. Alas! The two Papers were indiscriminately consumed, and this unforeseen accident produced the union of a day, and renewed the quarrel of an age. 26 The final treaty displayed the victory of the Arsenites, the clergy abstained during forty days from all ecclesiastical functions, a slight penance was imposed on the laity, the body of Ars News was deposited in the sanctuary, and in the name of the departed saint, the prince and people were released from the sins of their fathers. 27. 248. Return, except the omission of a prayer for the emperor. The charges against Ars News were of different nature, he was accused of having allowed the Sultan of Iconium to bathe in vessels signed with the cross, and to have admitted him to the church, though unbaptized, during the service. It was pleaded, in favor of Ars News, among other proofs of the Sultan's Christianity, that he had offered to eat ham. Pachimer, L. 4. C. 4, p. 265. It was after his exile that he was involved in a charge of conspiracy. M. 25, Return, Pachimer relates the exile of Ars News, L4C. 116, He was one of the commissaries who visited him in the desert island. The last testament of the unforgiving patriarch is Still extant, de Pan, Bibliotheque Ecclesiastici, Tom XP. 95. 259. Return, Pachimer calls him Germanus M. 26. Return, Pachimer, L7 C. 22, relates this miraculous trial like a philosopher, and treats with similar contempt a plot of the Arsenites, to hide a revelation in the coffin of some old saint, L. 7 C. 13. He compensates this incredulity by an image that weeps, another that bleeds, L. 7 C. 30, and the miraculous cures of a deaf and a mute patient, L. 11 C. 32. 27. Return the story of the Arsenites is spread through the Thirteen Books of Pachimer. Their union and triumph are reserved. For Nisphorus Gregoras, L. 7 C. 9, who neither loves nor esteems these sectaries. The establishment of his family was the motive, or at least the pretense, of the crime of Pelologus, and he was impatient to confirm the succession, by sharing with his eldest son the honors of the purple. Andronicus, afterwards surnamed the Elder, was 
proclaimed and crowned emperor of the Romans, in the fifteenth year of his age, and, from the first raw of a prolix end. In glorious reign, he held that august title nine years as the colleague, and fifty as the successor, of his father. Michael himself, had he died in a private station, would have been thought more worthy of the empire, and the assaults of his temporal and spiritual enemies left him few moments to labor for his own fame or the happiness of his subjects. He wrested from the Franks several of the noblest islands of the archipelago, Lesbos, Chios, and Rhodes, his brother Constantine was sent to command in Malvasia and Sparta, and the eastern side of the Moria, from Argos and Napoli to Cape Thinners, was repossessed by the Greeks. This effusion of Christian blood was loudly condemned by the Patriarch, and the insolent priest presumed to interpose his fears and scruples between the arms of princes. But in the prosecution of these western conquests, the countries beyond the Hellespont were left naked to the Turks, and their depredations verified the prophecy of a dying senator, that the recovery of Constantinople would be the ruin of Asia. The victories of Michael were achieved by his lieutenants, his sword rusted in the palace, and, in the transactions of the emperor with the popes and the king of Naples, his political acts were stained with cruelty and fraud. 28. 28, Return, of the Thirteen Books of Pachimer, the First Six, as the Ivyth and Vth of Nisphorus Gregoras, contain the reign of Michael, at the time of whose death he was forty years of age. Instead of breaking, like his editor the pair Pusa, his history into two parts, I follow Dukanj and Cousin, who number the thirteen books in one series. I, the Vatican was the most natural refuge of a Latin emperor, who had been driven from his throne, and Pope Urban IV, appeared to pity the misfortunes, and vindicate the cause, of the fugitive Baldwin. A crusade, with plenary indulgence, was preached by his command against the schismatic Greeks, he excommunicated their allies and adherents, solicited Louis the ninth in favor of his kinsmen, and demanded a tenth of the ecclesiastical revenues of France and England for the service of the Holy War. 29 The subtle Greek, who watched the rising tempest of the West, attempted to suspend or soothe the hostility of the Pope, by suppliant embassies and respectful letters, but he insinuated that the establishment of peace must prepare the reconciliation and obedience of the Eastern Church. The Roman court could not be deceived by so gross an artifice, and Michael was admonished that the repentance of the Son should precede the forgiveness of the Father, and that underscore faith underscore, an ambiguous word, was the only basis of friendship and alliance. After a long end, affected delay, the approach of danger, and the importunity of Gregory X, compelled him to enter on a more serious negotiation, he alleged the example of the great Vedases, and the Greek clergy, who understood the intentions of their prince, were not alarmed by the first steps of reconciliation and respect. But, when he pressed the conclusion of the treaty, they strenuously declared that the Latins, though not in name, were heretics in 
fact, and that they despised those strangers as the vilest and most despicable portion of the human race. 30. It was the task of the emperor to persuade, to corrupt, to intimidate the most popular ecclesiastics, to gain the vote of each individual, and alternately to urge the arguments of Christian charity and the public welfare. The texts of the fathers and the arms of the Franks were balanced in the theological and political scale, and without approving the addition to the Nicene Creed, the most moderate were taught to confess that the two hostile propositions of proceeding from the Father by the Son, and of proceeding from the Father and the Son, might be reduced to a safe and Catholic sense. 31 The supremacy of the Pope was a doctrine more easy to conceive, but more painful to acknowledge. Yet Michael represented to his monks and prelates, that they might submit to name the Roman bishop as the first of the patriarchs, and that their distance and discretion would guard the liberties of the Eastern Church from the mischievous consequences of the right of appeal. He protested that he would sacrifice his life and empire rather than yield the smallest point of orthodox faith or national independence, and this Declaration was sealed and ratified by a golden bull. The Patriarch Joseph withdrew to a monastery, to resign or resume his throne, according to the event of the treaty, the letters of Union and Obedience were subscribed by the Emperor, his son, Andronicus, and thirty-five archbishops and metropolitans, with their respective synods, and the episcopal list was multiplied by many dioceses which were annihilated under the yoke of the infidels. An embassy was composed of some trusty ministers and prelates, they embarked for Italy, with rich ornaments and rare perfumes for the altar of street, Peter, and their secret orders authorized and recommended a boundless compliance. They were received in the General Council of Lyons, by Pope Gregory the Tenth, at the head of five hundred bishops. Thirty-two he embraced with tears his long-lost and repentant children, accepted the oath of the ambassadors, who abjured the schism in the name of the two emperors, adorned the prelates with the ring and mitre, chanted in Greek and Latin the Nicene Creed with the addition of underscore filioque underscore, and rejoiced in the union of the East and West, which had been reserved for his reign. To consummate this pious work, the Byzantine deputies were speedily followed by the Pope's nuncios, and their instruction discloses the policy of the Vatican, which could not be satisfied with the vain title of supremacy. After viewing the temper of the prince and people, they were enjoined to absolve the schismatic clergy, who should subscribe and swear their abjuration and obedience, to establish in all the churches the use of the perfect creed, to prepare the entrance of a cardinal legate, with the full powers and dignity of his office, and to instruct the emperor in the advantages which he might derive from the temporal protection of the Roman pontiff. 33. 29. Return, Duckenge, History DC, PL, VC, 33, and C, from the Epistles of Urban 4. 30. Return, from their mercantile intercourse with the Venetians and Genoese, they branded the Latins as Cafloy and Banassois, 
Pachimer, LVC 10. Some are heretics in name. Others, like the Latins, in fact, said the learned Vecus, L. V. C. 12, who soon afterwards became a convert, C. 15, 16, and a Patriarch, C. 24. 31, return, in this class we may place Pachimer himself, whose copious and candid narrative occupies the VTH and Vith books of his history. Yet the Greek is silent on the Council of Lyons, and seems to believe that the popes always resided in Rome and Italy. L. V. C. 17, 21. 32. Return, see the Acts of the Council of Lyons in the year. 1274. Flery, History. Ecclesiastici, Tom. 18 p. 181-199. Dupin, Bibliot. Ecclesiastes. Tom. X. p. 135. 33. Return, this curious instruction, which has been drawn with more or less honesty by waiting and Leo Alatius from the archives of the Vatican, is given in an abstract or version by Flery. Tom, 18 p. 252-258. But they found a country without a friend, a nation in which they names of Rome and Union were pronounced with abhorrence. They Patriarch Joseph was indeed removed, his place was filled by Vecus, an ecclesiastic of learning and moderation, and the Emperor was still urged by the same motives, to persevere in the same professions. But in his private language Palologus affected to deplore the pride, and to blame the innovations, of the Latins, and while he debased his character by this double hypocrisy, he justified and punished the opposition of his subjects by the joint suffrage of the new and the ancient Rome. A sentence of excommunication was pronounced against the obstinate schismatics, the censures of the Church were executed. By the sword of Michael, on the failure of persuasion, he tried. The arguments of prison and exile, of whipping and mutilation. Those touchstones, says an historian, of cowards and the brave. Two Greeks still reigned in Talia, Epirus, and Thessaly, with the appellation of despots, they had yielded to the sovereign of Constantinople, but they rejected the chains of the Roman pontiff, and supported their refusal by successful arms. Under their protection, the fugitive monks and bishops assembled in hostile synods, and retorted the name of heretic with the galling addition of apostate, the prince of Trebizond was tempted to Assume the forfeit title of Emperor, 339 and even the Latins of Negropont, Thebes, Athens, and the Moria, forgot the merits of the convert, to join, with open or clandestine aid, the enemies of Palologus, his favorite generals, of his own blood, and family, successively deserted, or betrayed, the sacrilegious trust. His sister Eulogia, a niece, and two female cousins conspired against him, another niece, Mary Queen of Bulgaria, negotiated his ruin with the Sultan of Egypt, and, in the public, I, their treason was consecrated as the most sublime virtue. 34 to the Pope's nuncios, who urged the consummation of the work. Palologus exposed a naked recital of all that he had done and suffered for their sake.
they were assured that the guilty sectaries, of both sexes and every rank, had been deprived of their honors, their fortunes, and their liberty, a spreading list of confiscation and punishment, which involved many persons, they dearest to the emperor, or the best deserving of his favor. They were conducted to the prison, to behold four princes of the royal blood chained in the four corners, and shaking their fetters in an agony of grief and rage. Two of these captives were afterwards released, the one by submission, the other by death, but the obstinacy of their two companions was chastised by the loss of their eyes, and the Greeks, the least adverse to the Union, deplored that cruel and inauspicious tragedy. Thirty-five persecutors must expect the hatred of those whom they oppress, but they commonly find some consolation in the testimony of their conscience, the applause of their party, and, perhaps, the success of their undertaking. But the hypocrisy of Michael, which was prompted only by political motives, must have forced him to hate himself, to despise his followers, and to esteem and envy the rebel champions by whom he was detested and despised, while his violence was abhorred at Constantinople, at Rome his slowness was arraigned, and his sincerity suspected, till at length Pope Martin IV excluded the Greek emperor from the pale of a church, into which he was striving to reduce a schismatic people. No sooner had the tyrant expired, than the union was dissolved. And abjured by unanimous consent, the churches were purified, the penitents were reconciled, and his son Andronicus, after weeping. The sins and errors of his youth most piously denied his father. The burial of a prince and a Christian. 36. 339 return, according to Falmerayer he had always maintained. This title, M. 34, return, this frank and authentic confession of Michael's. Distress is exhibited in barbarous Latin by Ogarius, who signs himself protonotarius interpretum, and transcribed by waiting from the Missus of the Vatican, A.D. 1278, Number 3. His Annals of the Franciscan Order, the Fratra Minoris, in 17. Volumes in Folio. Rome, 1741, I have now accidentally seen among the waste paper of a bookseller. 35. Return, see the Vith Book of Pachimer, particularly the Chapters 1, 11, 16, 18, 24, 27. He is the more credible, as he speaks of this persecution with less anger than sorrow. 36. Return, Pachimer, L7 C 1 I I. 17. The speech of Andronicus the Elder, Lib 12 C 2, is a curious record, which proves that if the Greeks were the slaves of the emperor, the emperor was not less the slave of superstition and the clergy. 2. In the distress of the Latins, the walls and towers of Constantinople had fallen to decay, they were restored and fortified by the policy of Michael, who deposited a plenteous store of corn and salt provisions, to sustain the siege which he might hourly expect from the resentment of the Western powers. Of these, the sovereign of the two Sicilies was the most formidable neighbor, but as long as they were possessed by Mainfroy, they 
bastard of Frederick II, his monarchy was the bulwark, rather than the annoyance, of the Eastern Empire. The usurper, though a brave and active prince, was sufficiently employed in the defense of his throne, his proscription by successive popes, had separated main Freud from the common cause of the Latins, and the forces that might have besieged Constantinople were detained in a crusade against the domestic enemy of Rome. The prize of her avenger, the crown of the two Sicilies, was won and worn by the brother of St. Louis, by Charles Count of Anjou and Provence, who led the chivalry of France on this holy expedition. 37 The disaffection of his Christian subjects compelled Main Freud to enlist a colony of Saracens whom his father had planted in Apulia, and this odious succor will explain the defiance of the Catholic hero, who rejected all terms of accommodation. Bear this message, said Charles, to the Sultan of Nasera, that God and the sword are umpire between us, and that he shall either send me to paradise, or I will send him to the pit of hell. The armies met, and though I am ignorant of Main Freud's doom in the other world, in this he lost his friends, his kingdom, and his life in the bloody battle of Benevento. Naples and Sicily were immediately peopled with a warlike race of French nobles, and their aspiring leader embraced the future conquest of Africa, Greece, and Palestine. The most specious reasons might point his first arms against the Byzantine Empire, and Palologus diffident of his own strength, repeatedly appealed from the ambition of Charles to the humanity of Street. Louis, who still preserved a just ascendant over the mind of his ferocious brother. For a while the attention of that brother was confined at home by the invasion of Conradin, the last heir to the imperial house of Swabia but the hapless boy sunk in the unequal conflict, and his execution on a public scaffold taught the rivals of Charles to tremble for their heads as well as their dominions. A second respite was obtained by the last crusade of Street Louis to the African coast, and the double motive of interest and duty urged the King of Naples to assist, with his powers and his presence, the holy enterprise. The death of Street Louis released him from the importunity of a virtuous censor, the King of Tunis confessed himself the tributary and vassal of the crown of Sicily, and the boldest of the French knights were free to enlist under his banner against the Greek Empire. A treaty and a marriage united his interest with the House of Courtenay, his daughter Beatrice was promised to Philip, son and heir of the Emperor Baldwin, a pension of 600 ounces of gold was allowed for his maintenance, and his generous father distributed among his aliens the kingdoms and provinces of the east, reserving only Constantinople, and one day's journey round the city for the imperial domain. 38 In this perilous moment, Palologus was the most eager to subscribe the creed, and implore the protection, of the Roman pontiff, who assumed, with propriety, and wait, the character of an angel of peace, the common father of the Christians. By his voice, the sword of Charles was chained in the scabbard, and the Greek ambassadors beheld him, in the Pope's antechamber, 
biting his ivory scepter in a transport of fury, and deeply resenting the refusal to enfranchise and consecrate his arms. He appears to have respected the disinterested mediation of Gregory X, but Charles was insensibly disgusted by the pride and partiality of Nicholas the third, and his attachment to his kindred, the Ursini family, alienated the most strenuous champion from the service of the Church. The hostile league against the Greeks, of Philip the Latin Emperor, the King of the Two Sicilies, and the Republic of Venice, was ripened into execution, and the election of Martin the Fourth, a French Pope, gave a sanction to the cause of the Allies, Philip supplied his name, Martin, a bull of excommunication, the Venetians, a squadron of forty galleys, and the formidable powers of Charles consisted of forty counts, ten thousand men at arms, a numerous body of infantry, and a fleet of more than three hundred ships and transports. A distant day was appointed for assembling this mighty force in the harbour of Brindisi, and a previous attempt was risked with a detachment of three hundred knights, who invaded Albania, and besieged the fortress of Belgrade. Their defeat might amuse with a triumph the vanity of Constantinople, but the more sagacious Michael despairing of his arms, depended on the effects of a conspiracy, on the secret workings of a rat, who gnawed the bowstring 39 of the Sicilian tyrant. 37. Return, the best accounts, the nearest the time, the most full and entertaining, of the conquest of Naples by Charles of Anjou may be found in the Florentine Chronicles of Ricerdano. Male Spina, c. 175-193, and Giovanni Villani, l. 7 c. 110. 25-30, which are published by Muratori in the 8th and Zeth. Volumes of the Historians of Italy. In his Annals, Tom 11 p. 56-72, he has abridged these great events which are likewise described in the Astoria Seville of Giannoni. Tom. L. 19. Tom. 3 L. XX. 38. Return, Duckenge, History DC, PL, VC, 4956, L6C. 113. C. Pachimer. L. 4. C. 29, L. V. C. 710, 25 liters 6. C. 30. 32, 33, and Nice Forest Gregoras, L. 4. 5, L. V. 1, 6. 39, Return, the reader of Herodotus will recollect how Miraculously, the Assyrian host of Sennacherib was disarmed and destroyed, L2C 141. Among the proscribed adherents of the House of Swabia, John of Prachita forfeited a small island of that name in the Bay of Naples. His birth was noble, but his education was learned, and in the poverty of exile, he was relieved by the practice of physic, which he had studied in the school of Salerno. Fortune had left him nothing to lose, except life, and to despise life is the first qualification of a rebel. Prachita was endowed with the art of negotiation, to enforce his reasons and disguise his motives, and in his various transactions with nations and men, he 
could persuade each party that he labored solely for underscore their underscore interest. The new kingdoms of Charles were afflicted by every species of fiscal and military oppression, forty and the lives end. Fortunes of his Italian subjects were sacrificed to the greatness of their master and the licentiousness of his followers. The hatred of Naples was repressed by his presence, but the looser government of his vicegerents excited the contempt, as well as the aversion of the Sicilians, the island was roused to a sense of freedom by the eloquence of Prachita, and he displayed to every baron his private interest in the common cause. In the confidence of foreign aid, he successively visited the courts of the Greek emperor, and of Peter king of Aragon, forty-one who possessed the maritime countries of Valencia and Catalonia. To the ambitious Peter a crown was presented, which he might justly claim by his marriage with the sister 419 of Mainfroy, and by the dying voice of Conradin, who from the scaffold had cast a ring to his heir. An avenger. Pelologus was easily persuaded to divert his enemy from a foreign war by a rebellion at home, and a Greek subsidy of 25,000 ounces of gold was most profitably applied to arm a Catalan fleet, which sailed under a holy banner to the specious attack of the Saracens of Africa. In the disguise of a monk or beggar, the indefatigable missionary of revolt flew from Constantinople to Rome, and from Sicily to Saragossa, the treaty was sealed with the signet of Pope Nicholas himself, the enemy of Charles, and his deed of gift transferred the fiefs of Street Peter from the house of Anjou to that of Aragon, so widely diffused and so freely circulated, the secret was preserved above two years with impenetrable discretion, and each of the conspirators imbibed the maxim of Peter, who declared that he would cut off his left hand if it were conscious of the intentions of his right. The mine was prepared with deep and dangerous artifice. But it may be questioned, whether the instant explosion of Palermo were the effect of accident or design. 40. Return, according to Sabas Malaspina, History Sicula, L. 3 c. 16, in Muratori, Tom. 8 p. 832, a zealous Guelph. The subjects of Charles, who had reviled Mainfroy as a wolf, began to regret him as a lamb, and he justifies their discontent. By the oppressions of the French government, L. 6 c. 2, 7. See the Sicilian Manifesto in Nicholas Spasilis, L.I.C. 11. In Muratori, Tom. X. P. 930. 41. Return, see the character and counsels of Peter, King of Aragon, in Mariana, History Hispan L. 14 c. 6, Tom 2 p. 133. The reader forgives the Jesuits' defects, in favor, always, of his style, and often of his sense. 419. Return, Daughter. See Hallam's Middle Ages, Vol. I. P. 517. M. On the vigil of Easter, a procession of the disarmed citizens visited a church without the walls, and a noble damsel was rudely insulted by a French soldier. 42 The ravisher was instantly punished with death, and if the people was at first scattered by 
A military force, their numbers and fury prevailed, the conspirators seized the opportunity, the flame spread over the island, and 8,000 French were exterminated in a promiscuous massacre, which has obtained the name of the Sicilian Vespers. 43 from every city the banners of freedom and the church were displayed, the revolt was inspired by the presence or the soul of Prachita and Peter of Aragon, who sailed from the African coast to Palermo, was saluted as the king and savior of the isle, by the rebellion of a people on whom he had so long trampled with impunity, Charles was astonished and confounded, and in the first agony of grief and devotion, he was heard to exclaim, O God, if Thou hast decreed to humble me, grant me at least a gentle end. Gradual descent from the pinnacle of greatness. His fleet and army, which already filled the sea ports of Italy, were hastily Recalled from the service of the Grecian War, and the situation of Messina exposed that town to the first storm of his revenge. Feeble in themselves, and yet hopeless of foreign succor, they citizens would have repented, and submitted on the assurance of full pardon and their ancient privileges. But the pride of the monarch was already rekindled, and the most fervent entreaties of the legate could extort no more than a promise that he would forgive the remainder after a chosen list of 800 rebels had been yielded to his discretion the despair of the messinese renewed their courage peter of aragon approached to their relief 44 and his rival was driven back by the failure of provision and the terrors of the equinox to the Calabrian shore. At the same moment, the Catalan admiral, the famous Roger D. Loria, swept the channel with an invincible squadron, the French fleet, more numerous in transports than in galleys, was either burnt or destroyed, and the same blow assured the independence of Sicily and the safety of the Greek Empire. A few days before his death, the Emperor Michael rejoiced in the fall of an enemy whom he hated and esteemed, and perhaps he might be content with a popular judgment, that had they not been matched with each other, Constantinople and Italy must speedily have obeyed the same master. 45 From this disastrous moment, the life of Charles was a series of misfortunes, his capital was insulted, his son was made prisoner, and he sunk into the grave without recovering the isle of Sicily, which, after a war of twenty years, was finally severed from the throne of Naples, and transferred, as an independent kingdom, to a younger branch of the House of Aragon. 46. 42. Return, after enumerating the sufferings of his country. Nicholas Spasilus adds, in the true spirit of Italian jealousy. Q u omnia et graviora quidem, ut arbitraer, patienti animo siculi. Toler assent, nisi. Quat primum cunctus domin antibus cavendum est. Alienosf minus invas ascent, lic 2, p. 924. 43. Return, the French were long taught to remember this bloody lesson, if I am provoked, said Henry IV, I will breakfast at Milan, and dine at Naples. Your Majesty, replied. The Spanish ambassador, may perhaps arrive in Sicily for Vespers. 44. Return, this revolt, with the subsequent victory, are 
related by two national writers, Bartholomew Neo Castro, in Muratori, Tom. 13, and Nicholas Spasilis, in Muratori, Tom. X, the one a contemporary, the other of the next century. The Patriot Spasilis disclaims the name of rebellion, and all Previous correspondence with Peter of Aragon, Nolo Comunicato. Concilio, who underscore happened underscore to be with a fleet and army on the African coast, LIC 4, 9. 45, return, Nice Forus Gregoras, LVC 6, admires the wisdom of providence in this equal balance of states and princes. 4. The honor of Pelologus, I had rather this balance had been observed by an Italian writer. 46. Return, see the Chronicle of Villainy, the Zith volume of the Annali d'Italia of Muratori, and the XXTH and Thsist books of the Astoria Seville of Giannoni. Chapter LXII Greek Emperors of Nice and Constantinople, Part 3 I shall not, I trust, be accused of superstition, but I must remark that, even in this world, the natural order of events will sometimes afford the strong appearances of moral retribution. The first Pelologus had saved his empire by involving the kingdoms of the West in rebellion and blood, and from these scenes of discord uprose a generation of iron men, who assaulted and endangered the empire of his son. In modern times our debts end. Taxes are the secret poison which still corrodes the bosom of peace, but in the weak and disorderly government of the Middle Ages, it was agitated by the present evil of the disbanded armies. Too idle to work, too proud to beg, the mercenaries were accustomed to a life of rapine, they could rob with more dignity. An effect under a banner and a chief, and the sovereign, to whom their service was useless, and their presence importunate endeavored to discharge the torrent on some neighboring countries. After the peace of Sicily, many thousands of Genoese underscore Catalans underscore, 47 NC, who had fought, by sea and land, under the standard of Anjou or Aragon, were blended into one nation by the resemblance of their manners and interest. They heard that the Greek provinces of Asia were invaded by the Turks, they resolved to share the harvest of pay and plunder, and Frederick King of Sicily most liberally contributed the means of their departure. In a warfare of twenty years, a ship, or a camp, was become their country, arms were their sole profession and property, valor was the only virtue which they knew their women had imbibed the fearless temper of their lovers and husbands, it was reported that, with a stroke of their broadsword, the Catalans could cleave a horseman and a horse, and the report itself was a powerful weapon. Roger de Flor 477 was the most popular of their chiefs, and his personal merit overshadowed the dignity of his prouder rivals of Aragon. The offspring of a marriage between a German gentleman of the court of Frederick II and a damsel of Brindisi, Roger was successively a Templar, an apostate, a pirate, and at length the richest and most powerful admiral of the Mediterranean. He sailed from Messina to Constantinople, with 18 galleys, 4 great ships, and 8,000 adventurers, 
478 and his previous treaty was faithfully accomplished by Andronicus the Elder, who accepted with joy and tear this formidable sucker. A palace was allotted for his reception, and a niece of the emperor was given in marriage to the valiant stranger, who was immediately created great duke or admiral of Romania. After a decent repose, he transported his troops over the Propontis, and boldly led them against the Turks. In two bloody battles 30,000 of the Moslems were slain. He raised the siege of Philadelphia, and deserved the name of the Deliverer of Asia. But after a short season of prosperity, the cloud of slavery and ruin again burst on that unhappy province. The inhabitants escaped, says a Greek historian, from the smoke into the flames, and the hostility of the Turks was less pernicious than the friendship of the Catalans. 479 The Lives End Fortunes which they had rescued they considered as their own, they willing or reluctant maid was saved from the race of circumcision. For the embraces of a Christian soldier, the exaction of fines and supplies was enforced by licentious rapine and arbitrary executions, and, on the resistance of Magnesia, the great duke besieged a city of the Roman Empire. 48 These disorders he excused by the wrongs and passions of a victorious army, nor would his own authority or person have been safe, had he dared to punish his faithful followers, who were defrauded of the just end, covenanted price of their services. The threats and complaints of Andronicus disclosed the nakedness of the empire. His golden bull had invited no more than five hundred horse and a thousand foot soldiers, yet the crowds of volunteers, who migrated to the east, had been enlisted and fed by his spontaneous bounty. While his bravest allies were content with three Byzants or pieces of gold, for their monthly pay, an ounce or even two ounces of gold were assigned to the Catalans, whose annual pension would thus amount to near a hundred pounds sterling, one of their chiefs had modestly rated at three hundred thousand crowns the value of his underscore future underscore merits, and above a million had been issued from the treasury for the maintenance of these costly mercenaries. A cruel Tax had been imposed on the corn of the husbandman, one-third was retrenched from the salaries of the public officers, and the standard of the coin was so shamefully debased, that of the four and twenty parts only five were of pure gold. Forty-nine at the summons of the emperor, Roger evacuated a province which no longer supplied the materials of Rapin, 496 but he refused to disperse his troops, and while his style was respectful, his conduct was independent and hostile. He protested, that if the emperor should march against him, he would advance forty paces to kiss the ground before him, but in rising from this prostrate Attitude Roger had a life and sword at the service of his friends. The great Duke of Romania condescended to accept the title and ornaments of Xar, but he rejected the new proposal of the government of Asia with a subsidy of corn and money, 497 on condition that he should reduce his troops to the harmless number of three thousand men. Assassination is the last resource of cowards. 
the Tsar was tempted to visit the royal residence of Adrianople, in the apartment, and before the eyes, of the Empress. He was stabbed by the Alani guards, and though the deed was imputed to their private revenge, 498 his countrymen, who dwelt at Constantinople in the security of peace, were involved in the same proscription by the prince or people. The loss of their leader intimidated the crowd of adventurers, who hoisted the sails of flight, and were soon scattered round the coasts of the Mediterranean. But a veteran band of 1500 Catalans, or French, stood firm in the strong fortress of Gallipoli on the Hellespont, displayed the banners of Aragon, and offered to revenge and justify their chief, by an equal combat of ten or a hundred warriors. Instead of accepting this bold defiance, they Emperor Michael, the son and colleague of Andronicus, resolved to oppress them with the weight of multitudes, every nerve was strained to form an army of 13,000 horse and 30,000 foot, and the Propontis was covered with the ships of the Greeks and Genoese. In two battles by sea and land, these Mighty forces were encountered and overthrown by the despair and discipline of the Catalans, the young emperor fled to the palace, and an insufficient guard of light horse was left for the protection of the open country. Victory renewed the hopes and numbers of the adventures, every nation was blended under the name and standard of the underscore great company underscore, and three thousand Turkish proselytes deserted from the imperial service to join this military association. In the possession of Gallipoli, 509, the Catalans intercepted the trade of Constantinople and the Black Sea, while they spread their devastation on either side of the Hellespont over the confines of Europe and Asia. To prevent their approach, the greatest part of the Byzantine territory was laid waste by the Greeks themselves, the peasants and their cattle retired into the city, and myriads of sheep and oxen, for which neither place nor food could be procured, were unprofitably slaughtered on the same day. Four times the Emperor Andronicus sued for peace, and four times he was inflexibly repulsed, till the want of provisions, and the discord of the chiefs, compelled the Catalans to evacuate the banks of the Hellespont and the neighborhood of the capital. After their separation from the Turks, the remains of the great company pursued their march through Macedonia and Thessaly, to seek a new establishment in the heart of Greece. 50. 47, return, in this motley multitude, the Catalans and Spaniards, the bravest of the soldiery, were styled by themselves, and the Greeks underscore Amagavares underscore. Moncada derives their origin from the Goths, and Pachimer, L11 c 22, from the Arabs, and in spite of national and religious pride, I am afraid the latter is in the right. 477, return, on Roger de Flor and his companions, Cian. Historical fragment, detailed and interesting, entitled The Spaniards of the 14th century, and inserted in Elispigny. In 1808, a work translated from the German, Vol. 2 p. 167. This narrative enables us to detect some slight errors which have crept into that of Gibbon, g. 
478, Return, the Troops of Roger de Flor, according to his Companions Ramon de Montaner, were 1500 men at arms, 4000 Almagavares, and 1040 other foot, besides the sailors and Mariners, Vol. 2 p. 137 m. 479, Return, Ramon de Montaner suppresses the cruelties and oppressions of the Catalans, in which, perhaps, he shared m. 48, Return, some idea may be formed of the population of these cities, from the 36,000 inhabitants of trolleys, which, in the preceding reign, was rebuilt by the emperor, and ruined by the Turks. Pachimer, L. 6 C. 20, 21. 49, Return, I have collected these pecuniary circumstances from Pachimer, L. 11 C. 21, L. 12 C. 4, 5, 8, 14, 19, who Describes the progressive degradation of the gold coin. Even in the prosperous times of John Ducas Vetuses, the Byzants were composed in equal proportions of the pure and the baser metal. The poverty of Michael Palologus compelled him to strike a new coin, with nine parts or carats of gold and fifteen of copper. Alloy after his death, the standard rose to ten carats, till in the public distress it was reduced to the moiety. The prince was relieved for a moment while credit and commerce were forever blasted. In France, the gold coin is of twenty-two carats, one twelfth alloy, and the standard of England and Holland is still higher. 496, Return, Roger de Flor, according to Ramon de Montaner, was recalled from Natolia, on account of the war which had arisen on the death of Assen, king of Bulgaria. Andronicus claimed the kingdom for his nephew, the sons of Assen by his sister. Roger de Flor turned the tide of success in favor of the Emperor of Constantinople and made peace. M. 497, Return, Andronicus paid the Catalans in the debased money. Much to their indignation. M. 498, Return, according to Ramon de Montaner, he was murdered by Order of Kyr, Curio v. Michael, son of the Emperor. p. 170 m. 509, Return, Ramon de Montaner describes his sojourn at Gallipoli, Nus Aegeans si riches, Q Nus ne semions, nine Labo Urians, nine Phasians enver de Vins nine cultivians lay. Vignes, Et sependent tuule ans nus recusilians chur ce chu Illinois. Nus fallet, and ven, froment et avoin. p. 193. This lasted for five merry years. Ramon de Montaner is high authority, for he was Chancellor et maitre rational d'alarmi, commissary of Underscore rations underscore. He was left governor, all the scribes of the army. Remained with him, and with their aid he kept the books in which were registered the number of horse and foot employed on each expedition. According to this book the plunder was shared, of which he had a fifth for his trouble. P. 197 M. 50, Return, the Catalan War is most copiously related by Pachimer, 
in the Zith, Zeeth, and Zeeth books, till he breaks. Off in the year 1308. Nice Forus Gregoras, L. 736, is more concise and complete. Duckenge, who adopts these adventurers as French, has hunted their footsteps with his usual diligence. History DC PL 6 C 2246 He quotes an Aragonese History, which I have read with pleasure, and which the Spaniards extol as a model of style and composition, Expedición de los Catalanes y Aragoneses Contratudcos y Griegos, Barcelona, 1623 In Quarto Madrid, 1777, in Octavo. Don Francisco de Moncada. Conde de Asana, may imitate Xar or Salist, he may transcribe. The Greek or Italian contemporaries, but he never quotes his. Authorities, and I cannot discern any national records of the. Exploits of his countrymen. Asterisk note. Ramon de Montaner, one of the Catalans, who accompanied Roger de Flor, and who was governor of Gallipoli, has written, in Spanish, the history of this band of adventurers, to which he belonged, and from which he separated. When it left the Thracian Chersonese to penetrate into Macedonia, and Greece, g. The autobiography of Ramon de Montaner has been published in French by M. Butchen, in the great collection of Memoirs Relatifs à l'Histoire de France. I quote this. Edition, M. After some ages of oblivion, Greece was awakened to new misfortunes by the arms of the Latins. In the two hundred and fifty years between the first and the last conquest of Constantinople, that venerable land was disputed by a multitude of petty tyrants, without the comforts of freedom and genius, her ancient cities were again plunged in foreign and intestine war. And, if servitude be preferable to anarchy, they might repose with joy under the Turkish yoke. I shall not pursue the obscure and various dynasties that rose and fell on the continent or in the Isles, but our silence on the fate of Athens 51 would argue a strange ingratitude to the first and purest school of liberal science and amusement. In the partition of the empire, they Principality of Athens and Thebes was assigned to Otho de La Roche, a noble warrior of Burgundy, 52 with the title of Great Duke, 53 which the Latins understood in their own sense, and they Greeks more foolishly derived from the age of Constantine. 54. Otho followed the standard of the Marquis of Montferrat, they ample state which he acquired by a miracle of conduct or fortune. Fifty-five was peaceably inherited by his son and two grandsons, till they family, though not the nation, was changed, by the marriage of an heiress into the elder branch of the house of Brienne. The son of that marriage, Walter de Brienne, succeeded to the duchy of Athens, and, with the aid of some Catalan mercenaries, whom he invested with fiefs, reduced above thirty castles of the vassal or neighboring lords. But when he was informed of the approach and ambition of the great company, he collected a force of seven hundred knights, six thousand four hundred horse, and eight thousand foot and boldly met them on the banks of the river Cephasus and Boeotia. The Catalans amounted to no more than three 
1,500 horse and 4,000 foot, but the deficiency of numbers was compensated by stratagem and order. They formed round their camp an artificial inundation, the Duke and his knights advanced without fear or precaution on the verdant meadow, their horses plunged into the bog, and he was cut in pieces, with the greatest part of the French cavalry. His family and nation were expelled, and his son Walter de Brienne, the titular Duke of Athens, the tyrant of Florence, and the constable of France, lost his life in the field of Poitiers. Attica and Boeotia were the rewards of the victorious Catalans. They married the widows and daughters of the slain, and during fourteen years, the great company was the terror of the Grecian states. Their factions drove them to acknowledge the sovereignty of the House of Aragon, and during the remainder of the 14th century, Athens, as a government or an appanage, was successively bestowed by the kings of Sicily. After the French and Catalans, the third dynasty was that of the Acca Ioli, a family, plebeian at Florence, potent at Naples, and sovereign in Greece. Athens, which they embellished with new buildings, became the capital of a state that extended over Thebes, Argos, Corinth, Delphi, and a part of Thessaly, and their reign was finally determined by Mohammed II, who strangled the last duke, and educated his sons in the discipline and religion of the Seraglio. 51. Return See the laborious history of Dukange, whose accurate table of the French dynasties recapitulates the 35 passages, in which he mentions the Dukes of Athens. 52. Return, he is twice mentioned by Vilhardouin with honor. Number 151, 235, and under the first passage, Dukange observes all that can be known of his person and family. 53. Return, from these Latin princes of the Zivth century. Bacchus, Chaucer, and Shakespeare, have borrowed their Theseus. Underscore Duke underscore of Athens. An ignorant age transfers its own language and manners to the most distant times. 54. Return, the same Constantine gave to Sicily a king, to Russia the underscore Magnus Dapifer underscore of the empire, to Thebes the underscore Primisarius underscore, and these absurd fables are properly lashed by Dukange, ad nice fear. Greg L. 7 C. 5 By the Latins, they Lord of Thebes was styled, by corruption, the Megas Curios, or Grand Sire. 55, return, underscore quotum miraculo underscore, says Alberic. He was probably received by Michael Chon Iates, the archbishop who had defended Athens against the tyrant Leo Skaruas, Nystus Urbis Capta, p. 805, Ed. Beck. Michael was the brother of the historian Nystus. And his encomium of Athens is still extant in Ms. in the Bodleian. Library, Fabric. Bibliot. GRC Tom. 6p. 405, Asterisk Note, Nystus says expressly that Michael surrendered the Acropolis to the Marquis M. Athens, 56 though no more than the shadow of her former self, still contains about eight or ten thousand inhabitants, of these 
three-fourths are Greeks in religion and language, and the Turks, who compose the remainder, have relaxed, in their intercourse, with the citizens, somewhat of the pride and gravity of their national character. The olive tree, the gift of Minerva, flourishes in Attica, nor has the honey of Mount Hymettus lost any part of its exquisite flavor, 57 but the languid trade is monopolized by strangers, and the agriculture of a barren land is abandoned to the vagrant Wallachians. The Athenians are still distinguished by the subtlety and acuteness of their understandings, but these qualities, unless ennobled by freedom and enlightened by study, will degenerate into a low and selfish cunning, and it is a proverbial saying of the country, from the Jews of Thessalonica, the Turks of Negropont, and the Greeks of Athens, good Lord deliver us. This artful people has eluded the tyranny of the Turkish Bashas, by an expedient which alleviates their servitude and aggravates their shame. About the middle of the last century, the Athenians chose for their protector the Kisler Aga, or chief black eunuch of the Seraglio. This Thiopian slave, who possesses the Sultan's ear, condescends to accept the tribute of thirty thousand crowns, his lieutenant, the Waywad, whom he annually confirms, may reserve for his own about five or six thousand more, and such is the policy of the citizens, that they seldom fail to remove and punish an oppressive governor. Their private differences are decided by the archbishop, one of the richest prelates of the Greek church, since he possesses a revenue of one thousand pounds sterling, and by a tribunal of the eight underscore geronti underscore or elders, chosen in the eight quarters of the city, the noble families cannot trace their pedigree above three hundred years, but their principal members are distinguished by a grave demeanor, a fur cap, and the lofty appellation of underscore archon underscore. By some, who delight in the contrast, the modern language of Athens is represented as the most corrupt and barbarous of the 70 dialects of the vulgar Greek, 58 this picture is too darkly colored, but it would not be easy, in the country of Plato and Demosthenes, to find a reader or a copy of their works. The Athenians walk with supine indifference among the glorious ruins of antiquity, and such is the debasement of their character, that they are incapable of admiring the genius of their predecessors. 59. 56. Return, the modern account of Athens, and the Athenians, is extracted from Spawn, Voyage and Grass, Tom 2 p. 79199, and Wheeler, Travels into Greece, p. 337 414, Stuart, Antiquities of Athens, Passam, and Chandler, Travels into Greece, p. 23 172. The first of these travelers visited Greece in the year 1676, the last, 1765, and ninety years had not produced much. Difference in the Tranquil Scene 57. Return, the ancients, or at least the Athenians, believed that all the bees in the world had been propagated from Mount Hymettus. They taught that health might be preserved, and life prolonged, by the external use of oil, and the internal use of honey, geoponica, L. 15 C. 7, 
p. 1089-1094, edit. Nick Claus. 58, Return, Duckenge, Glosser. GRC. Pear Fat. p. 8, Who Quotes. For his author Theodosius Zygomalis, a modern grammarian. Yet. Spawn, Tom 2 p. 194, and Wheeler, p. 355, no incompetent. Judges, entertain a more favorable opinion of the Attic dialect. 59, return, yet we must not accuse them of corrupting the name. Of Athens, which they still call Athenai. From the EIV then. Aten, we have formed our own barbarism of underscore satines underscore. Asterisk note. Gibbon did not foresee a Bavarian prince on the throne of Greece. With Athens as his capital, M. Chapter LXIII, Civil Wars and the Ruin of the Greek Empire, Part. I. Civil Wars, and Ruin of the Greek Empire, Reigns of Andronicus. The Elder and Younger, and John Palologus, Regency, Revolt. Reign, and Abdication of John Cantacuzene, Establishment of A. Genoese colony at Para or Galata, their wars with the empire and City of Constantinople The long reign of Andronicus I the Elder is chiefly memorable by The disputes of the Greek Church, the invasion of the Catalans And the rise of the Ottoman power He is celebrated as the most Learned and virtuous prince of the age, but such virtue and such learning contributed neither to the perfection of the individual nor to the happiness of society a slave of the most abject superstition he was surrounded on all sides by visible and invisible enemies nor were the flames of hell less dreadful to his fancy than those of a catalan or turkish war under the Reign of the Palology, the choice of the Patriarch was the most important business of the state, the heads of the Greek Church were ambitious and fanatic monks, and their vices or virtues, their learning or ignorance, were equally mischievous or contemptible. By his intemperate discipline, the Patriarch Athanasius too excited the hatred of the clergy and people, he was heard to declare that the sinner should swallow the last dregs of the cup of penance, and the foolish tale was propagated of his punishing a sacrilegious ass that had tasted the lettuce of a convent garden, driven from the throne by the universal clamor. Athanasius composed before his retreat two papers of a very opposite cast. His public testament was in the tone of charity and resignation, the private codicil breathed the direst anathemas against the authors of his disgrace, whom he excluded forever from the communion of the Holy Trinity, the angels, and the saints. This last paper he enclosed in an earthen pot, which was placed, by his order, on the top of one of the pillars, in the Dome of Street. Sophia, in the distant hope of discovery and revenge. At the end of four years, some youths, climbing by a ladder in search of pigeons' nests, detected the fatal secret, and as Andronicus felt himself touched and bound by the excommunication, he trembled on the brink of the abyss which had been so treacherously dug under his feet. A synod of bishops was instantly convened to debate this important question, the rashness of these clandestine anathemas was generally condemned 
but as the knot could be untied only by the same hand, as that. Hand was now deprived of the crozier, it appeared that this posthumous decree was irrevocable by any earthly power. Some faint testimonies of repentance and pardon were extorted from the author of the mischief, but the conscience of the emperor was still wounded, and he desired, with no less ardor than Athanasius himself, the restoration of a patriarch, by whom alone he could be healed. At the dead of night, a monk rudely knocked at the door of the royal bedchamber, announcing a revelation of plague and famine, of inundations and earthquakes. Andronicus started from his bed, and spent the night in prayer, till he felt, or thought that he felt, a slight motion of the earth. The emperor on foot led the bishops and monks to the cell of Athanasius, and after a proper resistance, the saint, from whom this message had been sent, consented to absolve the prince, and govern the church of Constantinople. Untamed by disgrace, and hardened by solitude, the shepherd was again odious to the flock, and his enemies contrived a singular, and as it proved, a successful, mode of revenge. In the night, they stole away the footstool or footcloth of his throne, which they secretly replaced with the decoration of a satirical picture. The emperor was painted with a bridle in his mouth, and Athanasius leading the tractable beast to the feet of Christ. The authors of the libel were detected and punished, but as their lives had been spared, the Christian priest in sullen indignation retired to his cell, and the eyes of Andronicus, which had been opened for a moment, were again closed by his successor. 1. Return Andronicus himself will justify our freedom in the invective, Nisphorus Gregoras, L.I.C.I., which he pronounced against historic falsehood. It is true, that his censure is more pointedly urged against calumny than against adulation. 2. Return, for the anathema in the pigeon's nest, C. Pachimer L. 9 C. 24, who relates the general history of Athanasius. L. 8 C. 13 16, 20, 24, L. X. C. 27 29, 31 36, L. 11 C. 1 3, 5, 6, L. 13. C. 8, 10, 23, 35, and is followed by Nisphorus. Gregoras, L. 6, C. 5, 7, L. 7, C. 1, 9, who includes the second retreat of this second Chrysostom. If this transaction be one of the most curious and important of a reign of fifty years, I cannot at least accuse the brevity of my materials, since I reduce into some few pages the enormous folios of Pachimer, three Cantacuzene, four and Nisphorus Gregoras, five who have composed the prolix and languid story of the times. The name and situation of the Emperor John Cantacuzene might inspire the most lively curiosity. His memorials of forty years extend from the revolt of the younger Andronicus to his own abdication of the empire, and it is observed, that, like Moses and Xar, he was the principal actor in the scenes which he describes. But in this eloquent work we should vainly seek the sincerity of a hero or a penitent. 
retired in a cloister from the vices and passions of the world, he presents not a confession, but an apology, of the life of an ambitious statesman. Instead of unfolding the true counsels and characters of men, he displays the smooth and specious surface of events, highly varnished with his own praises and those of his friends. Their motives are always pure, their ends always legitimate, they conspire and rebel without any views of interest, and the violence which they inflict or suffer is celebrated as the spontaneous effect of reason and virtue. 3. Return, Pachimer, in seven books, 377 folio pages, describes the first 26 years of Andronicus the Elder, and marks the date of his composition by the current news or lie of the day. AD 1308. Either death or disgust prevented him from resuming the pen. 4. Return, after an interval of 12 years, from the conclusion of Pachimer, Ken Takuzanus takes up the pen, and his first book, C. 159, P. 9150, relates the civil war, and the eight last years of the elder Andronicus. The ingenious comparison with Moses and Xar is fancied by his French translator, the president cousin. 5. Return, Nice Forest Gregoras more briefly includes the entire Life and Reign of Andronicus the Elder, L. 6C1, p. 96-91. This is the part of which Cantacuzene complains as a false and malicious representation of his conduct. After the example of the first of the Pelology, the Elder, Andronicus associated his son Michael to the honors of the Purple, and from the age of 18 to his premature death, that prince was acknowledged, above 25 years, as the second emperor of the Greeks. Six at the head of an army, he excited neither the fears of the enemy, nor the jealousy of the court. His modesty and patience were never tempted to compute the years of his father, nor was that father compelled to repent of his liberality either by the virtues or vices of his son. The son of Michael was named Andronicus from his grandfather, to whose early favor he was introduced by that nominal resemblance. The Blossoms of wit and beauty increased the fondness of the elder Andronicus. And, with the common vanity of age, he expected to realize in the second, the hope which had been disappointed in the first generation. The boy was educated in the palace as an heir and a favorite, and in the oaths and acclamations of the people, they Underscore August Triad underscore was formed by the names of the father, the son, and the grandson. But the younger Andronicus was speedily corrupted by his infant greatness, while he beheld with pure ill impatience the double obstacle that hung, and might long hang, over his rising ambition. It was not to acquire fame, or to diffuse happiness, that he so eagerly aspired, wealth and impunity were in his eyes the most precious attributes of a monarch, and his first indiscreet demand was the sovereignty of some rich and fertile island, where he might lead a life of independence and pleasure. The emperor was offended by the loud and frequent intemperance which disturbed his capital, the sums which his parsimony denied were supplied by the Genoese usurers of Para, and the oppressive debt, 
which consolidated the interest of a faction, could be discharged only by a revolution. A beautiful female, a matron in rank, a prostitute in manners, had instructed the younger Andronicus in the rudiments of love, but he had reason to suspect the nocturnal visits of a rival, and a stranger passing through the street was pierced by the arrows of his guards, who were placed in ambush at her door. That stranger was his brother, Prince Manuel, who languished and died of his wound, and the Emperor Michael, their common father, whose health was in a declining state, expired on the eighth day, lamenting the loss of both his children. Seven however guiltless in his intention, the younger Andronicus might impute a brother's and a father's death to the consequence of his own vices, and deep was the sigh of thinking and feeling men, when they perceived, instead of sorrow and repentance, his ill-dissembled joy on the removal of two odious competitors. By these melancholy events, and the increase of his disorders, the mind of the elder emperor was gradually alienated, and, after many fruitless reproofs, he transferred on another grandson ate his hopes and affection. The change was announced by the new oath of allegiance to the reigning sovereign, and the underscore person underscore whom he should appoint for his successor, and the acknowledged heir, after a repetition of insults and complaints, was exposed to the indignity of a public trial before the sentence, which would probably have condemned him to a dungeon or a cell, the emperor was informed that the palace courts were filled with the armed followers of his grandson, the judgment was softened to a treaty of reconciliation, and the triumphant escape of the prince encouraged the ardor of the younger faction. 6. Return he was crowned May 21, 1295, and died October 12, 1320, Dukange, Fam BYZ, P. 239. His brother Theodore, by a second marriage, inherited the Marquisate of Montferrat. Apostatized to the religion and manners of the Latins, ODK. GNWMHK Piste Kashkata, Kajini in Kora K Pasanakizan. Dadano VHN Akrain V. NIC. Greg. L. 9. C. 1, and founded a dynasty of Italian princes, which was extinguished AD 1533. Dukenge. Fam B Y Z P two forty nine two fifty three seven return. We are indebted to Nice Forus Gregoras L eight C one for the knowledge of this tragic adventure. While Ken Tacuzine more discreetly conceals the vices of Andronicus the younger, of which he was the witness and perhaps the associate. L I C one. And C. 8. Return, his destined heir was Michael Catharis, the bastard of Constantine his second son. In this project of excluding his grandson Andronicus, Nisphorus Gregoras, L. 8. C. 3, agrees with Ken Tacuzine, L. I. C. 1, 2. Yet the capital, the clergy, and the senate, adhered to the person, or at least to the government, of the old emperor, and it was only in the provinces, by flight and revolt, and foreign succor, that the male contents could hope to vindicate their cause and subvert his throne. The soul of the enterprise was the great 
Domestic John Cantacuzine, the Sally from Constantinople is the first date of his actions and memorials, and if his own pen be most descriptive of his patriotism, an unfriendly historian has not refused to celebrate the zeal and ability which he displayed in the service of the young emperor. 89 That prince escaped from the capital under the pretense of hunting, erected his standard at Adrianople, and, in a few days, assembled 50,000 horse and foot, whom neither honor nor duty could have armed against the barbarians. Such a force might have saved or commanded the empire, but their counsels were discordant, their motions were slow and doubtful, and their progress was checked by intrigue and negotiation. The quarrel of the two Andronici was protracted, and suspended, and renewed, during a ruinous period of seven years. In the first treaty, the relics of the Greek Empire were divided. Constantinople, Thessalonica, and the islands, were left to the elder, while the younger acquired the sovereignty of the greatest part of Thrace, from Philippi to the Byzantine limit. By the Second Treaty, he stipulated the payment of his troops, his immediate coronation, and an adequate share of the power and revenue of the state. The Third Civil War was terminated by the Surprise of Constantinople, the final retreat of the old emperor, and the sole reign of his victorious grandson. The reasons of this delay may be found in the characters of the men and of the times when the heir of the monarchy first pleaded his wrongs and his apprehensions, he was heard with pity and applause, and his Adherents repeated on all sides the inconsistent promise, that he would increase the pay of the soldiers and alleviate the burdens of the people. The grievances of forty years were mingled in his revolt, and the rising generation was fatigued by the endless prospect of a reign whose favorites and maxims were of other times. The youth of Andronicus had been without spirit, his age was without reverence, his taxes produced an unusual revenue of 500,000 pounds, yet the richest of the sovereigns of Christendom was incapable of maintaining 3,000 horse and 20 galleys to resist the destructive progress of the Turks. 9. How different! said the younger Andronicus, is my situation from that of the son of Philip. Alexander might complain that his father would leave him nothing to conquer. Alas! My grandsire will leave me nothing to lose. But the Greeks were soon admonished that the public disorders could not be healed by a civil war and that their young favorite was not destined to be the savior of a falling empire. On the first repulse, his party was broken by his own levity, their intestine discord, and the intrigues of the ancient court, which tempted each male content to desert or betray the cause of the rebellion. Andronicus the younger was touched with remorse, or fatigued with business, or deceived by negotiation, pleasure rather than power, was his aim, and the license of maintaining a thousand hounds, a thousand hawks, and a thousand huntsmen, was sufficient to sully his fame and disarm his ambition. 89. Return, the conduct of Cantacuzene, by his own showing, was inexplicable. He was unwilling to dethrone the old emperor, and 
dissuaded the immediate march on Constantinople. The young Andronicus, he says, entered into his views, and rode to warn the emperor of his danger when the march was determined. Cantacuzanus, in November. BYZ. History. Collect. Vol. IP 104, and CM. 9, Return, C. Nice Forest Gregoras, L. 8 C. 6. The Younger. Andronicus complained, that in four years and four months a sum of 350,000 Byzants of gold was due to him for the expenses of his household, Cantacuzan L.I.C. 48. Yet he would have remitted the debt, if he might have been allowed to squeeze the farmers of the revenue. Let us now survey the catastrophe of this busy plot, and the final situation of the principal actors. 10. The age of Andronicus was consumed in civil discord, and, amidst the events of war and treaty, his power and reputation continually decayed, till the fatal night in which the gates of the city and palace were opened. Without resistance to his grandson, his principal commander scorned the repeated warnings of danger, and retiring to rest in the vain security of ignorance, abandoned the feeble monarch, with some priests and pages, to the terrors of a sleepless night. These terrors were quickly realized by the hostile shouts, which proclaimed the titles and victory of Andronicus the Younger, and the aged emperor, falling prostrate before an image of the Virgin, dispatched a suppliant message to resign the scepter, and to obtain his life at the hands of the conqueror. The answer of his grandson was decent and pious, at the prayer of his friends. The younger Andronicus assumed the sole administration, but the elder still enjoyed the name and preeminence of the first emperor the use of the great palace, and a pension of 24,000 pieces of gold, one half of which was assigned on the royal treasury, and the other on the fishery of Constantinople. But his impotence was soon exposed to contempt and oblivion, the vast silence of the palace was disturbed only by the cattle and poultry of the neighborhood. 101 which roved with impunity through the solitary courts, and a reduced allowance of 10,000 pieces of gold 11 was all that he could ask, and more than he could hope. His calamities were embittered. By the gradual extinction of sight, his confinement was rendered each day more rigorous, and during the absence and sickness of his grandson, his inhuman keepers, by the threats of instant death, compelled him to exchange the purple for the monastic habit and profession. The monk underscore Antony underscore had renounced the pomp of the world, yet he had occasion for a coarse fur in the winter season, and as wine was forbidden by his confessor, and water by his physician, the sherbet of Egypt was his common drink. It was not without difficulty that the late emperor could procure three or four pieces to satisfy these simple wants, and if he bestowed the gold to relieve the more painful distress of a friend, the sacrifice is of some weight in the scale of humanity and religion. Four years after his abdication, Andronicus, or Antony, expired in a cell, in the seventy-fourth year of his age, and the last strain of adulation could only promise a more splendid crown. 
of glory in heaven than he had enjoyed upon earth. 12121 10. Return, I follow the chronology of Nisphorus Gregoras, who is remarkably exact. It is proved that Cantacuzene has mistaken the dates of his own actions, or rather that his text has been corrupted by ignorant transcribers. 101. Return, and the washerwomen, according to N.I.C. Gregoras. P. 431. M. 11. Return, I have endeavored to reconcile the 24,000 pieces of Cantacuzene, L. 2 C. 1, with the 10,000 of Nisphorus Gregoras. L. 9 C. 2, the one of whom wished to soften, the other to magnify, the hardships of the old emperor. 12. Return, C. Nisphorus Gregoras, L. 9 6, 7, 8, 10, 14. L. X. C. 1. The historian had tasted of the prosperity, and shared the retreat, of his benefactor, and that friendship which waits or to the scaffold or the cell, should not lightly be accused as a hireling, a prostitute to praise. Asterisk note, but it may be accused of unparalleled absurdity. He compares the Extinction of the feeble old man to that of the sun, his coffin, is to be floated like Noah's Ark by a deluge of tares. M. 121. Return, Prodigies, according to N.I.C. Gregoras, p. 460. Announced the departure of the old and imbecile imperial monk. From his earthly prison. M. Nor was the reign of the younger, more glorious, or fortunate than that of the elder, Andronicus. 13 He gathered the fruits of ambition, but the taste was transient and bitter, in the supreme station he lost the remains of his early popularity, and the defects of his character became still more conspicuous to the world. The public reproach urged him to march in person against the Turks, nor did his courage fail in the hour of trial, but a defeat and a wound were the only trophies of his expedition in Asia, which confirmed the establishment of the Ottoman monarchy. The abuses of the civil government attained their full maturity and perfection, his neglect of forms, and the confusion of National dresses, are deplored by the Greeks as the fatal symptoms of the decay of the empire. Andronicus was old before his time, the intemperance of youth had accelerated the infirmities of age, and after being rescued from a dangerous malady by nature, or physic, or the virgin, he was snatched away before he had accomplished his forty-fifth year. He was twice married, and, as the progress of the Latins in arms and arts had softened the prejudices of the Byzantine court, his two wives were chosen in the princely houses of Germany and Italy. The first, Agnes at home, Irene in Greece, was daughter of the Duke of Brunswick. Her father fourteen was a petty lord fifteen in the poor and savage regions of the north of Germany, sixteen yet he derived some revenue from his silver mines, seventeen and his family is celebrated by the Greeks as the most ancient and noble of the Teutonic name. Eighteen. After the death of this childish princess, Andronicus sought in marriage Jane, the sister of the Count of Savoy, 19 and his suit was preferred to that of the French king. 20 The Count respected 
in his sister, the superior majesty of a Roman empress, her. Retinue was composed of knights and ladies, she was regenerated. And crowned in street. Sophia, under the more orthodox appellation of Anne, and, at the nuptial feast, the Greeks and Italians vied with each other in the martial exercises of tilts and tournaments. 13. Return, the sole reign of Andronicus the Younger is described by Cantacuzene, L2C 140, P 191 339, and Nisphorus Gregoras, L9C 7L 11C 11, P 262 361. 14. Return, Agnes, or Irene, was the daughter of Duke Henry the Wonderful, the chief of the House of Brunswick, and the fourth in descent from the famous Henry the Lion, Duke of Saxony and Bavaria, and conqueror of the Sclavi on the Baltic coast. Her brother Henry was surnamed the underscore Greek underscore, from his two journeys into the east, but these journeys were subsequent to his sister's marriage, and I am ignorant underscore how underscore Agnes was discovered in the heart of Germany, and recommended to the Byzantine court. Rimeus, Memoirs of the House of Brunswick, p. 126-137. 15. Return, Henry the Wonderful was the founder of the branch of Grubenhagen, extinct in the year 1596, Rimeus, p. 287. He resided in the castle of Wolfenbüttel, and possessed no more than a sixth part of the Allodial estates of Brunswick and Lüneburg, which the Guelph family had saved from the confiscation of their great fiefs. The frequent partitions among brothers had almost ruined the princely houses of Germany, till that just, but pernicious, law was slowly superseded by the right of primogeniture. The Principality of Grubenhagen, one of the last remains of the Hercynian forest, is a woody, mountainous, and barren tract. Bushing's Geography, Vol. 6 p. 270-286, English Translation 16. Return, the royal author of the memoirs of Brandenburg will teach us, how justly, in a much later period, the north of Germany deserved the epithets of poor and barbarous. S.A. Sir Lemus, N.C. In the year 1306, in the woods of Lundberg, some wild people of the Venade race were allowed to bury alive their infirm and useless parents. Rimeus, p. 136. 17. Return, the assertion of Tacitus, that Germany was destitute of the precious metals, must be taken, even in his own time, with some limitation, Germania, c. 5. Annal. 1120. According to Spenner, History Germanie Pragmatica, Tom I. P. 351. Underscore Argentifoden underscore in her CNI's Montebus, Imparante ot hon magno. AD 968, Primum Apert. Largum entium opes agendi deed runt. Copium, but Rimeus, p. 258, 259, defers till the year 1016 the discovery of the silver mines of Grubenhagen, or the upper hearts, which were productive in the beginning of the 5th century, and which still yield a considerable revenue to the House of Brunswick. 18. Return, Ken Takuzin has given a most honorable testimony. 
HNDEK German Vnoth Jugather de Kovnt im Prausuo, the modern. Greeks employ the NT for the D, and the MP for the B, and they. Whole will read in the Italian idiom de Brunswick, T O U P A R Auto A V. Epigenus Datu, K, I am Proth de Panta V T O U V O Mojola V. Upper to V. The praise is just in itself, and pleasing to an English ear. 19, Return, Anne, or Jane, was one of the four daughters of Amadi the Great, by a second marriage, and half sister of his successor Edward Count of Savoy. Anderson's Tables, p. 650. C. Cantacuzine. LIC 4042 20 return that king if the fact be true must have been Charles the fair who in 5 years 1321 1326 was married to three wives Anderson P 628 Anne of Savoy arrived at Constantinople in February 1326. The Empress Anne of Savoy survived her husband, their son, John. Palologus, was left an orphan and an emperor in the ninth year of his age, and his weakness was protected by the first and most deserving of the Greeks. The long and cordial friendship of his Father for John Cantacuzene is alike honorable to the prince and the subject. It had been formed amidst the pleasures of their youth, their families were almost equally noble, twenty-one and they. Recent luster of the purple was amply compensated by the energy of a private education. We have seen that the young emperor was Saved by Cantacuzene from the power of his grandfather, and After six years of civil war, the same favorite brought him back In triumph to the palace of Constantinople Under the reign of Andronicus the Younger, the great domestic ruled the emperor and The empire, and it was by his valor and conduct that the Isle of Lesbos and the Principality of Talia were restored to their ancient allegiance. His enemies confess that, among the public robbers, Ken Takuzin alone was moderate and abstemious, and they free and voluntary account which he produces of his own wealth 22 may sustain the presumption that he was devolved by inheritance and not accumulated by rapine. He does not indeed specify the value of his money, plate and jewels, yet, after a voluntary gift of two hundred vases of silver, after much had been secreted by his friends and plundered by his foes, his forfeit treasures were sufficient for the equipment of a fleet of seventy galleys. He does not measure the size and number of his estates, but his granaries were heaped with an incredible store of wheat and barley, and the labor of a thousand yoke of oxen might cultivate, according to the practice of antiquity, about 62,500 acres of arable land. 23 His pastures were stocked with 2,500 brood mares, 200 camels, 300 mules, 500 asses, 5,000 horned cattle, 50,000 hogs, and 70,000 sheep, 24 a precious record of rural opulence, in the last period of the empire, and in a land, most probably in Thrace, so repeatedly wasted by foreign and domestic hostility. The favor of Cantacuzene was above his fortune. In the moments of familiarity, in the hour of sickness, 
the emperor was desirous to level the distance between them and pressed his friend to accept the diadem and purple. The virtue of the great domestic, which is attested by his own pen, resisted the dangerous proposal, but the last testament of Andronicus the younger named him the guardian of his son, and the regent of the empire. 21. Return, the noble race of the Cantacuzini, illustrious from the 5th century in the Byzantine annals, was drawn from the paladins of France, the heroes of those romances which, in the zeth century, were translated and read by the Greeks, Dukenge. Fam, Byzant. P. 258. 22. Return, C. Cantacuzine, L3 C. 24, 30, 36. 23. Return, Caserna, in Gaul, and Columella, in Italy or Spain. Allow two yoke of oxen, two drivers, and six laborers, for two. Hundred Jujura, one hundred twenty-five English acres, of arable land, and three more. Men must be added if there be much underwood, Columella de Re. Rustica, L. 2. C. 13, P. 441, Edit. Gessner. 24, Return, in this enumeration, L. 3 C. 30, The French. Translation of the President Cousin is blotted with three palpable and essential errors. 1. He omits the 1,000 yoke of working oxen. 2. He interprets the Pentecosi A province diacili A V. By the number of 1500. Asterisk 3. He confounds myriads with Chiliades, and gives Cantacuzine no more than 5,000 hogs. Put not your trust in translations. Note, asterisk there seems to be another. Reading, silly AV. Niebuhr's edit. In locut of M. Had the regent found a suitable return of obedience and gratitude, perhaps he would have acted with pure and zealous fidelity in the service of his pupil. 25 A guard of 500 Soldiers watched over his person and the palace, the funeral of The late emperor was decently performed, the capital was silent and submissive, and 500 letters, which Cantacuzine dispatched in the first month, informed the provinces of their loss and their duty. The prospect of a tranquil minority was blasted by the great duke or admiral Apokaukus, and to exaggerate underscore his underscore perfidy, the imperial historian is pleased to magnify his own imprudence, in raising him to that office against the advice of his more sagacious sovereign. Bold and subtle, rapacious and profuse, the avarice and ambition of Apokaukus were by turns subservient to each other, and his talents were applied to the ruin of his country. His arrogance was heightened by the command of a naval force and an impregnable castle, and under the mask of oaths and flattery he secretly conspired against his benefactor. The female court of the empress was bribed and directed, he encouraged Anne of Savoy to assert, by the law of nature, the tutelage of her son, the love of power was disguised by the anxiety of maternal tenderness, and the founder of the Palology had instructed his posterity to dread the example of a perfidious guardian. The patriarch John of Apri was a proud and feeble old man, encompassed by a numerous and hungry kindred. 
he produced an obsolete epistle of Andronicus, which bequeathed the prince and people to his pious care, the fate of his predecessor Arsneus prompted him to prevent, rather than punish, the crimes of a usurper, and Apokoukus smiled at the success of his own flattery. When he beheld the Byzantine priest assuming the state and temporal claims of the Roman pontiff, 26 between three persons so different in their situation and character, a private league was concluded, a shadow of authority was restored to the Senate, and the people was tempted by the name of freedom. By this powerful confederacy, the great domestic was assaulted at first with clandestine, at length with open, arms. His prerogatives were disputed, his opinions slighted, his friends persecuted, and his safety was threatened both in the camp and city. In his absence, on the public service, he was accused of treason, proscribed as an enemy of the church and state, and delivered with all his adherence to the sword of justice, the vengeance of the people, and the power of the devil, his fortunes were confiscated, his aged mother was cast into prison, 261 all his past services were buried in oblivion, and he was driven by injustice to perpetrate the crime of which he was accused. 27 From the review of his preceding conduct, Ken Takuzin appears to have been guiltless of any treasonable designs, and the only suspicion of his innocence must arise from the vehemence of his protestations, and the sublime purity which he ascribes to his own virtue. While they Empress and the Patriarch still affected the appearances of harmony, he repeatedly solicited the permission of retiring to a private, and even a monastic, life. After he had been declared a public enemy, it was his fervent wish to throw himself at the feet of the young Emperor, and to receive without a murmur the stroke of the executioner it was not without reluctance that he listened to the voice of reason, which inculcated the sacred duty of saving his family and friends, and proved that he could only save them by drawing the sword and assuming the imperial title. 25. Return, see the regency and reign of John Cantacuzanus, and the whole progress of the civil war, in his own history, L. 3. C. 1. 100, p. 348. 700, and in that of Nisphorus Gregoras, L. 12. C. 1. L. 15. C. 9, p. 353. 492. 26. Return, he assumes the royal privilege of red shoes or buskins placed on his head a mitre of silk and gold, subscribed his epistles with hyacinth or green ink, and claimed for the new. Whatever Constantine had given to the ancient, Rome, Cantacuzin. L. 3. C. 36. N. I. C. Gregoras, L. 14. C. 3. 261. Return. She died there through persecution and neglect. M. 27. Return, N.I.C. Gregoras, L. 12. C. 5. Confesses the innocence and virtues of Cantacuzanus, the guilt and flagitious vices of Apokoukus, nor does he dissemble the motive of his personal and religious enmity to the former. Nundi diakakian. Alun, Asio v opera te to v th v t v n olun et azavi? Eioa ij cora v.
Note, the alloy were the religious enemies and persecutors of Nisphorus M. Chapter LXIII, Civil Wars and the Ruin of the Greek Empire, Part 2. In the strong city of Demotica, his peculiar domain, the Emperor John Ken Takuzanus was invested with the purple buskins, his right leg was clothed by his noble kinsmen, the left by the Latin chiefs, on whom he conferred the order of knighthood. But even in this act of revolt, he was still studious of loyalty, and they Titles of John Palologus and Anne of Savoy were proclaimed before his own name and that of his wife Irene. Such vain ceremony is a thin disguise of rebellion, nor are there perhaps any personal wrongs that can authorize a subject to take arms against his sovereign, but the want of preparation and success may confirm the assurance of the usurper, that this decisive step was the effect of necessity rather than of choice. Constantinople Adhered to the young emperor, the king of Bulgaria was invited to the relief of Adrianople, the principal cities of Thrace and Macedonia, after some hesitation, renounced their obedience to the great domestic and the leaders of the troops and provinces were induced, by their private interest, to prefer the loose dominion of a woman and a priest. 271 The army of Cantacuzene, in 16 divisions, was stationed on the banks of the Melis to tempt or to intimidate the capital, it was dispersed by treachery or fear, and the officers, more especially the mercenary Latins, accepted the bribes, and embraced the service, of the Byzantine court. After this loss, the rebel emperor, he fluctuated between the two characters, took the road of Thessalonica with a chosen remnant, but he failed in his enterprise on that important place and he was closely pursued by the great duke, his enemy, Apokoukus, at the head of a superior power by sea and land. Driven from the coast, in his march, or rather flight, into the mountains of Servia, Cantacuzene assembled his troops to scrutinize those who were worthy and willing to accompany his broken fortunes. A base majority bowed and retired, and his trusty band was diminished to two thousand, and at last to five hundred, volunteers. The underscore kral underscore, twenty-eight or despot of the Servians, received him with general hospitality, but the ally was insensibly degraded to a suppliant, a hostage, a captive, an inn. This miserable dependence, he waited at the door of the barbarian, who could dispose of the life and liberty of a Roman emperor. The most tempting offers could not persuade the Kral to violate his trust, but he soon inclined to the stronger side, and his friend was dismissed without injury to a new vicissitude of hopes and perils. Near six years the flame of discord burnt with various success and unabated rage, the cities were distracted by the faction of the nobles and the plebeians, the Cantacuzani and Polology, and the Bulgarians, the Servians and the Turks, were invoked on both sides as the instruments of private ambition and the common ruin. The regent deplored the calamities, of which he was the author and victim, and his own experience might dictate a just and lively remark on the different nature of foreign and civil war. The former, said he, is the external warmth of 
summer, always tolerable, and often beneficial, the latter is the deadly heat of a fever, which consumes without a remedy the vitals of the constitution. 29. 271, return, Ken Takuzin asserts, that in all the cities, the populace were on the side of the emperor, the aristocracy on his. The populace took the opportunity of rising and plundering the wealthy as Ken Takuzinites, vol. 3c 29, ages of common. Oppression and ruin had not extinguished these Republican factions. M. 28. Return, the princes of Serbia, Dukenj, Famil. Dalmatic. N. C. C. 2, 3, 4, 9, were styled despots in Greek, and Kral in their native idiom, Dukenj, Gloss. GRC P 751 That title The equivalent of king appears to be of Sclavonic origin from whence it has been borrowed by the Hungarians the modern Greeks and even by the Turks Leonclavius Pandect Turk P 422 who Reserve the name of Padi Shah for the emperor. To obtain the latter instead of the former is the ambition of the French at Constantinople, a versus Ament à l'Histoire de de Morbec, p. 39. 29, return, NIC. Gregoras, L. 12. C. 14. It is surprising that Ken Takuzin has not inserted this just and lively image in his own writings. The introduction of barbarians and savages into the contests of civilized nations is a measure pregnant with shame and mischief, which the interest of the moment may compel, but which is reprobated by the best principles of humanity and reason. It is the practice of both sides to accuse their enemies of the guilt of the first alliances, and those who fail in their negotiations are loudest in their censure of the example which they envy and would gladly imitate. The Turks of Asia were less barbarous, perhaps than the shepherds of Bulgaria and Servia, but there Religion rendered them implacable foes of Rome and Christianity. To acquire the friendship of their emirs, the two factions vied. With each other in baseness and profusion, the dexterity of Ken Takuzin obtained the preference, but the succor and victory were dearly purchased by the marriage of his daughter with an infidel, the captivity of many thousand Christians, and they Passage of the Ottomans into Europe, the last and fatal stroke in The fall of the Roman Empire The inclining scale was decided in His favor by the death of Apokoukus, the just though singular Retribution of his crimes A crowd of nobles or plebeians, whom He feared or hated, had been seized by his orders in the capital and the provinces, and the old palace of Constantine was assigned as the place of their confinement. Some alterations in raising the walls, and narrowing the cells, had been ingeniously contrived to prevent their escape, and aggravate their misery. And the work was incessantly pressed by the daily visits of the tyrant, his guards watched at the gate, and as he stood in the inner court to overlook the architects, without fear or suspicion, he was assaulted and laid breathless on the ground, by two 291 resolute prisoners of the Palologian race, 30 who were armed with sticks, 
and animated by despair. On the rumor of revenge and liberty, the captive multitude broke their fetters, fortified their prison, and exposed from the battlements they tyrant's head, presuming on the favor of the people and they Clemency of the Empress Anne of Savoy might rejoice in the fall of a haughty and ambitious minister, but while she delayed to resolve or to act, the populace, more especially the mariners, were excited by the widow of the great duke to a sedition, an assault, and a massacre. The prisoners, of whom the far greater part were guiltless or inglorious of the deed, escaped to a neighboring church, they were slaughtered at the foot of the altar, and in his death the monster was not less bloody and venomous than in his life. Yet his talents alone upheld the cause of the young emperor, and his surviving associates, suspicious of each other, abandoned the conduct of the war, and rejected the fairest terms of accommodation. In the beginning of the dispute, the Empress felt, and complained, that she was deceived by the enemies of Cantacuzene, the Patriarch was employed to preach against the forgiveness of injuries, and her promise of immortal hatred was sealed by an oath under the penalty of excommunication. 31 But Anne soon learned to hate without a teacher, she beheld the misfortunes of the empire with the indifference of a stranger, her jealousy was exasperated by the competition of a rival empress, and on the first symptoms of a more yielding temper, she threatened the patriarch to convene a Synod, and degrade him from his office. Their incapacity and discord would have afforded the most decisive advantage, but the civil war was protracted by the weakness of both parties, and the moderation of Cantacuzene has not escaped the reproach of timidity and indolence. He successively recovered the provinces and cities and the realm of his pupil was measured by the walls of Constantinople, but the metropolis alone counterbalanced the rest of the empire, nor could he attempt that important conquest, till he had secured in his favor the public voice and a private correspondence. An Italian, of the name of Faxialady, 32 had succeeded to the office of Great Duke, the ships, the guards, and the Golden Gate, were subject to his command, but his humble ambition was bribed to become the instrument of treachery, and the revolution was accomplished without danger or bloodshed. Destitute of the powers of resistance, or the hope of relief, they Inflexible Anne would have still defended the palace, and have smiled to behold the capital in flames, rather than in the possession of a rival. She yielded to the prayers of her friends and enemies, and the treaty was dictated by the conqueror, who professed a loyal and zealous attachment to the son of his benefactor. The marriage of his daughter with John Palologus was at length consummated, the hereditary right of the pupil was acknowledged, but the sole administration during ten years was vested in the guardian. Two emperors and three empresses were seated on the Byzantine throne, and a general amnesty quieted the apprehensions, and confirmed the property of the most guilty subjects. The festival of the coronation and nuptials was celebrated with the appearances of concord and magnificence, and both were equally fallacious. During the late troubles, the 
treasures of the state, and even the furniture of the palace, had been alienated or embezzled, the royal banquet was served in pewter or earthenware, and such was the proud poverty of the times, that the absence of gold and jewels was supplied by the paltry artifices of glass and gilt leather. 33. 291, Return, Nice Forest says 4, p. 734. 30, Return, The two Avengers were both Polology, who might resent, with royal indignation, the shame of their chains. The tragedy of Apokaukus may deserve a peculiar reference to Cantacuzene, L3C86, and NIC. Gregoras, L14C10. 31. Return, Cantacuzene accuses the patriarch, and spares the Empress, the mother of his sovereign, L333, 34, against whom NIC. Gregoras expresses a particular animosity, L1410. 11, 15. 5. It is true that they do not speak exactly of the same time. 32. Return, the traitor and treason are revealed by NIC. Gregoras, L15C8, but the name is more discreetly suppressed by his great accomplice, Cantacuzin L3C99. 33. Return, NIC. Greg. L. 15. 11. There were, however, some true pearls, but very thinly sprinkled. The rest of the stones had only Panto Def and Croyan province to Dioge V. I hasten to conclude the personal history of John Cantacuzine. 34. He triumphed and reigned but his reign and triumph were clouded by the discontent of his own and the adverse faction. His followers might style the general amnesty an act of pardon for his enemies, and of oblivion for his friends, thirty-five in his cause. Their estates had been forfeited or plundered, and as they wandered naked and hungry through the streets, they cursed they selfish generosity of a leader, who, on the throne of the empire, might relinquish without merit his private inheritance. The adherents of the empress blushed to hold their lives and fortunes by the precarious favor of a usurper, and the thirst of revenge was concealed by a tender concern for the succession, and even the safety, of her son. They were justly alarmed by a petition of the friends of Cantacuzene, that they might be released from their oath of allegiance to the Polology, and entrusted with the defense of some cautionary towns, a measure supported with argument and eloquence, and which was rejected, says the imperial historian, by underscore my underscore sublime an almost incredible virtue. His repose was disturbed by the sound of plots and seditions, and he trembled lest the lawful prince should be stolen away by some foreign or domestic enemy, who would inscribe his name and his wrongs in the banners of rebellion. As the son of Andronicus advanced in the years of manhood, he began to feel and to act for himself, and his rising ambition was rather stimulated than checked by the imitation of his father's vices. If we may trust his own professions, Ken Takuzine labored with honest industry to correct these sordid and sensual appetites, and to raise the mind of the young prince to a level with his fortune. In the Servian 
expedition, the two emperors showed themselves in cordial harmony to the troops and provinces, and the younger colleague was initiated by the elder in the mysteries of war and government. After the conclusion of the peace, Palologus was left at Thessalonica, a royal residence, and a frontier station, to secure by his absence the peace of Constantinople, and to withdraw his youth from the temptations of a luxurious capital. But the distance weakened the powers of control, and the son of Andronicus was surrounded with artful or unthinking companions, who taught him to hate his guardian, to deplore his exile, and to vindicate his rights. A private treaty with the Kral or despot of Servia was soon followed by an open revolt, and Cantacuzene, on the throne of the elder Andronicus, defended the cause of age and prerogative, which in his youth he had so vigorously attacked. At his request the Empress Mother undertook the voyage of Thessalonica, and the office of mediation, she returned without success, and unless Anne of Savoy was instructed by adversity, we may doubt the sincerity, or at least the fervor, of her zeal. While the regent grasped the scepter with a firm and vigorous hand, she had been instructed to declare that the ten years of his legal administration would soon elapse, and that, after a full trial of the vanity of the world, the emperor Cantacuzene sighed for the repose of a cloister, and was ambitious only of a heavenly crown. Had these sentiments been genuine, his voluntary abdication would have restored the peace of the empire, and his conscience would have been relieved by an act of justice. Palologus alone was responsible for his future government, and whatever might be his vices, they were surely less formidable than the calamities of a civil war, in which the barbarians and infidels were again invited to assist the Greeks in their mutual destruction. By the arms of the Turks, who now struck a deep end, everlasting root in Europe, Cantacuzene prevailed in the third contest in which he had been involved, and the young emperor, driven from the sea and land, was compelled to take shelter among the Latins of the Isle of Tindas. His insolence and obstinacy provoked the victor to a step which must render the quarrel irreconcilable, and the association of his son Matthew, whom he invested with the purple, established the succession in the family of the Cantacuzini. But Constantinople was still attached to the blood of her ancient princes, and this last injury accelerated the restoration of the rightful heir. A noble Genoese espoused the cause of Palologus, obtained a promise of his sister, and achieved the revolution with two galleys and two thousand five hundred auxiliaries. Under the pretense of distress, they were admitted into the lesser port, a gate was opened, and the Latin shout of, Long life and victory to the Emperor, John Palologus, was answered by a general rising in his favor. A numerous and loyal party yet adhered to the standard of Cantacuzene, but he asserts in his history, does he hope for belief, that his tender conscience rejected the assurance of conquest, that, in free obedience to the voice of religion and philosophy, he descended from the throne and embraced with pleasure the monastic habit and profession. 36 So soon as he ceased to be a prince, 
his successor was not unwilling that he should be a saint, the remainder of his life was devoted to piety and learning, in the cells of Constantinople and Mount Athos, the monk Joseph was respected as the temporal and spiritual father of the emperor, and if he issued from his retreat, it was as the minister of peace, to subdue the obstinacy, and solicit the pardon, of his rebellious son. 37. 34. Return, from his return to Constantinople, Cantacuzin. Continues his history and that of the empire, one year beyond the Abdication of his son Matthew, A.D. 1357, L4C, L50, P. 705911. Nice Forus Gregoras ends with the Synod of Constantinople, in the year 1351, LXXII, C. 3, P. 660, they rest, to the conclusion of the Thsivth Book. P. 717, is all. Controversy, and his fourteen last books are still misses in the King of France's library. 35. Return, the Emperor, Cantacuzin L. 4C1, represents his own virtues, and N.I.C. Gregoras, L. 15C11, the complaints of his friends, who suffered by its effects. I have lent them the words of our poor cavaliers after the restoration. 36. Return, the awkward apology of Ken Takuzin, L4C. 3942, who relates, with visible confusion, his own downfall. May be supplied by the less accurate, but more honest, Narratives of Matthew Villani, L4C, 46, in the Scripture Rerum Italian Tom, 14 p. 268, and Ducas, C10, 11. 37. Return, Cantacuzin, in the year 1375, was honored with a letter from the Pope, Flary. History Ecclesiastes Tom XX P 250 His death is placed by a respectable authority on the 20th of November 1411 Duckenge Fam Byzant P 260 But if he were of the age of his companion Andronicus the younger he must have lived 116 years a rare instance of longevity, which in so illustrious a person would have attracted universal notice. Yet in the cloister, the mind of Ken Takuzin was still exercised by theological war. He sharpened a controversial pen against the Jews and Mahometans, 38 and in every state he defended with equal Seal the divine light of Mount Thabor, a memorable question which consummates the religious follies of the Greeks. The Fakirs of India, 39 and the monks of the Oriental Church, were alike persuaded, that in the total abstraction of the faculties of the mind and body, the purer spirit may ascend to the enjoyment and vision of the deity. The opinion and practice of the monasteries of Mount Athos 40 will be best represented in the words of an abbot, who flourished in the 11th century. When thou art alone in thy cell, says the ascetic teacher, shut thy door, and seat thyself in a corner, raise thy mind above all things vain and transitory, Recline thy beard and chin on thy breast, turn thy eyes and thy thoughts toward the middle of thy belly, the region of the navel, and search the place of the heart, the seat of the soul. At first, all will be dark and comfortless, 
but if you persevere day and night, you will feel an ineffable joy, and no sooner has the soul discovered the place of the heart, than it is involved in a mystic and ethereal light. This light, the production of a distempered fancy, the creature of an empty stomach and an empty brain, was adored by the quietists as the pure and perfect essence of God himself, and as long as the folly was confined to Mount Athos, the simple solitaries were not inquisitive how the divine essence could be a underscore material underscore substance, or how an underscore immaterial underscore substance could be perceived by the eyes of the body. But in the reign of the younger Andronicus, these monasteries were visited by Barlaam, 41 a Calabrian monk, who was equally skilled in philosophy and theology, who possessed the language of the Greeks and Latins, and whose versatile genius could maintain their opposite creeds, according to the interest of the moment. The indiscretion of an ascetic revealed to the Curious traveller the secrets of mental prayer and Barlaam embraced the opportunity of ridiculing the quietists, who placed the soul in the navel, of accusing the monks of Mount Athos of heresy and blasphemy. His attack compelled the more learned to renounce or dissemble the simple devotion of their brethren, and Gregory Palamas introduced a scholastic distinction between the essence and operation of God. His inaccessible essence dwells in the midst of an uncreated and eternal light, and this beatific vision of the saints had been manifested to the disciples on Mount Thabor, in the transfiguration of Christ. Yet this Distinction could not escape the reproach of polytheism, the eternity of the light of Thabur was fiercely denied, and Barlaam still charged the Polemites with holding two eternal substances, a visible and an invisible god. From the rage of the monks of Mount Athos, who threatened his life, the Calabrian retired to Constantinople, where his smooth and specious manners introduced him to the favor of the great domestic and the emperor. The court and the city were involved in this theological dispute, which flamed amidst the civil war, but the doctrine of Barlaam was disgraced by his flight and apostasy, the Palamites triumphed, and their adversary, the patriarch John of Apri, was deposed by the consent of the adverse factions of the state. In the character of emperor and theologian, Ken Takuzin presided in the Synod of the Greek Church, which established, as an article of faith, the uncreated light of Mount Thabur, and, after so many insults, the reason of mankind was slightly wounded by the addition of a single absurdity. Many rolls of paper or parchment have been blotted, and the impenitent sectaries, who refused to subscribe the Orthodox Creed, were deprived of the honors of Christian burial, but in the next age the question was forgotten. Nor can I learn that the axe or the faggot were employed for the Extirpation of the Barlaamite Heresy 42 38, Return, his four discourses, or books, were printed at Basel, 1543, Fabric Bibliot GRC, Tom 6P, 473 He composed them to satisfy a proselyte who was assaulted with letters from his friends of Ispahan. Ken Takuzin had read the Quran, but I 
Understand from Maraxi that he adopts the vulgar prejudices and Fables against Muhammad and his religion 39. Return, see the Voyage de Berni, Tom I. P. 127 40. Return, Mosheim, Institute History Ecclesiastes P. 522 523. Flery, History. Ecclesiastes. Tom. XXP 22, 24, 107, 114, and C. The former. Unfolds the causes with the judgment of a philosopher, the latter. Transcribes and transcribes and translates with the prejudices of. A Catholic priest. 41. Return, Basinage, in Cana CI Antique, Lections, Tom 4p. 363-368, has investigated the character and story of Barlaam. The duplicity of his opinions had inspired some doubts of the identity of his person. See likewise Fabricius, Bibliot. GRC Tom XP 427 432 42 Return C Cantacuzine L2C 39 40 L4C 3 23 24 25 and NIC Gregoras L 11C 10 L 15 3 7 and C whose last books, from the 6th to the 7th, are almost confined to a subject so interesting to the authors. Boyvin, NVIT. NIC. Gregor, from the unpublished books, and Fabricius, Bibliot. GRC, Tom. XP 462-473, or rather Montfaucon, from the Missus of. The Koislin Library, have added some facts and documents. For the conclusion of this chapter, I have reserved the Genoese War, which shook the throne of Cantacuzene, and betrayed the stability of the Greek Empire. The Genoese, who, after the recovery of Constantinople, were seated in the suburb of Para or Galata received that honorable fief from the bounty of the emperor. They were indulged in the use of their laws and magistrates, but they submitted to the duties of vassals and subjects. The forcible word of underscore leechman underscore 43 was borrowed from the Latin jurisprudence, and their underscore podesta underscore, or chief, before he entered on his office, saluted the emperor with loyal acclamations and vows of fidelity. Genoa sealed a firm alliance with the Greeks, and, in case of a defensive war, a supply of 50 empty galleys and a sucker of 50 galleys, completely armed and manned, was promised by the Republic to the Empire. In the revival of a naval force, it was the aim of Michael Palologus to deliver himself from a foreign aid, and his vigorous government contained the Genoese of Galata within those limits which the insolence of wealth and freedom provoked them to exceed. A sailor threatened that they should soon be masters of Constantinople, and slew the Greek who resented this national affront, and an armed vessel, after refusing to salute the palace, was guilty of some acts of piracy in the Black Sea. Their countrymen threatened to support their cause, but the long end open village of Galata was instantly surrounded by the imperial troops, till, in the moment of the assault, the prostrate Genoese 
implored the clemency of their sovereign. The defenseless situation which secured their obedience exposed them to the attack of their Venetian rivals, who, in the reign of the elder Andronicus, presumed to violate the majesty of the throne. On the approach of their fleets, the Genoese, with their families and effects, retired into the city, their empty habitations were reduced to ashes, and the feeble prince, who had viewed the destruction of his suburb, expressed his resentment, not by arms, but by ambassadors. This misfortune, however, was advantageous to the Genoese, who obtained, and imperceptibly abused, the dangerous license of surrounding Galata with a strong wall, of introducing into the ditch the waters of the sea, of erecting lofty turrets, and of mounting a train of military engines on the rampart. The narrow bounds in which they had been circumscribed were insufficient for the growing colony, each day they acquired some addition of landed property, and the adjacent hills were covered with their villas and castles, which they joined and protected by new fortifications. 44 The navigation and trade of the Euxine was the patrimony of the Greek emperors, who commanded the narrow entrance, the gates, as it were, of that inland sea. In the reign of Michael Palologus, their prerogative was acknowledged by the Sultan of Egypt, who solicited and obtained the liberty of sending an annual ship for the purchase of slaves. In Circassia and the Lesser Tartary, a liberty pregnant with mischief to the Christian cause, since these youths were transformed by education and discipline into the formidable Mamelukes. 45 From the colony of Para, the Genoese engaged with superior advantage in the lucrative trade of the Black Sea, and their industry supplied the Greeks with fish and corn, too. Articles of food almost equally important to a superstitious people. The spontaneous bounty of nature appears to have bestowed the harvests of Ukraine, the produce of a rude and savage husbandry, and the endless exportation of salt fish and caviar, is annually renewed by the enormous sturgeons that are caught at the mouth of the Don or Tanas, in their last station of the rich mud and shallow water of the Modus. 46 The waters of the Oxus The Caspian, the Volga, and the Don, opened a rare and laborious passage for the gems and spices of India, and after three months March the caravans of Karasme met the Italian vessels in the harbors of Crima. 47 These various branches of trade were monopolized by the diligence and power of the Genoese. Their rivals of Venice and Pisa were forcibly expelled, the natives were awed by the castles and cities, which arose on the foundations of their humble factories, and their principal establishment of Caffa 48 was besieged without effect by the Tartar powers. Destitute of a navy, the Greeks were oppressed by these haughty merchants, who fed, or famished, Constantinople. According to their interest, they proceeded to usurp the customs, the fishery, and even the toll, of the Bosphorus, and while they derived from these objects a revenue of 200,000 pieces of gold, a remnant of 30,000 was reluctantly allowed to the emperor. 49 The colony of Para or Galata acted, in peace and war, as an independent state, 
end, as it will happen in distant settlements, the Genoese Podesta too often forgot that he was the servant of his own masters. 43, Return, Pachimer, LVC 10, very properly explains. Litsia V, underscore Ligios underscore, by, Lydia V. The use of these words in the Greek and Latin of the feudal times may be amply understood from the glossaries of Duckenge, GRC P 811, 812 Latin Tom 4P 109111 44, Return, The Establishment and Progress of the Genoese at Para, Orgolata, is described by Duckenge, C. P. Christiana, L. I. P. 68, 69, from the Byzantine historians, Pachimer, L. 2 C. 35, L. V. 10, 30, L. 9. 15 liters 12. 6, 9, Nice Forus Gregoras. L, V, C, 4, L, 6, C, 11, L, 9, C, 5, L, 9, C, 1, L, 15, C, 1, 6, and Cantacuzene, L, I, C, 12, L, 2, C, 29, and C, 45, return, both Pachimer, L, 3, C, 3, 4, 5, and N, I, C, Greg, L, 4, C, 7, understand and deplore the effects of this dangerous indulgence. Bibars, Sultan of Egypt, himself a Tartar, but a devout Musulman, obtained from the children of Zingisthe permission to build a stately mosque in the capital of Crimea. Degenes, History des Huns, Tom 3p 343. 46, Return, Chardon, Voyages and Purse, Tom I.P. 48, was assured at Kaffa that these fishes were sometimes 24 or 26 feet long, weighed 8 or 900 pounds, and yielded 3 or 4 quintals of caviar. The corn of the Bosphorus had supplied the Athenians in the time of Demosthenes. 47, Return, Degenes, History des Huns, Tom 3 p. 343, 344. Vian e de Remugio, Tom. I, following 400. But this land or water? Carriage could only be practicable when Tartary was united under. A wise and powerful monarch. 48, Return, NIC. Gregoras, L, 13 C 12, is judicious and well informed on the trade and colonies of the Black Sea. Chardon. Describes the present ruins of Kaffa, where, in 40 days, he saw above 400 sail employed in the corn and fish trade. Voyages and Purse, Tom I P forty six forty eight forty nine Return C N I C Gregoras L seventeen C one These usurpations were encouraged by the weakness of the elder Andronicus and by the civil wars that afflicted his age and they minority of his grandson. The talents of Cantacuzene were employed to the ruin, rather than the restoration, of the empire. And after his domestic victory, he was condemned to an ignominious trial, whether the Greeks or the Genoese should reign. In Constantinople, the merchants of Pera were offended by his Refusal of some contiguous land, some commanding heights, which they proposed to cover with new fortifications, and in the 
Absence of the Emperor, who was detained at Demotica by sickness. They ventured to brave the debility of a female reign. A. Byzantine vessel, which had presumed to fish at the mouth of the harbor, was sunk by these audacious strangers, the fishermen were murdered. Instead of suing for pardon, the Genoese demanded satisfaction, required, in a haughty strain, that the Greeks should renounce the exercise of navigation, and encountered with regular arms the first sallies of the popular indignation. They instantly occupied the debatable land, and by the labor of a whole people, of either sex and of every age, the wall was raised, and the ditch was sunk, with incredible speed. At the same time, they attacked and burned two Byzantine galleys, while the three others, the remainder of the imperial navy, escaped from their hands, the habitations without the gates, or along the shore, were pillaged and destroyed, and the care of the regent of the Empress Irene, was confined to the preservation of the city. The return of Cantacuzene dispelled the public consternation, the emperor inclined to peaceful counsels, but he yielded to the obstinacy of his enemies, who rejected all reasonable terms, and to the ardor of his subjects, who threatened, in the style of scripture, to break them in pieces, like a potter's vessel. Yet they reluctantly paid the taxes, that he imposed for the construction of ships, and the expenses of the war, and as the two nations were masters, the one of the land, the other of the sea, Constantinople and Pera were pressed by the evils of a mutual siege. The merchants of the colony, who had believed that a few days would terminate the war, already murmured at their losses, the suckers from their mother country were delayed by the factions of Genoa, and the most cautious embraced the opportunity of a Rhodian vessel to remove their families and effects from the scene of hostility. In the spring, the Byzantine fleet, seven galleys and a train of smaller vessels, issued from the mouth of the harbor, and steered in a single line along the shore of Para unskillfully presenting their sides to the beaks of the adverse squadron. The crews were composed of peasants and mechanics, nor was their ignorance. Compensated by the native courage of barbarians, the wind was strong, the waves were rough, and no sooner did the Greeks perceive a distant and inactive enemy, than they leaped headlong into the sea, from a doubtful, to an inevitable peril. The troops that marched to the attack of the lines of Pera were struck at the same moment with a similar panic, and the Genoese were astonished, and almost ashamed, at their double victory. Their triumphant vessels, crowned with flowers, and dragging after them, the captive galleys, repeatedly passed and repassed before the palace, the only virtue of the emperor was patience, and the hope of revenge his sole consolation. Yet the distress of both parties interposed a temporary agreement, and the shame of the empire was disguised by a thin veil of dignity and power. Summoning the Chiefs of the colony, Cantacuzene affected to despise the trivial object of the debate, and, after a mild reproof, most liberally granted the lands, which had been previously resigned to the seeming custody of his officers. 50. 50. Return, 
the events of this war are related by Ken Takuzin. L4C11 with obscurity and confusion, and by NIC. Greg Oras. L17. C17, in a clear and honest narrative. The priest was less responsible than the prince for the defeat of the fleet. But the emperor was soon solicited to violate the treaty, and to join his arms with the Venetians, the perpetual enemies of Genoa and her colonies. While he compared the reasons of peace and war, his moderation was provoked by a wanton insult of the inhabitants of Para who discharged from their rampart a large stone that fell in the midst of Constantinople. On his just complaint, they coldly blamed the imprudence of their engineer, but the next day the insult was repeated, and they exulted in a second proof that the royal city was not beyond the reach of their artillery. Ken Takuzin instantly signed his treaty with the Venetians, but the weight of the Roman Empire was scarcely felt in the balance of these opulent and powerful republics. 51 From the Straits of Gibraltar to the mouth of the Tanas, their fleets encountered each other with various success, and a memorable battle was fought in the narrow sea, under the walls of Constantinople. It would not be an easy task to reconcile the accounts of the Greeks, the Venetians, and the Genoese, 52 and while I depend on the narrative of an impartial historian, 53 I shall borrow from each nation the facts that redound to their own disgrace, and the honor of their foes. The Venetians, with their allies the Catalans, had the advantage of number, and their fleet, with the poor addition of eight Byzantine galleys, amounted to 75 sail, the Genoese did not exceed 64, but in those times their ships of war were distinguished by the superiority of their size and strength. The names and families of their naval commanders, Pisani and Doria, are illustrious in the annals of their country, but the personal merit of the former was eclipsed by the fame and abilities of his rival. They engaged in tempestuous weather, and the tumult Uare conflict was continued. From the dawn to the extinction of light, the enemies of the Genoese applaud their prowess, the friends of the Venetians are dissatisfied with their behavior, but all parties agree in praising the skill and boldness of the Catalans, 531 who, with many wounds, sustained the brunt of the action. On the separation of the fleets, the event might appear doubtful, but the thirteen Genoese galleys, that had been sunk or taken, were compensated by a double loss of the allies, of fourteen Venetians, ten Catalans, and two Greeks, 532 and even the grief of the conquerors, expressed the assurance and habit of more decisive victories. Pisani confessed his defeat, by retiring into a fortified harbour. From whence, under the pretext of the orders of the Senate, he steered with a broken and flying squadron for the Isle of Candia, and abandoned to his rivals the sovereignty of the sea. In a public epistle, 54 addressed to the Doge and Senate, Petrarch, employs his eloquence to reconcile the maritime powers, the two luminaries of Italy. The orator celebrates the valor and victory of the Genoese, the first of men in the exercise of naval war, he drops a tear on the misfortunes of their Venetian brethren, but 
he exhorts them to pursue with fire and sword the base end. Perfidious Greeks, to purge the metropolis of the East from the heresy with which it was infected. Deserted by their friends, the Greeks were incapable of resistance, and three months after the battle, the Emperor Cantacuzene solicited and subscribed a treaty, which forever banished the Venetians and Catalans, and granted to the Genoese a monopoly of trade, and almost a right of dominion. The Roman Empire, I smile in transcribing the name, might soon have sunk into a province of Genoa, if the ambition of the Republic had not been checked by the ruin of her freedom and naval power. A long contest of 130 years was determined by the triumph of Venice, and the factions of the Genoese compelled them to seek for domestic peace under the protection of a foreign lord, the Duke of Milan, or the French king. Yet the spirit of commerce survived that of conquest, and the colony of Para still awed the capital and navigated the Euxine, till it was involved by the Turks in the final servitude of Constantinople itself. 51. Return, the Second War is darkly told by Cantacuzene, L. 4 c. 18, p. 24, 25, 28 32, who wishes to disguise what he dares not deny. I regret this part of NIC. Gregoras, which is still in Miz at Paris. Asterisk note, this part of Nice Forus Gregoras has not been printed in the new edition of the Byzantine. Historians The editor expresses a hope that it may be undertaken by Hayes. I should join in the regret of Gibbon, if these books contain any historical information, if they are but a continuation of the controversies which fill the last books in our present copies, they may as well sleep their eternal sleep in. Ms. as in print, M. 52, Return, Muratori, Annali d'Italia, Tom 12 p. 144. Refers to the most ancient chronicles of Venice, Carcinus, the continuator of Andrew Dandulus, Tom. 12 p. 421, 422, and Genoa. George Stella Annals Genuenses, Tom 17 p. 1091, 1092, both. Which I have diligently consulted in his great collection of the Historians of Italy. 53, Return, see the Chronicle of Matteo Villani of Florence, L. 2 c. 59, p. 145 147, c. 74, 75, p. 156, 157, in Muratori's collection, Tom. 14. 531, return, Ken Takuzine praises their bravery, but imputes their losses to their ignorance of the seas, they suffered more by the breakers than by the enemy, Vol. 3p 224 m. 532, return, Ken Takuzine says that the Genoese lost 28 ships with their crews, Otandroy, the Venetians and Catalan 16, the Imperials, Nun Ken Takuzine accuses Pisani of cowardice, in not following up the victory, and destroying the Genoese. But Pisani's conduct, and indeed Ken Takuzine's account of the battle, betray the superiority of the Genoese. M. 54, Return, the Abbe di Sada, Memoir sur la vie de Petrarch. 
Tom. 3P257263, translates this letter, which he copied. From a Ms. in the King of France's library. Though a servant of the Duke of Milan, Petrarch pours forth his astonishment and grief at the defeat and despair of the Genoese in the following year, p. 323-332. Chapter LXIV, Mughals, Ottoman Turks, Part I. Conquests of Zingis Khan and the Mughals from China to Poland, Escape of Constantinople and the Greeks, Origin of the Ottoman Turks in Bithynia, Reigns and Victories of Othman, Orshan. Amurath I, and Bajazet I, Foundation and Progress of the Turkish Monarchy in Asia and Europe, Danger of Constantinople and the Greek Empire From the petty quarrels of a city and her suburbs, from the cowardice and discord of the falling Greeks, I shall now ascend to the victorious Turks, whose domestic slavery was ennobled by Martial discipline, religious enthusiasm, and the energy of the national character. The rise and progress of the Ottomans, the present sovereigns of Constantinople, are connected with the most important scenes of modern history, but they are founded on a previous knowledge of the great eruption of the Mughals 100 and Tartars, whose rapid conquests may be compared with the primitive convulsions of nature, which have agitated and altered the surface of the globe. I have long since asserted my claim to introduce the nations, the immediate or remote authors of the fall of the Roman Empire, nor can I refuse myself to those events, which from their uncommon magnitude, will interest a philosophic mind in the history of blood. 1. 100, return, Mongol seems to approach the nearest to the proper name of this race. The Chinese call them Mongkau, the Manchu. Their neighbors, Mungo or Mungu. They called themselves also Beta. This fact seems to have been proved by M. Schmidt against the French Orientalists. C. D. Brossett. Note on L. E. Bo, Tom. XXIIP 402. 1. Return. The reader is invited to review chapters XXII to XXVI and XXIII to XXXVIII. The Manners of Pastoral Nations The Conquests of Attila and the Huns, which were composed at a time when I entertained the wish, rather than the hope, of concluding my history. From the spacious highlands between China, Siberia, and the Caspian Sea, the tide of emigration and war has repeatedly been poured. These ancient seats of the Huns and Turks were occupied in the 12th century by many pastoral tribes, of the same descent and similar manners, which were united and led to conquest by the formidable Zingis. 101 in his ascent to greatness, that barbarian, whose private appellation was Temugan, had trampled on the necks of his equals. His birth was noble, but it was the pride of victory that the prince or people deduced his seventh ancestor from the immaculate conception of a virgin. His father had reigned over thirteen hordes, which composed about thirty or forty thousand families, above two-thirds refused to pay tithes or obedience to his infant son, and at the age of 13. Temugin fought a battle against his rebellious subjects. The future conqueror of Asia was reduced to fly and to 
obey, but he rose superior to his fortune, and in his fortieth year he had established his fame and dominion over the circumjacent tribes. In a state of society, in which policy is root and valor is universal, the ascendant of one man must be founded on his power and resolution to punish his enemies and recompense his friends. His first military league was ratified by the simple rites of sacrificing a horse and tasting of a running stream, Timugin pledged himself to divide with his followers the sweets and the bitters of life, and when he had shared among them his horses and apparel, he was rich in their gratitude and his own hopes. After his first victory, he placed seventy cauldrons on the fire, and seventy of the most guilty rebels were cast headlong into the boiling water. The sphere of his attraction was continually enlarged by the ruin of the proud and the submission of the prudent, and the boldest chieftains might tremble, when they beheld, N.J.S. in silver, the skull of the Kunav Karaites, to who, under the name of Prester John, had corresponded with the Roman Pontiff and the Princes of Europe. The ambition of Timugin condescended to employ the arts of superstition, and it was from a naked prophet, who could ascend to heaven on a white horse, that he accepted the title of Zingus, three the underscore most great underscore and a divine right to the conquest and dominion of the earth. In a general underscore curl to underscore, or diet, he was seated on a felt, which was long afterwards revered as a relic, and solemnly proclaimed Great Khan, or Emperor of the Mughals Four and Tartars. Five of these kindred, though rival, names, the former had given birth to the imperial race, and the latter has been extended by accident or error over the spacious wilderness of the north. 101. Return, on the traditions of the early life of Zingus, c. Diosun, Hist des Mongols, Histoir des Mongols, Paris, 1824. Schmidt. Geschick des Ostmongolen, p. 66, and c. and notes m. 2. Return, the Kuns of the Karaites were most probably incapable of reading the pompous epistles composed in their name by the Nestorian missionaries, who endowed them with the fabulous wonders of an Indian kingdom. Perhaps these Tartars, they Presbyter or priest John, had submitted to the rites of baptism. An ordination, Asemon, Bibliot Orient Tom 3p 2p 487-503 3. Return, since the history and tragedy of Voltaire, Genghis, at least in French, seems to be the more fashionable spelling. But a Bulgazi Khan must have known the true name of his ancestor. His etymology appears just, underscores and underscore, in the Mughal tongue, signifies underscore great underscore, and underscore gis underscore is the superlative termination, history. Genealogic des Tatars, Part 3. p. 194, 195. From the same idea of magnitude, the appellation of underscore zingus underscore is bestowed on the ocean. For, return, the name of Mughals has prevailed among the Orientals, and still adheres to the titular sovereign, the great Mughal of Hindustan. Asterisk note, M. Remusat, Sir Le Long's Tartars. P. 233, justly observes, that Timur was a Turk, 
not a mogul. And, p. 242, that probably there was not mogul in the army of Babur, who established the Indian throne of the great Mogul. M. 5. Return, the Tartars, more properly Tatars, were descended from Tatar Khan, the brother of Mogul Khan, see a Bulgazi, part I and 2 and once formed a horde of 70,000 families on the borders of Kitay, p. 103112, in the Great Invasion of Europe. A.D. 1238, they seem to have led the vanguard, and the similitude of the name of underscore Tartarity underscore, recommended that of Tartars. To the Latins, Matt. Paris, P. 398, and C. Asterisk note, this relationship, according to M. Claproth, is fabulous, and invented by the Mohammedan writers, who, from religious zeal, endeavored to connect the traditions of the nomads of Central Asia with those of the Old Testament, as preserved in the Quran. There is no Trace of it in the Chinese writers. Tableau. D. L. A. C. P. 156 M. The code of laws which Zingis dictated to his subjects was adapted to the preservation of a domestic peace and the exercise of foreign hostility. The punishment of death was inflicted on the crimes of adultery, murder, perjury, and the capital thefts of a horse or ox, and the fiercest of men were mild and just in their intercourse with each other. The future election of the Great Khan was vested in the princes of his family and the heads of the tribes, and the regulations of the chase were essential to the pleasures and plenty of a Tartar camp. The victorious nation was held sacred from all servile labors, which were abandoned to slaves and strangers, and every labor was servile except the profession of arms. The service and discipline of the troops, who were armed with bows, cimeters and iron maces, and divided by Hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands, were the institutions of a veteran commander. Each officer and soldier was made responsible, under pain of death, for the safety and honor of his companions, and the spirit of conquest breathed in the law, that peace should never be granted unless to a vanquished and suppliant enemy but it is the religion of Zingis that best deserves our wonder and applause. 501 The Catholic Inquisitors of Europe, who defended nonsense by cruelty, might have been confounded by the example of a barbarian, who anticipated the lessons of philosophy, six and established by his laws a system of pure theism and perfect toleration. His first and only article of faith was the existence of one God, the author of all good, who fills by his presence the heavens and earth, which he has created by his power. The Tartars and Mughals were addicted to the idols of their peculiar tribes, and many of them had been converted by the foreign missionaries to the religions of Moses, of Muhammad, and of Christ. These various systems in freedom and concord were taught and practiced within the precincts of the same camp, and the bonds, the imam, the rabbi, the Nestorian, and the Latin priest, enjoyed the same honorable exemption from service and tribute, in the mosque of Bakhara, the insolent victor might trample the Quran under his horse's feet, but the calm legislator 
respected the prophets and pontiffs of the most hostile sections. The reason of Zingus was not informed by books, the Kun could neither read nor write, and, except the tribe of the Igors, the greatest part of the Mughals and Tartars were as illiterate as their sovereign. 601 The memory of their exploits was preserved. By tradition, 68 years after the death of Zingus, these traditions were collected and transcribed, 7 The brevity of their domestic annals may be supplied by the Chinese, 8 Persians, 9 Armenians, 10 Syrians, 11 Arabians, 12 Greeks, 13 Russians, 14 Poles, 15 Hungarians, 16 and Latins, 17 and each nation will deserve credit in the relation of their own disasters and defeats. 18. 501, return, before his armies entered Thibet, he sent an embassy to Bagdasat Nam Simo, a Lama high priest, with a letter. To this effect, I have chosen thee as high priest for myself and my empire. Repair then to me, and promote the present and future. Happiness of man, I will be thy supporter and protector, let us establish a system of religion, and unite it with the monarchy. And see. The high priest accepted the invitation, and the Mongol. History literally terms this step the underscore period of the first respect for religion underscore, because the monarch, by his public profession, made it the religion of the state. Clap Roth Travels In Caucasus, Chapter 7, English Transaction P. 92 Neither Chinggis nor his Son and successor Egida had, on account of their continual wars, much leisure for the propagation of the religion of the Lama. By religion they understand a distinct, independent, sacred moral code, which has but one origin, one source, and one object. This notion they universally propagate, and even believe that they brutes, and all created beings, have a religion adapted to their sphere of action. The different forms of the various religions they ascribe to the difference of individuals, nations, and legislators. Never do you hear of their inveighing against any creed, even against the obviously absurd shaman paganism, or of their persecuting others on that account. They themselves, on the other hand, endure every hardship, and even persecutions, with perfect resignation, and indulgently excuse the follies of others, nay, consider them as a motive for increased ardor in Prayer, Chapter 9 P. 109 M. 6. Return, a singular conformity may be found between the religious laws of Zingis Khan and of Mr. Locke, Constitutions of Carolina, in his works, Vol. 4 p. 535, 40 o. Edition, 1777. 601, Return, see the notice on THADHA Tungo the Agor. Minister of Chinggis, in Abel Remusat's 2D series of research. Asiat. Vol. 2p. 61. He taught the son of Chinggis to write. He was the instructor of the Mughals in writing, of which they were before ignorant, and hence the application of the Uyghur. Characters to the Mughal language cannot be placed earlier than the year 1204 or 1205, nor so late as the time of Pa South Southeast Pa, 
who lived under Kublai. A new alphabet, approaching to that of Thibet, was introduced under Kublai M. 7, return, in the year 1294, by the command of Kazan, Khan of Persia, the fourth in descent from Zingis. From these traditions, his vizier Fadlala composed a Mughal history in the Persian language, which has been used by Petit de la Croix, History de Zheng Yi Scan, p. 537-539. The Histoire Genealogique des Tatars, a. Laid, 1726, in 1 2 mo, 2 tomes, was translated by the Swedish. Prisoners in Siberia from the Mughal Miss of Abulgasi Bahadur Khan. A descendant of Zingis, who reigned over the Uzbeks of Charism. Or Karizme, A.D. 1644-1663. He is of most value and credit for the names, pedigrees, and manners of his nation. Of his nine parts, the Ist descends from Adam to Mogul Khan, the Id, from Mogul to Zingis, the Thurid is the life of Zingis, the Ivith, Vth, Vith, and Aeth, the general history of his four sons and their posterity. The Aedith and Ixth, the particular history of the descendants of Shabani Khan, who reigned in Mornahur and Charism. 8. Return, Histoire de Gentiscan, et de Taut la Dynastie de Mongos ses successeurs, Conk Rans de la Chine, Thierry de L'Histoire de la Chine, Parler, P. Gobble, de la Société de Jesus, Missionnaire à Peking, à Paris, 1739, in Fortio. This translation is stamped with the Chinese character of domestic accuracy and foreign ignorance. 9. Return, see the Histoire du Grand Zheng Yi Scan, Premier Emperor des Mughals et Tartars, P.A.R.M. Petit de la Croix, A. Paris, 1710, in 1 2 mo, a work of ten years labor, chiefly drawn from the Persian writers, among whom Nisavi, the secretary of Sultan Jalaldin, has the merit and prejudices of a contemporary. A slight air of romance is the fault of the originals, or the compiler. See likewise the articles of underscore Jeng Eskin underscore, underscore Mohammed underscore, underscore Jalaldin underscore, and see, in the bibliotheque. Oren Tal of Deherbalis. Asterisk note, the preface to the History Day. Mongols, Paris, 1824, gives a catalogue of the Arabic end. Persian authorities M. 10, return, Hate Honus, or Athonus, an Armenian prince, and afterwards a monk of Premontor, Fabric, Bibliot. Latin Media IV. Tom. IP 34, dictated in the French language, his book underscore D. Tartarus underscore, his old fellow soldiers. It was immediately translated into Latin, and is inserted in the Novus Orbis of Simon Grinus. Basil, 1555, in folio. Asterisk note, a pray see at the end of the new edition of El Ebo, History des Emperors, Vol. 17, by M. Brossett gives large extracts from the accounts of the Armenian historians relating to the Mughal conquests M. 11, return, Zingis Khan, and his first successors, occupy the conclusion of the Ixth dynasty of Abul Faragius, Ver. Pakuk. 
1663, in Fortio. And his XTH dynasty is that of the Mughals. Of Persia. Asemenus, Bibliot. Orient. Tom. 2. Has extracted. Some facts from his Syriac writings, and the lives of the Jacobite Mafrians, or primates of the East. 12. Return, among the Arabians, in language and religion, we may distinguish a bullfeather, Sultan of Hama in Syria, who fought in person, under the Mameluk standard, against the Mughals. 13. Return, Nisphorus Gregoras, L2C5, 6, has felt the necessity of connecting the Scythian and Byzantine histories. He describes with truth and elegance the settlement and manners of the Mughals of Persia, but he is ignorant of their origin, and corrupts the names of Zingis and his sons. 14. Return, M. Levesque, Histoire de Russie, Tom II, has described the conquest of Russia by the Tartars, from the Patriarch Nikon, and the Old Chronicles. 15. Return, for Poland, I am content with the Sarmatia Asiatica. E.T. Europa of Matthew A. Machu, or D. Mikovia, a canon end. Physician of Krakow, A.D. 1506, inserted in the Novus Orbis of Grinus. Fabric Bibliot. Latin. Medi et infamtatis, Tom. V. P. 56. 16. Return, I should quote Thurasius, the oldest general. Historian, Pars 2 c. 74 p. 150, in the first volume of the Scriptores Rerum Hungaricarum, did not the same volume contain the original narrative of a contemporary, an eyewitness, and a sufferer, M. Rogeri I, Hungary, Veradiensis Capituli Canonici. Carmen Misera Bile, Seu Historia Super Destructione Regna Hungary. Temporibus Bell 4. Regis Pertart Aros Facta, p. 292-321, the best picture that I have ever seen of all the circumstances of a barbaric invasion. 17. Return, Matthew Paris has represented, from authentic documents, the danger and distress of Europe, consult the word underscore Tartary underscore in his copious index. From motives of zeal and curiosity, the court of the great Khan in the Zeeth century was visited by two friars, John de Plano Carpini, and William Rubruquis, and by Marco Polo, a Venetian gentleman. The Latin Relations of the two former are inserted in the first volume of Hakluyt, the Italian original or version of the third, Fabric. Bibliot. Latin. Medi IV, Tom. 2p 198, Tom. V p 25, may be. Found in the second tome of Remugio. 18. Return, in his great history of the Huns, M. D. Geens has most amply treated of Zingis Khan and his successors. See Tom. 3L 15XIX, and in the collateral articles of the Seljukians of Rome, Tom. 2L 11, the Karizmians, L 14, and the Mamelukes, Tom. 4L XXI, consult likewise the tables of the first volume. He is ever learned and accurate, yet I am only indebted to him for a general view, and some passages of 
a bull feather, which are still latent in the Arabic text. Asterisk note, 2. This catalogue of the historians of the Mughals may be added. Dio Sun, Histoire des Mongols, Histoire des Mongols, from Arabic. And Persian authorities, Paris, 1824. Schmidt, Geschichter. Ostmongolen, Street. Petersburg, 1829. This curious work, by Sanang Sitsun Chungtitske, published in the original Mongol, was written after the conversion of the nation to Buddhism, it is enriched with very valuable notes by the editor and translator, but, unfortunately, is very barren of information about the European and even the Western Asiatic conquests of the Mongols M. Chapter LXIV, Mughals, Ottoman Turks Part 2 The arms of Zingis and his lieutenants successively reduced the hordes of the desert, who pitched their tents between the wall of China and the Volga, and the Mughal emperor became the monarch of the pastoral world, the lord of many millions of shepherds and soldiers, who felt their united strength, and were impatient to rush on the mild and wealthy climates of the south. His ancestors had been the tributaries of the Chinese emperors, and Temugin himself had been disgraced by a title of honor and servitude. The court of Peking was astonished by an embassy from its former vassal, who in the tone of the king of nations, exacted the tribute and obedience which he had paid, and who affected to treat the underscore son of heaven underscore as the most contemptible of mankind. A haughty answer disguised their secret apprehensions, and their fears were soon justified by the march of innumerable squadrons who pierced on all sides the feeble rampart of the Great Wall. Ninety cities were stormed, or starved, by the Mughals, ten only escaped, and Zingis, from a knowledge of the filial piety of the Chinese, covered his vanguard with their captive parents, an unworthy, and by degrees a fruitless, abuse of the virtue of his enemies. His invasion was supported by the revolt of a hundred thousand kittens, who guarded the frontier, yet he listened to a treaty, and a princess of China, three thousand horses, five hundred youths, and as many virgins, and a tribute of gold and silk, were the price of his retreat. In his second expedition, he compelled the Chinese emperor to retire beyond the Yellow River to a more southern residence. The siege of Peking 19 was long and laborious, the inhabitants were reduced by famine to decimate and devour their fellow citizens, when their ammunition was spent. They discharged ingots of gold and silver from their engines, but the Mughals introduced a mine to the center of the capital, and the conflagration of the palace burnt above thirty days. China was desolated by Tartar war and domestic faction, and the five northern provinces were added to the empire of Zingis. 19. Return, more properly underscore Yanking underscore, an ancient city, whose Ruins still appear some furlongs to the southeast of the modern underscore Peking underscore, which was built by Kublai Khan, Gobel, p. 146. Peking and Nanking are vague titles, the courts of the north and of the south. The identity and change of names perplex the most skillful readers of the Chinese geography, p. 177, 
Asterisk note. And likewise in Chinese history see Abel Remusat, Mel. Asiat. 2D. Tom. 2P5M. In the West, he touched the dominions of Mohammed, Sultan of Karizme, who reigned from the Persian Gulf to the borders of India and Turkestan, and who, in the proud imitation of Alexander the Great, forgot the servitude and ingratitude of his fathers to the House of Seljuk. It was the wish of Zingis to establish a friendly and commercial intercourse with the most powerful of the Muslim princes, nor could he be tempted by the secret solicitations of the Caliph of Baghdad, who sacrificed to his personal wrongs the safety of the church and state. A rash end in human deed provoked and justified the Tartar arms in the invasion of the southern Asia. 191 A caravan of three ambassadors and 150 merchants were arrested and murdered at Atrar, by the command of Mohammed, nor was it till after a demand and denial of justice, till he had prayed and fasted three nights on a mountain, that the Mughal emperor appealed to the judgment of God and his sword. Our European battles, says a philosophic writer, twenty are petty skirmishes, if compared to the numbers that have fought and fallen in the fields of Asia. Seven hundred thousand Mughals and Tartars are said to have marched under the standard of Zingis and his four sons. In the vast plains that extend to the north of the Sihon or Jaxarts, they were encountered by 400,000 soldiers of the Sultan, and in the first battle, which was suspended by the night, 160,000 Karizmians were slain. Mohammed was astonished by the multitude and valor of his enemies, he withdrew from the scene of danger and distributed his troops in the frontier towns, trusting that the barbarians, invincible in the field, would be repulsed by the length and difficulty of so many regular sieges. But the prudence of Zingis had formed a body of Chinese engineers, skilled in the mechanic arts, informed perhaps of the secret of gunpowder, and capable, under his discipline, of attacking a foreign country with more vigor and success than they had defended their own. The Persian historians will relate the sieges and reduction of Atrar, Kojand, Bakhara, Samarkand, Karizme, Herat, Miro, Nisabor, Balch, and Kandahar, and they Conquest of the rich and populous countries of Transoxiana, Karizme, and Chavizan. 204 The destructive hostilities of Adela. And the Huns have long since been elucidated by the example of Zingis and the Mughals, and in this more proper place I shall be content to observe, that, from the Caspian to the Indus, they ruined a tract of many hundred miles, which was adorned with the habitations and labors of mankind, and that five centuries have not been sufficient to repair the ravages of four years. The Mughal emperor encouraged or indulged the fury of his troops, the hope of future possession was lost in the ardor of rapine and slaughter, and the cause of the war exasperated their native fierceness by the pretense of justice and revenge. The downfall and death of the Sultan Mohammed, who expired, unpitied and alone, in a desert island of the Caspian Sea, is a poor atonement for the calamities of which he was the author.
could they? Charismian Empire have been saved by a single hero, it would have been saved by his son Jeldon, whose active valor repeatedly checked the Mughals in the career of victory. Retreating, as he fought, to the banks of the Indus, he was oppressed by their innumerable host, till, in the last moment of despair, Jeldon spurred his horse into the waves, swam one of the broadest and most rapid rivers of Asia, and extorted the admiration and applause of Zingis himself. It was in this camp that the Mughal conqueror yielded with reluctance to the murmurs of his weary and wealthy troops, who sighed for the enjoyment of their native land. Yocumbered with the spoils of Asia, he slowly measured back his footsteps, betrayed some pity for the misery of the vanquished, and declared his intention of rebuilding the cities, which had been swept away by the tempest of his arms. After he had repassed the Oxus and Jaxarts, he was joined by two generals, whom he had detached with thirty thousand horse, to subdue the western provinces of Persia. They had trampled on the nations which opposed their passage, penetrated through the gates of Derbent, traversed the Volga and the desert, and accomplished the circuit of the Caspian Sea, by an expedition which had never been attempted, and has never been repeated. The return of Zingis was signalized by the overthrow of the rebellious or independent kingdoms of Tartary, and he died in the fullness of years and glory, with his last breath exhorting and instructing his sons to achieve the conquest of the Chinese Empire. 205 191 Return, see the particular account of this transaction. From the Kolausut el Akbar, in Price, Vol. 2p 402 m. 20, return, m. de Voltaire, S.A. sur l'histoire générale, Tom. 3c 60, p. 8. His account of Zingis and the Mughals contains, as usual, much general sense and truth, with some particular errors. 204, return, everywhere they massacred all classes, except the artisans, whom they made slaves. History des Mongols M. 205, return, their first duty, which he bequeathed to them, was to massacre the king of Tangkut and all the inhabitants of Ninhaya, the surrender of the city being already agreed upon. History des Mongols Vol. IP 286 M. The harem of Zingis was composed of 500 wives and concubines, and of his numerous progeny, four sons, illustrious. By their birth and merit, exercised under their father the principal offices of peace and war. Taoshi was his great huntsman, Zagatai 21 his judge, Octai his minister, and Tuli his general, and their names and actions are often conspicuous in the history of his conquests. Firmly united for their own and the public interest, the three brothers and their families were content with dependent scepters, and Octai, by general consent, was proclaimed Great Khan or Emperor of the Mughals and Tartars. He was succeeded by his son Gayuk, after whose death the empire devolved to his cousins Mangu and Kublai, the sons of Tuli, and the grandsons of Zingis. In the sixty-eight years of his four first successors, the Mughal subdued almost all Asia, 
and a large portion of Europe. Without confining myself to the order of time, without expatiating on the detail of events, I shall present a general picture of the progress of their arms, I. In the east, 2. In the south, 3. In the west, and 4. In the north, 21. Return, Zagatai gave his name to his dominions of Mornahir, or Transoxiana, and the Mughals of Hindostan, who emigrated from that country, are styled Zagatais by the Persians. This certain etymology, and the similar example of Uzbek, Nogai, and C, may warn us not absolutely to reject the derivations of a national, from a personal, name. Asterisk note, see a curious anecdote of Chagatai. History des Mongols, p. 370 m. I, before the invasion of Zingis, China was divided into two empires or dynasties of the north and south, 22 and the difference of origin and interest was smoothed by a general conformity of laws, language and national manners. The northern empire, which had been dismembered by Zingis, was finally subdued. Seven years after his death, after the loss of Peking, the emperor had fixed his residence at Kaifeng, a city many leagues in circumference, and which contained, according to the Chinese annals, 14,000 families of inhabitants and fugitives. He escaped from thence with only seven horsemen, and made his last stand in a third capital, till at length a hopeless monarch, protesting his innocence and accusing his fortune, ascended a funeral pile, and gave orders, that, as soon as he had stabbed himself, the fire should be kindled by his attendants. The dynasty of the underscore Song underscore, the native and ancient sovereigns of the whole empire, survived about 45 years. The fall of the northern usurpers, and the perfect conquest was reserved for the arms of Kublai. During this interval, the Mughals were often diverted by foreign wars, and, if the Chinese seldom dared to meet their victors in the field, their passive courage presented an endless succession of cities to storm and of millions to slaughter. In the attack and defense of places, the engines of antiquity and the Greek fire were alternately employed, the use of gunpowder in cannon and bombs appears as a familiar practice, 23 and the sieges were conducted by the Mahometans and Franks, who had been liberally invited into the service of Kublai. After passing the Great River, the troops and artillery were conveyed along a series of canals, till they invested the royal residence of Hamsho, or Quincy, in the country of silk, the most delicious climate of China. The emperor, a defenseless youth, surrendered his person and scepter. And before he was sent in exile into Tartary, he struck nine times the ground with his forehead, to adore in prayer or thanksgiving the mercy of the great Khan. Yet the war, it was now styled a rebellion, was still maintained in the southern provinces from Hamsha to Canton, and the obstinate remnant of Independence and hostility was transported from the land to the sea. But when the fleet of the underscore song underscore was surrounded and oppressed by a superior armament, their last champion leaped into 
the waves with his infant emperor in his arms. It is more glorious, he cried, to die a prince, than to live a slave. A hundred thousand Chinese imitated his example, and the whole empire, from Tonkin to the Great Wall, submitted to the dominion of Kublai. His boundless ambition aspired to the conquest of Japan, his fleet was twice shipwrecked, and the lives of a hundred thousand Mughals and Chinese were sacrificed in the fruitless expedition. But the circumjacent kingdoms, Korea, Tonkin, Cochin China, Pegu, Bengal, and Thibet, were reduced in different degrees of tribute and obedience by the effort or terror of his arms. He explored the Indian Ocean with a fleet of a thousand ships, they sailed in sixty-eight days, most probably, to the Isle of Borneo, under the equinoctial line, and though they returned not without spoil or glory, the emperor was dissatisfied that the savage king had escaped from their hands. 22. Return, in Marco Polo, and the Oriental Geographers, the names of Cathay and Mangi distinguish the northern and southern empires, which, from AD 1234 to 1279, were those of the Great Khan, and of the Chinese. The search of Cathay, after China had been found, excited and misled our navigators of the 16th century, in their attempts to discover the Northeast Passage. 23. Return, I depend on the knowledge and fidelity of the pair. Gobble, who translates the Chinese text of the Annals of the Mughals or Yuan, p. 71. 93, 153, but I am ignorant at what time. These annals were composed and published. The two uncles of Marco Polo, who served as engineers at the siege of Xianjiang Fu, asterisk, L. 261, in Remugio, Tom. 2 C. Gobble, p. 155, 157, must have felt and related the effects of this destructive powder, and their silence is a weighty and almost decisive objection. I entertain a suspicion that their recent discovery was carried from Europe to China by the caravans of the XVTH century and falsely adopted as an old national discovery before the arrival of the Portuguese and Jesuits in the a -tithe. Yet the pair gobble affirms that the use of gunpowder has been known to the Chinese above 1600 years. Note, asterisk Su Hung Kian Lu Abel Remusat M. Note, La Pudra A Canon E.T. Diotri's Compositions and Flaments don't ILSSE servant poor construer de pieces de artifice done. Effet supranent, lur etayent connus depuis trace long temps, et. L. on croit q. de bombards et de pierriers, don't ILS of aint. Insane l usage auxiliary tartars, ont pu donner in Europe le de. D'artillery. Quoique la forme des fusils et des cannons don't ils. Se servant actual element, leur aide aste a pour tpar les francs. In ZQL attestant, les noms memes chu ils donnant a ces sorts. Darms. Abel remusat, melanges agiat. 2 d seer. Tom. I.P. 23M. 2. The conquest of Hindostan by the Mughals was reserved in a later period for the House of Timur, but that of Iran, or Persia, 
was achieved by Halagokan, 231 the grandson of Zingis. The brother and lieutenant of the two successive emperors, Mangu and Kublai. I shall not enumerate the crowd of sultans, emirs, and adabeks, whom he trampled into dust, but the extirpation of the underscore assassins underscore, or Ismaelians 24 of Persia, may be considered as a service to mankind. Among the hills to the south of the Caspian, these odious sectaries had reigned with impunity above a hundred and sixty years, and their prince, or imam, established his lieutenant to lead and govern the colony of Mount Libanus, so famous and formidable in the history of the Crusades. 25 With the fanaticism of the Quran, the Ismaelians had blended the Indian transmigration, and the visions of their own prophets, and it was their first duty to devote their souls and bodies in blind obedience to the Vicar of God. The daggers of his missionaries were felt both in the East and West, the Christians and the Moslems enumerate, and persons multiply, the illustrious victims that were sacrificed to the zeal, avarice, or resentment of underscore the old man underscore, as he was corruptly styled, underscore of the mountain underscore. But these daggers, his only arms, were broken by the sword of Halagu, and not a vestige is left of the enemies of mankind. Except the word underscore assassin underscore, which, in the most odious sense, has been adopted in the languages of Europe. The extinction of the Abbasides cannot be indifferent to the spectators of their greatness and decline. Since the fall of their Seljukian tyrants, the caliphs had recovered their lawful dominion of Baghdad and the Arabian Iraq, but the city was distracted by theological factions, and the commander of the faithful was lost in a harem of seven hundred concubines. The invasion of the Mughals he encountered with feeble arms and haughty embassies. On the divine decree, said the Caliph Mustasim, is founded the throne of the sons of Abbas, and their foes shall surely be destroyed in this world and in the next. Who is this Halagu that dares to rise against them? If he be desirous of peace, let him instantly depart from the sacred territory, and perhaps he may obtain from our clemency the pardon of his fault. This presumption was cherished by a perfidious vizier, who assured his master, that even if the barbarians had entered the city, the women and children, from the terraces, would be sufficient to overwhelm them with stones. But when Halagua touched the phantom, it instantly vanished into smoke. After a siege of two months, Baghdad was stormed and sacked by the Mughals, 251 and their savage commander pronounced the death of the Caliph Mustasim, the last of the temporal successors of Muhammad, whose noble kinsman, of the race of Abbas, had reigned in Asia above five hundred years. Whatever might be the designs of the conqueror, the holy cities of Mecca and Medina 26 were protected by the Arabian desert, but the Mughals spread beyond the Tigris and Euphrates, pillaged Aleppo and Damascus, and threatened to join the Franks in the deliverance of Jerusalem. Egypt was lost, had she been defended only by her feeble offspring, but the Mamelukes had breathed in their infancy the keenness of a Scythian heir, 
equal in valor. Superior in discipline, they met the Mughals in many a well-fought field, and drove back the stream of hostility to the eastward of the Euphrates. 261 But it overflowed with resistless violence they Kingdoms of Armenia 262 and Anatolia, of which the former was possessed by the Christians, and the latter by the Turks. The Sultans of Iconium opposed some resistance to the Mughal arms. Till Azadan sought a refuge among the Greeks of Constantinople. And his feeble successors, the last of the Seljukian dynasty were finally extirpated by the Khans of Persia. 263 231 Return, see the curious account of the expedition of Halaguo, translated from the Chinese, by M. Abel Remusat. Melanges Asiat. 2 D. Seer. Tom. I. P. 171 M. 24, return, all that can be known of the assassins of Persia. And Syria is poured from the copious, and even profuse, erudition. Of M. Falconet, in two underscore memoirs underscore read before the Academy of Inscriptions, Tom 17 p. 127 170, asterisk note, von Hammers. History of the Assassins has now thrown Falconet's dissertation into the shade M. 25, Return, the Ismailians of Syria, 40,000 Assassins, had acquired or founded ten castles in the hills above Tortosa. About the year 1280, they were extirpated by the Mamelukes. 251 Return, compare von Hammer, Geschichte der Assassinen, p. 283, 307. Wilken, Geschichte der Kreuzig, Vol. 7 p. 406. Price, Chronological Retrospect, Vol. 2 p. 217, 223, m. 26, Return, as a proof of the ignorance of the Chinese in foreign transactions, I must observe, that some of their historians extend the conquest of Zingis himself to Medina, the country of Muhammad, Gobble p. 42. 261, Return, Compare Wilkin, Vol. 7 p. 410 m. 262, Return, on the friendly relations of the Armenians with the Mongols see Wilkin, Geschichte der Kreuzig, Vol. 7 p. 402. They eagerly desired an alliance against the Mohammedan powers M. 263, Return, Trebizond escaped, apparently by the dexterous politics of the sovereign, but it acknowledged the Mughal supremacy. Fomerayor, p. 172 m. 3. No sooner had Octai subverted the northern empire of China, than he resolved to visit with his arms the most remote countries of the west. 1500,000 Mughals and Tartars were Inscribed on the military roll, of these the great Khan selected a third, which he entrusted to the command of his nephew Batu, the son of Tuli, who reigned over his father's conquests to the north of the Caspian Sea. 264 After a festival of forty days, Batu set forwards on this great expedition, and such was they speed and ardor of his innumerable squadrons, then in less than six years they had measured a line of ninety degrees of longitude, a fourth part of the circumference of the globe. They 
great rivers of Asia and Europe, the Volga, and Kama, the Don and Boris thence, the Vistula, and Danube, they either swam with their horses or passed on the ice, or traversed in leathern boats, which followed the camp, and transported their wagons and artillery. By the first victories of Batu, the remains of national freedom were eradicated in the immense plains of Turkestan and Kipsuk. 27. Indiana His rapid progress, he overran the kingdoms, as they are now styled, of Astrakhan and Kazan, and the troops which he detached towards Mount Caucasus explored the most secret recesses of Georgia and Circassia. The civil discord of the great dukes, or princes, of Russia, betrayed their country to the Tartars. They spread from Livonia to the Black Sea, and both Moscow and Cairo, the modern and the ancient capitals, were reduced to ashes, a temporary ruin, less fatal than the deep, and perhaps indelible, mark, which a servitude of two hundred years has imprinted on the character of the Russians. The Tartars ravaged with equal fury the countries which they hoped to possess, and those which they were hastening to leave. From the permanent conquest of Russia they made a deadly, though transient, inroad into the heart of Poland, and as far as the borders of Germany. The cities of Lublin and Krakow were obliterated, 271 they approached the shores of the Baltic, and in the Battle of Lignitz they defeated the Dukes of Silesia, the Polish Palatines, and the great master of the Teutonic Order, and filled nine sacks with the right ears of the slain. From Lignitz, the extreme point of their western march, they turned aside to the invasion of Hungary, and the presence or spirit of Batu inspired the host of 500,000 men, the Carpathian. Hills could not be long impervious to their divided columns, and their approach had been fondly disbelieved till it was irresistibly felt. The king, Bela IV, assembled the military force of his counts and bishops, but he had alienated the nation by adopting a vagrant horde of 40,000 families of Comans, and these savage guests were provoked to revolt by the suspicion of treachery and the murder of their prince. The whole country north of the Danube was lost in a day, and depopulated in a summer, and the ruins of cities and churches were overspread with the bones of the natives, who expiated the sins of their Turkish ancestors. An ecclesiastic, who fled from the sack of Weridan, describes the calamities which he had seen, or suffered. And the sanguinary rage of sieges and battles is far less atrocious than the treatment of the fugitives, who had been allured from the woods under a promise of peace and pardon and who were coolly slaughtered as soon as they had performed the labors of the harvest and vintage. In the winter the Tartars passed the Danube on the ice and advanced to Gran or Strigonium, a German colony and the metropolis of the kingdom. 30. Engines were planted against the walls, the ditches were filled with sacks of earth and dead bodies, and after a promiscuous massacre, three hundred noble matrons were slain in the presence of the Khan. Of all the cities and fortresses of Hungary, three alone survived the Tartar invasion, and the unfortunate Bata hid his head among the islands of the Adriatic. 264, 
Return, see the curious extracts from the Mahometan. Writers, History des Mongols, p. 707, m. 27, Return, the underscore dashed Kipzak underscore, or plain of Kipzak, extends on either side of the Volga, in a boundless space towards the Jake. And Boris thence, and is supposed to contain the primitive name and nation of the Cossacks. 271, return, Amitz was gallantly and successfully defended by Stenberg, History des Mongols, p. 396 m. The Latin world was darkened by this cloud of savage hostility, a Russian fugitive carried the alarm to Sweden, and the remote Nations of the Baltic and the ocean trembled at the approach of the Tartars, twenty-eight whom their fear and ignorance were inclined to separate from the human species. Since the invasion of the Arabs in the 8th century, Europe had never been exposed to a similar calamity, and if the disciples of Muhammad would have oppressed her religion and liberty, it might be apprehended that the shepherds of Scythia would extinguish her cities, her arts, and all the institutions of civil society. The Roman pontiff attempted to appease and convert these invincible pagans by a mission of Franciscan and Dominican friars, but he was astonished by the reply of the Khan that the sons of God and of Zingis were invested with a divine power to subdue or extirpate the nations, and that the Pope would be involved in the universal destruction. Unless he visited in person, and as a suppliant, the royal horde, the Emperor Frederick II embraced a more generous mode of defense, and his letters to the kings of France and England, and the princes of Germany, represented the common danger, and urged them to arm their vassals in this just and rational crusade. 29. The Tartars themselves were awed by the fame and valor of the Franks, the town of Neustadt in Austria was bravely defended against them by fifty knights and twenty crossbows, and they raised the siege on the appearance of a German army. After wasting the adjacent kingdoms of Serbia, Bosnia, and Bulgaria, Batis slowly retreated from the Danube to the Volga to enjoy the rewards of victory in the city and palace of Sarai, which started at his command from the midst of the desert. 291. 28. Return, in the year 1238 the inhabitants of Gothia, underscore Sweden underscore, and Frise were prevented, by their fear of the Tartars, from sending, as usual, their ships to the herring fishery on the coast of England, and as there was no exportation, forty or fifty of these fish were sold for a shilling, Matthew. Paris, p. 396. It is whimsical enough, that the orders of a Mogul Khan, who reigned on the borders of China, should have lowered the price of herrings in the English market. 29. Return, I shall copy his characteristic or flattering epithets of the different countries of Europe, Furens A.C. Fervens. Ad Arma Germania. Strina Maliti Genitrix et Alumna Francia. Belli Cosa et Audax Hispania, Virtuosa Virus et Class Munita. Fert Elis Anglia, Impetuosis Bellatoribus Referta Alemania. Navalis Dacia, Indomita Italia, Passus Ignara Burgundia, Inquieta. Apulia, Cum Mariscrisi. Adriatici et Tyrrhini Insulus Piraticis. Et Mbctis, Creta, Cypro, 
Sicilia, como siano contra terminis. Insulas, et regio nibis, cruen tahibernia, cum agili willa ya. Palestris Scotia, glacialis Norwegia, sua milectam militium sub. Vexilo crucis destina bunt, and c. Matthew Paris, p. 498. 291, return, he was recalled by the death of Octai, m. 4. Even the poor and frozen regions of the north attracted the arms of the Mughals, Shabani Khan, the brother of the great Batu, led a horde of 15,000 families into the wilds of Siberia, and his descendants reigned at Tobolskoy above three centuries, till the Russian conquest. The spirit of enterprise which pursued the course of the Obi and Yenisei must have led to the discovery of the ICC. After brushing away the monstrous fables of men with dogs' heads and cloven feet, we shall find that, fifteen years after the death of Zingis, the Mughals were informed of the name and manners of the Samoyeds in the neighborhood of the Polar Circle, who dwelt in subterraneous huts, and derived their furs and their food from the sole occupation of hunting. 30. 30, return, see Carpin's relation in Hakluyut, Vol. I. P. 30. The pedigree of the Kuns of Siberia is given by a Bulgazi, part. 8. P. 485-495. Have the Russians found no Tartar chronicles? At Tobolskoy? Asterisk note, asterisk see the account of the Mongol librarian. Bergman, Nomadisk Streferian, Vol. 3p 185, 205, and Remusat, History des Longues Tartars, p 327, and preface to Schmidt, Geschichte der Ostmongolen, M. While China, Syria, and Poland were invaded at the same time by the Mughals and Tartars, the authors of the mighty mischief were content with the knowledge and declaration that their word was the sword of death. Like the first caliphs, the first successors, of Zingis seldom appeared in person at the head of their victorious armies. On the banks of the Onan and Salinga, the royal or underscore golden horde underscore exhibited the contrast of simplicity and greatness of the roasted sheep and mare's milk which composed their banquets, and of a distribution in one day of five hundred. Wagons of gold and silver. The ambassadors and princes of Europe and Asia were compelled to undertake this distant and laborious pilgrimage, and the life and reign of the great dukes of Russia, the kings of Georgia and Armenia, the sultans of Iconium, and the emirs of Persia, were decided by the frown or smile of the great Khan. The sons and grandsons of Zingis had been accustomed to the pastoral life, but the village of Karakorum 31 was gradually ennobled by their election and residence. A change of manners is implied in the removal of Octai and Mangu from a tent to a house, and their example was imitated by the princes of their family and the great officers of the empire. Instead of the boundless forest, the enclosure of a park afforded the more indolent pleasures of the chase, their new habitations were decorated with painting and sculpture, their superfluous treasures were cast in fountains and basins and statues of massy silver, and the artists of China and Paris vied with each other in the service of the great Khan. 
32 Karakoram contained. Two streets, the one of Chinese mechanics, the other of Mahometan. Traders, and the places of religious worship, one Nestorian. Church, two mosques, and twelve temples of various idols, may represent in some degree the number and division of inhabitants. Yet a French missionary declares that the town of Street Denis near Paris was more considerable than the Tartar capital, and that the whole palace of Mangu was scarcely equal to a tenth part of that Benedictine Abbey. The conquests of Russia and Syria might amuse the vanity of the great Khans, but they were seated. On the borders of China, the acquisition of that empire was the nearest and most interesting object, and they might learn from their pastoral economy, that it is for the advantage of the shepherd to protect and propagate his flock. I have already celebrated the wisdom and virtue of a Mandarin who prevented the desolation of five populous and cultivated provinces. In a spotless administration of thirty years, this friend of his country and of mankind continually labored to mitigate, or suspend, the havoc of war, to save the monuments, and to rekindle the flame of science, to restrain the military commander by the restoration of civil magistrates, and to instill the love of peace and justice into the minds of the Mughals. He struggled with the barbarism of the first conquerors, but his salutary lessons produced a rich harvest in the second generation. 321 they Northern, and by degrees the Southern, Empire acquiesced in the government of Kublai, the lieutenant, and afterwards the successor of Mangu, and the nation was loyal to a prince who had been educated in the manners of China. He restored the forms of her venerable constitution, and the victors submitted to the laws, the fashions, and even the prejudices, of the vanquished people. This peaceful triumph, which has been more than once repeated, may be ascribed, in a great measure, to the numbers and servitude of the Chinese. The Mughal army was dissolved in a vast and populous country, and their emperors adopted with pleasure a political system which gives to the prince the solid substance of despotism, and leaves to the subject the empty names of philosophy, freedom, and filial obedience. 322 Under the reign of Kublai, letters and commerce, peace and justice, were restored. The Great Canal, of 500 miles, was opened from Nanking to the capital, he fixed his residence at Peking, and displayed in his court the magnificence of the greatest monarch of Asia. Yet, this learned prince declined from the pure and simple religion of his great ancestor, he sacrificed to the idol Fo, and his blind attachment to the Lamas of Thibet and the Bonzas of China 33 provoked the censure of the disciples of Confucius. His successors polluted the palace with a crowd of eunuchs, physicians, and astrologers, while thirteen millions of their subjects were consumed in the provinces by famine. One hundred and forty years after the death of Zingis, his degenerate race, the dynasty of the Yuan, was expelled by a revolt of the native Chinese, and the Mughal emperors were lost in the oblivion of the desert. Before this revolution, they had forfeited their supremacy over the dependent branches of their house, 
the Khans of Kipsak and Russia, the Khans of Zagatai, or Transoxiana, and the Khans of Iran or Persia. By their distance and power, these royal lieutenants had soon been released from the duties of obedience, and after the death of Kublai, they scorned to accept a scepter or a title from his unworthy successors. According to their respective situations, they maintained the simplicity of the pastoral life, or assumed the luxury of the cities of Asia. But the princes and their hordes were alike disposed for the reception of a foreign worship. After some hesitation between the Gospel and the Quran, they conformed to the religion of Muhammad. And while they adopted for their brethren the Arabs and Persians, they renounced all intercourse with the ancient Mughals, the idolaters of China. 31. Return, the map of Danville and the Chinese itineraries. Deakins, Tom I, Part 2 p. 57, seem to mark the position of Holon, or Karakoram, about 600 miles to the northwest of Peking. The distance between Selenjinsky and Peking is near 2,000 Russian versts, between 1,300 and 1,400 English miles, Bells. Travels, Vol. 2p67. 32. Return, Rubruquis found at Karakoram his underscore countryman. Guillaume Boucher, or Fevre de Paris underscore, who had executed for the Kuna silver tree supported by four lions, and ejecting four different liquors. A Bulgazi, Part 4 p. 366, mentions the Painters of Kitay or China. 321, Return, see the interesting sketch of the life of this Minister, Yellen Southsai, in the second volume of the second series of Recherches Asiatiques, Para Remusat, p. 64 m. 322, Return, Compare Histoire des Mongols, p. 616 m. 33, Return, The Attachment of the Khans, and the Hatred of the Mandarins, to the Bonzes and Lamas, Du Halt, History de la Chine. Tom. I.P. 502, 503, seems to represent them as the priests of the same god, of the Indian underscore fo underscore, whose worship prevails among the sects of Hindustan Siam, Thibet, China, and Japan. But this Mysterious subject is still lost in a cloud, which the researchers of our Asiatic society may gradually dispel. Chapter LXIV, Mughals, Ottoman Turks, Part 3 In this shipwreck of nations, some surprise may be excited by the escape of the Roman Empire, whose relics, at the time of the Mughal invasion, were dismembered by the Greeks and Latins. Less potent than Alexander, they were pressed, like the Macedonian, both in Europe and Asia, by the shepherds of Scythia, and had the Tartars undertaken the siege, Constantinople must have yielded to the fate of Peking, Samarkand, and Baghdad. The Glorious End Voluntary retreat of Batu from the Danube was insulted by the vain triumph of the Franks and Greeks, 34 and in a second. Expedition death surprised him in full march to attack the capital of the Xars. His brother Borga carried the Tartar arms into Bulgaria and Thrace, but he was diverted from the Byzantine. War by a visit to Novogorod, in the 57th degree of latitude, 
where he numbered the inhabitants and regulated the tributes of Russia. The Mughal Khan formed an alliance with the Mamluks against his brethren of Persia, 300,000. Horse penetrated through the gates of Durband, and the Greeks might rejoice in the first example of domestic war. After the recovery of Constantinople, Michael Palologus, 35 at a distance from his court and army, was surprised and surrounded in a Thracian castle by 20,000 Tartars. But the object of their march was of private interest, they came to the deliverance of Azadan, the Turkish Sultan, and were content with his person and the treasure of the Emperor. Their general Noga, whose name is perpetuated in the hordes of Astrakhan, raised a formidable rebellion against Mengo Timur, the third of the Khans of Kipzak. Obtained in marriage Maria, the natural daughter of Palologus, and guarded the dominions of his friend and father. The subsequent invasions of a Scythian caste were those of outlaws and fugitives, and some thousands of Alani and Comans, who had been driven from their native seats, were reclaimed from a vagrant life, and enlisted in the service of the empire. Such was the influence in Europe of the invasion of the Mughals. The first terror of their arms secured, rather than disturbed, the peace of the Roman Asia. The Sultan of Iconium solicited a personal interview with John Vadasis, and his artful policy encouraged the Turks to defend their barrier against the common enemy. 36 That barrier indeed was soon overthrown, and the servitude and ruin of the Seljukians exposed the nakedness of the Greeks. The formidable Holagur threatened to march to Constantinople at the head of 400,000 men, and the groundless panic of the citizens of Nice will present an image of the terror which he had inspired. The accident of a procession, and the sound of a doleful litany, from the fury of the Tartars, good lord, deliver us, had scattered the hasty report of an assault and massacre. In the blind credulity of fear, the streets of Nice were crowded, with thousands of both sexes, who knew not from what or to whom. They fled and some hours elapsed before the firmness of the military officers could relieve the city from this imaginary foe. But the ambition of Halaguo and his successors was fortunately diverted by the conquest of Baghdad, and a long vicissitude of Syrian wars, their hostility to the Moslems inclined them to unite with the Greeks and Franks, 37 and their generosity or contempt had offered the kingdom of Anatolia as the reward of an Armenian vassal. The fragments of the Seljukian monarchy were disputed by the emirs who had occupied the cities or the mountains, but they all confessed the supremacy of the Khans of Persia, and he often interposed his authority and sometimes his arms, to check their depredations, and to preserve the peace and balance of his Turkish frontier. The death of Kazan, 38 one of the greatest and most accomplished princes of the house of Zingis, removed this salutary control, and the decline of the Mughals gave a free scope to the rise and progress of the Ottoman. Empire. 39. 34. Return, some repulse of the Mughals in Hungary, Matthew. Paris, p. 545, 546, might propagate and color the report of the 
Union and Victory of the Kings of the Franks on the Confines of Bulgaria A Bulfaragius, Dynast p. 310, after 40 years Beyond the Tigris, might be easily deceived 35, Return, C. Pachimer, L3 C. 25, and L9 C. 26, 27 and the false alarm at Nice, L. 3. C. 27. Nice Foris Gregoras. L. 4. C. 6. 36. Return, G. Acropolita, P. 36, 37. And I. C. Greg. L. 2. C. 6. L. 4. C. 5. 37. Return, a bull Faragius, who wrote in the year 1284, declares that the Mughals, since the fabulous defeat of Batu, had not attacked either the Franks or Greeks, and of this he is a competent witness. Hayden likewise, the Armenian prince, celebrates their friendship for himself and his nation. 38. Return, Pachimer gives a splendid character of Kazan Khan. The rival of Cyrus and Alexander, L. 12 C. 1. In the conclusion of his history, L. 13 C. 36, he underscore hopes underscore much from the arrival of 30,000 Tochars, or Tartars, who were ordered by the successor of Kazan to restrain the Turks of Bithynia, A.D. 1308. 39. Return, the origin of the Ottoman dynasty is illustrated by the critical learning of Millimeter. D. Gaines, Historie des Huns, Tom 4. p. 329-337, and Danville, Empire Turk, p. 1422-2. 2. Inhabitants of Paris, from whom the Orientals may learn the history and geography of their own country. Asterisk note, they may be still more enlightened by the Geschichte des Osman Reichs, by M. von Hammer Pergstahl of Vienna, M. After the retreat of Zingis, the Sultan Jalaluddin of Karizmay had returned from India to the possession and defense of his Persian kingdoms. In the space of eleven years, that hero fought in person fourteen battles, and such was his activity, that he led his cavalry in seventeen days from Teflis to Kerman, a march of a thousand miles. Yet he was oppressed by the jealousy of the Moslem princes, and the innumerable armies of the Mughals, and after his last defeat, Jalaluddin perished ignobly in the mountains of Sea or Distan. His death dissolved a veteran and adventurous army, which included under the name of Karizmians or Khorismans many Turkmen hordes, that had attached themselves to the Sultan's fortune. The bolder and more powerful chiefs invaded Syria, and violated the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, the more humble engaged in the service of Aladdin, Sultan of Iconium, and among these were the obscure fathers of the Ottoman line. They had formerly pitched their tents near the southern banks of the Oxus, in the plains of Mahan and Nisa, and it is somewhat remarkable, that the same spot should have produced the first authors of the Parthian and Turkish empires. At the head, or in the rear, of a Charismian army, Solomon Shah was drowned in the passage of the Euphrates, his son Orthogrel became the soldier and subject of Aladdin, and established at Surgut, on the banks of 
the Sangar, a camp of four hundred families or tents, whom he governed fifty-two years both in peace and war. He was the father of Thaman, or Athman, whose Turkish name has been melted into the appellation of the Caliph Othman, and if we describe that pastoral chief as a shepherd and a robber, we must separate from those characters all idea of ignominy and baseness. Othman possessed, and perhaps surpassed, the ordinary virtues of a soldier, and the circumstances of time and place were propitious to his independence and success. The Seljukian dynasty was no more, and the distance and decline of the Mughal Khans soon enfranchised him from the control of a superior. He was situate on the verge of the Greek Empire, the Quran sanctified his underscore gazi underscore or holy war, against the infidels, and their political errors unlocked the passes of Mount Olympus, and invited him to descend into the plains of Bithynia. Till the reign of Palologus, these passes had been vigilantly guarded by the militia of the country, who were repaid by their own safety and an exemption from taxes. The emperor abolished their privilege and assumed their office, but the tribute was rigorously collected, the custody of the passes was neglected, and the hardy mountaineers degenerated into a trembling crowd of peasants. Without spirit or discipline, it was on the 27th of July, in the year 1299 of the Christian Ra, that Othman first invaded the territory of Nicomedia, 40 and the singular accuracy of the date seems to disclose some foresight of the rapid and destructive growth of the monster. The annals of the 27 years of his reign would exhibit a repetition of the same inroads, and his hereditary troops were multiplied in each campaign by the accession of captives and volunteers. Instead of retreating to the hills, he maintained the most useful and defensive posts, fortified the towns and castles, which he had first pillaged, and renounced the pastoral life for the baths and palaces of his infant capitals. But it was not till Othman was oppressed by age and infirmities, that he received the welcome news of the conquest of Prusa, which had been surrendered by famine or treachery to the arms of his son Orshan. The glory of Othman is chiefly founded on that of his descendants, but the Turks have transcribed or composed a royal testament of his last Councils of Justice and Moderation 41 40, Return, C. Pachimer, LXC 25, 26, L13 C 33, 34 36, and Concerning the Guard of the Mountains, LIC 36 Nice Forus Gregoras, L7 C. L, and the First Book of Leonice used chalcondyles, the Athenian. 41. Return, I am ignorant whether the Turks have any writers older than Muhammad II, asterisk nor can I reach beyond a meager. Chronicle, Annals Turchichi ad Annum 1550, translated by John Gaudier, and published by Leon Clavius, ad Calcium Laonic. Calcand. p. 311-350, with copious pandex, or commentaries. The History of the Growth and Decay, A.D. 1316-83, of the Othman Empire was translated into English from the Latin Ms. of Demetrius Cantamir, 
Prince of Moldavia, London, 1734, in folio. The author is guilty of strange blunders in Oriental history, but he was conversant with the language, the annals, and institutions of the Turks. Kantamir partly draws his materials from the Synopsis of Sadi Effendi of Larissa, dedicated in the year 1696 to Sultan Mustafa, and a valuable abridgment of the original. Historians In one of the Ramblers, Dr. Johnson praises Nollis. A General History of the Turks to the Present Year London 1603, as the first of historians, unhappy only in the choice of his subject. Yet I much doubt whether a partial and verbose compilation from Latin writers, 1300 folio pages of speeches and battles, can either instruct or amuse an enlightened age, which requires from the historian some tincture of Philosophy and Criticism Note, asterisk we could have wished that M. Von Hammer had given a more clear and distinct reply to this. Question of Gibbon In a note, Vol. I. P. 630 M. Von Hammer Shows that they had not only sheikhs, religious writers, and learned lawyers, but poets and authors on medicine. But the inquiry of Gibbon obviously refers to historians. The oldest of their historical works, of which V. Hammer makes use, is the Tariki Oskik Pasha Said, i.e. the history of the great grandson of Oskik Pasha, who was a dervis and celebrated Ascetic poet in the reign of Murad, A. Murath, I. Ahmed, the author of the work, lived during the reign of Bajazet II, but, he says, derived much information from the book of Skeek Jakshi, the son of Elias, who was imam to Sultan Orshan, the second Ottoman king, and who related, from the lips of his father, the Circumstances of the Earliest Ottoman History This book, having searched for it in vain for five and twenty years, our author found at length in the Vatican all the other Turkish histories on his list, as indeed this, were underscore written underscore during the reign of Muhammad II it does not appear whether any of the rest cite earlier authorities of equal value with that claimed by the Tariki Oskik Pasha Said. M. In Quarterly Review, Vol. Slicks. p. 292. From the conquest of Prusa, we may date the true Ra of the Ottoman Empire. The lives and possessions of the Christian Subjects were redeemed by a tribute or ransom of 30,000 crowns of gold, and the city, by the labors of Orshan, assumed the aspect of a Mohammedan capital, Prusa was decorated with a mosque, a college, and a hospital, of royal foundation, the Seljukian coin was changed for the name and impression of the new dynasty, and the most skillful professors of human and divine knowledge attracted the Persian and Arabian students from the ancient schools of Oriental learning. The office of vizier was instituted for Aladdin, the brother of Orshan, 411 and a different habit distinguished the citizens from the peasants, the Moslems, from the infidels. All the troops of Othman had consisted of loose squadrons of Turkmen cavalry, who served without pay and fought without discipline, but a regular body of infantry was 
first established and trained by the prudence of his son. A great number of volunteers was enrolled with a small stipend, but with the permission of living at home, unless they were summoned to the field, their rude manners, and seditious temper, disposed Orshan to educate his young captives as his soldiers and those of the Prophet, but the Turkish peasants were still allowed to mount on horseback, and follow his standard, with the appellation end. The hopes of underscore freebooters underscore 412 by these arts he formed an army of 25,000 Moslems, a train of battering engines was framed for the use of sieges, and the first successful experiment was made on the cities of Nice and Nicomedia. Orshan granted a safe conduct to all who were desirous of departing with their families and effects, but the widows of the slain were given in marriage to the conquerors, and the sacrilegious plunder, the books, the vases, and the images, were sold or ransomed at Constantinople. The Emperor Andronic used the younger was vanquished and wounded by the son of Othman, 42-421 he subdued the whole province or kingdom of Bithynia, as far as the shores of the Bosphorus and Hellespont, and the Christians confessed the justice and clemency of a reign which claimed the voluntary attachment of the Turks of Asia. Yet Orshan was content with the modest title of Emir, and in the list of his compeers, the Princes of Rum or Anatolia, 43 his military forces were surpassed by the Emirs of Germian and Caramania, each of whom could bring into the field an army of 40,000 men. Their domains were situate in the heart of the Seljukian kingdom, but the holy warriors, though of inferior note, who formed new principalities on the Greek Empire, are more conspicuous in the light of history. The maritime country from the Propontis to the Maunder and the Isle of Rhodes, so long threatened and so often pillaged, was finally lost about the thirteenth year of Andronicus the Elder. Forty-four two Turkish chieftains, Sarukun and Aden, left their names to their conquests, and their conquests to their posterity. The captivity or ruin of the underscore seven underscore churches of Asia was consummated, and the barbarous lords of Ionia and Lydia still trample on the monuments of classic and Christian antiquity. In the loss of Ephesus, the Christians deplored the fall of the first angel, the extinction of the first candlestick. Of the Revelations, 45 the desolation is complete, and the temple of Diana, or the Church of Mary, will equally elude the search of the curious traveler, the circus and three stately theatres of Laodicea are now peopled with wolves and foxes, Sothes is reduced to a miserable village, the god of Muhammad, without a rival or a son, is invoked in the mosques of Thyatira and Pergamus, and the populousness of Smyrna is supported by the foreign trade of the Franks and Armenians. Philadelphia alone has been saved by prophecy, or courage, at a distance from the sea, forgotten by the emperors, encompassed on all sides by the Turks, her valiant citizens defended their religion and freedom above fourscore years, and at length capitulated with the proudest of the Ottomans. Among the Greek colonies and churches of Asia, Philadelphia is still erect, a column in a scene of ruins, a 
pleasing example, that the paths of honor and safety may sometimes be the same. The servitude of Rhodes was delayed about two centuries by the establishment of the Knights of Street. John of Jerusalem, 46 under the discipline of the Order, that island emerged into fame and opulence, the noble and warlike monks were renowned by land and sea, and the bulwark of Christendom provoked, and repelled, the arms of the Turks and Saracens. 411, Return, Von Hammer, OSM Geschicht, Vol. I. P. 82 M. 412, Return, Ibid P. 91 M. 42, Return, Ken Takuzin, though he relates the battle end. Heroic flight of the younger Andronicus, L2C 6, 7, 8. Dissembles by his silence the loss of Prusa, Nice, and Nicomedia. Which are fairly confessed by Nice Foris Gregoras, L815. 9, 9, 13, 11. 6. It appears that Nice was taken by Orshin in 1330, and Nicomedia in 1339, which are somewhat different from the Turkish dates. 421, return, for the conquests of Orshin over the ten Pachaliks, or kingdoms of the Seljukians, in Asia Minor. CV. Hammer, Vol. IP 112 M 43 return the partition of the Turkish emirs is extracted from two contemporaries the Greek Nisphorus Gregoras L 7 1 and the Arabian Marakskit Deakins Tom 2 P 2 P 76 77 See likewise the first book of Leonice used Chalcondyles. 44, Return, Pachimer, L. 13 C. 13. 45, Return, See the travels of Wheeler and Spawn, of Pocock and Chandler, and more particularly Smith's survey of the seven churches of Asia, p. 205-276. The more pious antiquaries labor to reconcile the promises and threats of the author of the revelations with the underscore present underscore state of the seven cities. Perhaps it would be more prudent to confine his predictions to the characters and events of his own times. 46. Return, consult the Ivith book of the Histoire de l'Ordre d. Mouth, P A R L Abbe di Verto. That pleasing writer betrays his ignorance, in supposing that Othman, a freebooter of the Bithynian hills, could besiege Rhodes by sea and land. The Greeks, by their intestine divisions, were the authors of their final ruin. During the civil wars of the elder and younger Andronicus, the son of Othman achieved, almost without resistance, the conquest of Bithynia, and the same disorders encouraged the Turkish emirs of Lydia and Ionia to build a fleet and to pillage the adjacent islands and the sea coast of Europe. In the defense of his life and honor, Ken Takuzin was tempted to prevent, or imitate, his adversaries, by calling to his aid the public enemies of his religion and country. Amir, the son of Aden, concealed under a Turkish garb the humanity and politeness of a Greek, he was united with the great domestic by mutual esteem and reciprocal services, and their friendship is compared in the vain rhetoric of the times, to the perfect union of Orestes and Pilates. 
47 on the report of the danger of his friend, who was persecuted by an ungrateful court, the prince of Ionia assembled at Smyrna a fleet of 300 vessels, with an army of 29,000 men, sailed in the depth of winter, and cast anchor at the mouth of the Hebrus. From thence, with a chosen band of 2,000 Turks, he marched along the banks of the river, and rescued the Empress, who was besieged in Demotica by the wild Bulgarians. At that disastrous moment, the life or death of his beloved Cantacuzene was concealed by his flight into Servia, but the grateful Irene, impatient to behold her deliverer, invited him to enter the city, and accompanied her message with a present of rich apparel and a hundred horses. By a peculiar strain of delicacy, the gentle barbarian refused, in the absence of an unfortunate friend, to visit his wife, or to taste the luxuries of the palace, sustained in his tent the rigor of the winter, and rejected the hospitable gift, that he might share the hardships of two thousand companions, all as deserving as himself of that honor and distinction. Necessity and revenge might justify his predatory excursions by sea and land, he left 9,500 men for the guard of his fleet, and persevered in the fruitless search of Cantacuzene, till his embarkation was hastened by a fictitious letter, the severity of the season, the clamors of his independent troops, and the weight of his spoil and captives. In the prosecution of the civil war, the prince of Ionia twice returned to Europe, joined his arms with those of the emperor, besieged Thessalonica, and threatened Constantinople. Calumny might affix some reproach on his imperfect aid, his hasty departure, and a bribe of ten thousand crowns, which he accepted from the Byzantine court, but his friend was satisfied, and the conduct of Amir is excused by the more sacred duty of defending against the Latins his hereditary dominions. The maritime power of the Turks had united the Pope, the King of Cyprus, the Republic of Venice, and the Order of Street. John, in a laudable crusade, their galleys invaded the coast of Ionia, and Amir was slain with an arrow, in the attempt to rest from the Rhodian Knights the citadel of Smyrna. 48 Before his death, he generously recommended another ally of his own nation, not more sincere or zealous than himself, but more able to afford a prompt and powerful succor, by his situation along the Propontis and in the front of Constantinople. By the prospect of a more advantageous treaty, the Turkish prince of Bithynia was detached from his engagements with Anne of Savoy, and the pride of Orsian dictated the most solemn protestations, that if he could obtain the daughter of Cantacuzene, he would invariably fulfill the duties of a subject and a son. Parental tenderness was Silenced by the voice of ambition, the Greek clergy connived at the marriage of a Christian princess with a sectary of Mohammed. And the father of Theodora describes, with shameful satisfaction, the dishonor of the purple. 49 A body of Turkish cavalry attended the ambassadors, who disembarked from thirty vessels, before his Camp of Esilibria. A stately pavilion was erected, in which the Empress Irene passed the night with her daughters. 
in the morning, Theodora ascended a throne, which was surrounded with curtains of silk and gold, the troops were under arms, but the emperor alone was on horseback. At a signal the curtains were suddenly withdrawn to disclose the bride, or the victim. Encircled by kneeling eunuchs and hymeneal torches, the sound of flutes and trumpets proclaimed the joyful event, and her pretended happiness was the theme of the nuptial song, which was chanted by such poets as the age could produce. Without the rites of the church, Theodora was delivered to her barbarous lord, but it had been stipulated that she should preserve her religion in the harem of Bursa, and her father celebrates her charity and devotion in this ambiguous situation. After his peaceful establishment on the throne of Constantinople, the Greek emperor visited his Turkish ally, who with four sons, by various wives, expected him at Scutari, on the Asiatic shore. The two princes partook, with seeming cordiality, of the pleasures of the banquet and the chase, and Theodora was permitted to repass the Bosphorus, and to enjoy some days in the society of her mother. But the friendship of Orsian was subservient to his religion and interest, and in the Genoese war he joined without a blush the enemies of Cantacuzene. 47. Return, Nisphorus Gregoras has expatiated with pleasure on this amiable character, L127, 13 4, 10, 14 1, 9, 16. 6. Cantacuzene speaks with honor and esteem of his ally, L. 3C, 56, 57, 63, 64, 66, 67, 68, 86, 89, 95, 96, but he seems ignorant of his own sentimental passion for the Turks, and indirectly denies the possibility of such unnatural friendship. L. 4C 40 48, return, after the conquest of Smyrna by the Latins, the defense of this fortress was imposed by Pope Gregory XI. On the Knights of Rhodes, C. Verto, L.V. 49, return, C. Cantacuzenus, L3 C 95 Nice Forus Gregoras, who, for the light of Mount Thaver, brands the emperor with the names of Tyrant and Herod, excuses, rather than blames this Turkish marriage, and alleges the passion and power of Orshan, Egyudatov, KTH Dunamo, TOUV caught out an HDH Persical V. Turkish, Upper Aran Satrapa V, L. 15. 5. He afterwards celebrates his kingdom and armies. See his reign in Cantamir, p. 2430. In the treaty with the Empress Anne, the Ottoman prince had inserted a singular condition that it should be lawful for him to sell his prisoners at Constantinople, or transport them into Asia. A naked crowd of Christians of both sexes and every age, of priests and monks, of matrons and virgins, was exposed in the public market, the whip was frequently used to quicken the charity of redemption, and the indigent Greeks deplored the fate of their brethren, who were led away to the worst evils of temporal and spiritual bondage. 50 Cantacuzene was reduced to subscribe the same terms, and their execution must have been still more pernicious to the empire, 
a body of 10,000 Turks, had been detached to the assistance of the Empress Anne, but the entire forces of Orshan were exerted in the service of his father. Yet these calamities were of a transient nature, as soon as the storm had passed away, the fugitives might return to their habitations, and at the conclusion of the civil and foreign wars, Europe was completely evacuated by the Moslems of Asia. It was in his last quarrel with his pupil that Cantacuzene inflicted the deep and deadly wound, which could never be healed by his successors, and which is poorly expiated by his theological dialogues against the Prophet Muhammad. Ignorant of their own history, the modern Turks confound their first and their final passage of the Hellespont, 51 and describe the son of Orshan as a nocturnal robber, who, with 80 companions, explores by stratagem a hostile and unknown shore. Solomon, at the head of 10,000 horse, was transported in the vessels, and entertained as the friend of the Greek emperor. In the civil wars of Romania, he performed some service and perpetrated more mischief, but the Chersen ESUs was insensibly filled with a Turkish colony, and the Byzantine court solicited in vain the restitution of the fortresses of Thrace. After some artful delays between the Ottoman prince and his son, their ransom was valued at 60,000 crowns, and the first payment had been made when an earthquake shook the walls and cities of the provinces. The dismantled places were occupied by the Turks, and Gallipoli, the key of the Hellespont, was rebuilt and repeopled by the policy of Solomon. The abdication of Cantacuzene dissolved the feeble bands of domestic alliance, and his last advice admonished his countrymen to decline a rash contest, and to compare their own weakness with the numbers and valor, the discipline and enthusiasm, of the Moslems. His prudent counsels were despised by the headstrong vanity of youth, and soon justified by the victories of the Ottomans. But as he practiced in the field the exercise of the underscore Jared underscore, Solomon was killed by a fall from his horse, and the aged Orshan wept and expired on the tomb of his valiant son. 511. 50. Return, the most lively and concise picture of this captivity may be found in the history of Ducas, c. 8, who fairly describes what Ken Takuzine confesses with a guilty blush. 51. Return, in this passage, and the first conquests in Europe. Cantamir, p. 27, and c. gives a miserable idea of his Turkish guides, nor am I much better satisfied with Chalcondyles, li. p. 12, and c. They forget to consult the most authentic record, the Ivith Book of Cantacuzene. I likewise regret the last books, which are still manuscript, of Nisphorus Gregoras. Asterisk note, Von Hammer excuses the silence with which the Turkish historians pass over the earlier intercourse of the Ottomans with the European continent, of which he enumerates sixteen different occasions, as if they disdained those peaceful incursions by which they gained no conquest, and established no permanent footing on the Byzantine territory. Of the romantic account of Solomon's first expedition, he says, as yet the prose of history had not 
asserted its right over the poetry of tradition. This defense would scarcely be accepted as satisfactory by the historian of The Decline and Fall, M. In Quarterly Review, Vol. Slix p. 293. 511, Return, in the 75th year of his age, the 35th of his Reign. V. Hammer. M. Chapter LXIV, Mughals, Ottoman Turks, Part 4. But the Greeks had not time to rejoice in the death of their enemies, and the Turkish scimitar was wielded with the same spirit. By Amurath I, the son of Orshan, and the brother of Solomon. By the pale and fainting light of the Byzantine annals. 52 We can discern, that he subdued without resistance the whole province of Romania or Thrace, from the Hellespont to Mount Hamas, and the verge of the capital, and that Adrianople was chosen for the royal seat of his government and religion in Europe. Constantinople, whose decline is almost coeval with her foundation, had often, in the lapse of a thousand years, been assaulted by the barbarians of the East and West, but never till this fatal hour had the Greeks been surrounded, both in Asia and Europe, by the arms of the same hostile monarchy. Yet they prudence or generosity of Amurath postponed for a while this easy conquest, and his pride was satisfied with the frequent end. Humble attendance of the Emperor John Palologus and his four sons, who followed at his summons the court and camp of the Ottoman prince. He marched against the Sclavonian nations between the Danube and the Adriatic, the Bulgarians, Servians, Bosnians, and Albanians, and these warlike tribes, who had so often insulted the majesty of the empire, were repeatedly broken by his destructive inroads. Their countries did not abound either in gold or silver, nor were their rustic hamlets and townships enriched by commerce or decorated by the arts of luxury. But they Natives of the soil have been distinguished in every age by their hardiness of mind and body, and they were converted by a prudent institution into the firmest and most faithful supporters of the Ottoman greatness. 53 The vizier of Amurath reminded his sovereign that, according to the Mohammedan law, he was entitled to a fifth part of the spoil and captives, and that the duty might easily be levied, if vigilant officers were stationed in Gallipoli, to watch the passage, and to select for his use the stoutest and most beautiful of the Christian youth. The advice was followed, the edict was proclaimed, many thousands of the European captives were educated in religion and arms, and the new militia was consecrated and named by a celebrated dervis. Standing in the front of their ranks, he stretched the sleeve of his gown over the head of the foremost soldier, and his blessing was delivered in these words, let them be called Yanizaris. Underscore Yenji Shari underscore or new soldiers, may their countenance be ever bright, their hand victorious, their sword keen, may their spear always hang over the heads of their enemies, and wheresoever they go, may they return with a underscore white face, underscore 54 541 such was the origin of these haughty troops, the terror of the nations, and sometimes of the sultans themselves. Their valor has declined. 
their discipline is relaxed, and their tumult uare array is incapable of contending with the order and weapons of modern tactics, but at the time of their institution, they possessed a decisive superiority in war, since a regular body of infantry, in constant exercise and pay, was not maintained by any of the princes of Christendom. The Yanizaris fought with the zeal of proselytes against their underscore idolatrous underscore countrymen, and in the Battle of Kosova, the League and Independence of the Sclavonian tribes was finally crushed. As the conqueror walked over the field, he observed that the greatest part of the slain consisted of beardless youths, and listened to the flattering reply of his vizier, that age and wisdom would have taught them not to oppose his irresistible arms. But the sword of his Yanizaris could not defend him from the dagger of despair, a Servian soldier started from the crowd of dead bodies, and Amurath was pierced in the belly with a mortal wound. 542 The grandson of Othman was mild in his temper, modest in his apparel, and a lover of learning and virtue but the Moslems were scandalized at his absence from public worship, and he was corrected by the firmness of the Mufti, who dared to reject his testimony in a civil cause, a mixture of servitude and freedom not unfrequent in Oriental history. 55. 52. Return, after the conclusion of Cantacuzene and Gregoras. There follows a dark interval of a hundred years. George Franza, Michael Dukas, and Leonice used Chalcondyles, all three wrote after the taking of Constantinople. 53. Return, see Cantamir, p. 3741, with his own large end. Curious Annotations. 54. Return underscore white underscore and underscore black underscore face are common and proverbial expressions of praise and reproach in the Turkish language. Heek underscore Niger underscore EST, hunk Tuesday Romain Caveto, was likewise a Latin sentence. 541, return, according to Von Hammer, Vol I P 90, Gibbon and the European writers assign too late a date to this enrollment of the Yanizaris. It took place not in the reign of Amurath, but in that of his predecessor Orshan M. 542, return, Ducas has related this as a deliberate act of self-devotion on the part of a Servian noble who pretended to desert and stabbed Amurath during a conference which he had requested. The Italian translator of Ducas, published by Becker, in the new edition of the Byzantines, has still further heightened the romance. See likewise in von Hammer, Osmanisk, Geschicht, Vol. I. P. 138, the popular Servian account, which resembles that of Ducas, and may have been the source of that of his Italian translator. The Turkish account agrees more nearly with Gibbon, but the Servian, Milos Kohilovis, while he lay among the heap of the dead, pretended to have some secret to impart to Amurath, and stabbed him while he leaned over to Listen M. 55, Return, See the Life and Death of Morad, or Amurath I, in Cantamir, p. 3345, the first book of Chalcondyles, and the Annals Terchici of Leon Clavius. According to another story, 
Thay. Sultan was stabbed by a Croat in his tent, and this accident was alleged to Busbequius, Epist IP 98, as an excuse for the unworthy precaution of pinioning, as if were, between two attendants, an ambassador's arms, when he is introduced to the royal presence. The character of Bajazet, the son and successor of Amurath, is strongly expressed in his surname of underscore Elder Rim underscore, or the lightning. And he might glory in an epithet, which was drawn from the fiery energy of his soul and the rapidity of his destructive march. In the fourteen years of his reign, fifty-six he incessantly moved at the head of his armies, from Bursa to Adrianople, from the Danube to the Euphrates, and, though he strenuously labored for the propagation of the law, he invaded, with impartial ambition, the Christian and Mohammedan princes of Europe and Asia. From Angora to Amasia and Erzurum, the northern regions of Anatolia were Reduced to his obedience, he stripped of their hereditary possessions his brother Amirs of Germian and Karamania, of Aden and Saru Khan, and after the conquest of Iconium the ancient kingdom of the Seljukians again revived in the Ottoman dynasty. Nor were the conquests of Bajazet less rapid or important in Europe. No sooner had he imposed a regular form of servitude on the Servians and Bulgarians, than he passed the Danube to seek new enemies and new subjects in the heart of Moldavia. 57. Whatever yet adhered to the Greek Empire in Thrace, Macedonia, and Thessaly, acknowledged a Turkish master, an obsequious bishop led him through the gates of Thermopyl into Greece, and we may observe, as a singular fact, that the widow of a Spanish chief, who possessed the ancient seat of the Oracle of Delphi, deserved his favor by the sacrifice of a beauteous daughter. The Turkish communication between Europe and Asia had been dangerous and doubtful, Till he stationed at Gallipoli a fleet of galleys, to command the Hellespont and intercept the Latin succors of Constantinople. While the monarch indulged his passions in a boundless range of injustice and cruelty, he imposed on his soldiers the most rigid laws of modesty and abstinence, and they Harvest was peaceably reaped and sold within the precincts of his camp. Provoked by the loose and corrupt administration of justice, he collected in a house the judges and lawyers of his dominions, who expected that in a few moments the fire would be kindled to reduce them to ashes. His ministers trembled in silence, but an Thiopian buffoon presumed to insinuate the true cause of the evil, and future venality was left without excuse. By annexing an adequate salary to the office of Caddy. 58 The humble title of Amir was no longer suitable to the Ottoman greatness, and Bajazet condescended to accept a patent of Sultan from the caliphs who served in Egypt under the yoke of the Mamelukes, 59 a last and frivolous homage that was yielded by force to opinion, by the Turkish conquerors to the house of Abbas and the successors of the Arabian prophet. The ambition of the Sultan was inflamed by the obligation of deserving this august title and he turned his arms against the Kingdom of Hungary, the perpetual theatre of the Turkish victories and defeats. Sigismond, the Hungarian king, was the son and brother of the 
emperors of the West, his cause was that of Europe and the Church, and, on the report of his danger, the bravest knights of France and Germany were eager to march under his standard and that of the cross. In the Battle of Nicopolis, Bajazet defeated a Confederate army of a hundred thousand Christians, who had proudly boasted that if the sky should fall, they could uphold it on their lances. The far greater part were slain or driven into the Danube and Sigismond, escaping to Constantinople by the river and the Black Sea, returned after a long circuit to his exhausted kingdom. Sixty in the pride of victory, Bajazet threatened that he would besiege Buddha, that he would subdue the adjacent countries of Germany and Italy, and that he would feed his horse with a bushel of oats on the altar of street. Peter at Rome. His progress was checked, not by the miraculous interposition of the apostle, not by a crusade of the Christian powers, but by a long and painful fit of the gout. The disorders of the moral are sometimes corrected by those of the physical world and an Acrimonious humor falling on a single fiber of one man, may prevent or suspend the misery of nations. 56. Return, the reign of Bajazet I, or Ilder Rimbayazid, is contained in Cantamir, p. 46, the id book of Chalcondyles, and the annals Turchichi. The surname of Ilderim, or Lightning, is an Example, that the conquerors and poets of every age have underscore felt underscore the truth of a system which derives the sublime from the principle of terror. 57. Return, Cantamir, who celebrates the victories of the great Stephen over the Turks, p. 47, had composed the ancient end modern state of his principality of Moldavia, which has been long promised, and is still unpublished. 58. Return, Leonclav. Annal. Turchichi, p. 318-319. The venality of the caddies has long been an object of scandal and satire, and if we distrust the observations of our travelers, we may consult the feeling of the Turks themselves, Deherbalus, Bibliot. Orintal, p. 216, 217, 229, 230. 59. Return, the fact, which is attested by the Arabic history of Ben Skauna a contemporary Syrian, Degin's History Day. Huns. Tom. 4p 336, destroys the testimony of Saad Effendi. And Cantamir, p 14, 15, of the election of Othman to the dignity of Sultan. 60, return, see the decades rerum Hungaricarum, December 3l. 2p 379, of Bonfignus, an Italian, who, in the XVTH century, was invited into Hungary to compose an eloquent history of that kingdom. Yet, if it be extant and accessible, I should give the preference to some homely chronicle of the time and country. Such is the general idea of the Hungarian War but the disastrous adventure of the French has procured us some memorials which illustrate the victory and character of Bajazet. 61 The Duke of Burgundy, sovereign of Flanders, and uncle of Charles VI, yielded to the ardor of his son, John Count of Nevers, and they 
Fearless Youth was accompanied by four princes, his underscore cousins underscore, and those of the French monarch. Their inexperience was guided by the sire de Cousy, one of the best and oldest captain of Christendom, 62 but the constable, admiral and marshal of France. 63 commanded an army which did not exceed the number of a thousand knights and squires. 631 These splendid names were they. Source of presumption and the bane of discipline. So many might aspire to command, that none were willing to obey, their national spirit despised both their enemies and their allies, and in the persuasion that badges at underscore would underscore fly, or underscore must underscore fall, they began to compute how soon they should visit Constantinople and deliver the Holy Sepulchre. When their scouts announced the approach of the Turks, the gay and thoughtless youths were at table, already heated with wine, they instantly clasped their armor, mounted their horses, rode full speed to the vanguard, and resented as an affront the advice of Sigismond, which would have deprived them of the right and honor of the foremost attack. The Battle of Nicopolis would not have been lost, if the French would have obeyed the prudence of the Hungarians, but it might have been gloriously won, had the Hungarians imitated the valor of the French. They dispersed the first line, consisting of the troops of Asia, forced a rampart of stakes, which had been planted against the cavalry, broke, after a bloody conflict, they Yanizaris themselves, and were at length overwhelmed by the numerous squadrons that issued from the woods, and charged on all sides this handful of intrepid warriors. In the speed and secrecy of his march, in the order and evolutions of the battle, his enemies felt and admired the military talents of Bajazet. They accuse his cruelty in the use of victory. After reserving the Count of Nevers, and four and twenty lords, 632 whose birth and riches were attested by his Latin interpreters, the remainder of the French captives, who had survived the slaughter of the day, were led before his throne, and, as they refused to abjure there, faith, were successively beheaded in his presence. The Sultan was exasperated by the loss of his bravest Yanizaris, and if it be true, that, on the eve of the engagement, the French had massacred their Turkish prisoners, sixty-four they might impute to themselves the consequences of a just retaliation. 641 A night, whose life had been spared, was permitted to return to Paris, that he might relate the deplorable tale, and solicit the ransom of the noble captives. In the meanwhile, the Count of Nevers, with the princes and barons of France, were dragged along in the marches of the Turkish camp, exposed as a grateful trophy to the Moslems of Europe and Asia, and strictly confined at Bursa, as often as Bajazat resided in his capital. The Sultan was pressed each day to expiate with their blood the blood of his martyrs. But he had pronounced that they should live, and either for mercy or destruction his word was irrevocable. He was assured of their value and importance by the return of the messenger, and the gifts and intercessions of the kings of France and of Cyprus. Lusignan presented him with a gold salt seller of curious workmanship, and of the price of ten thousand ducats, 
and Charles. The sixth dispatched by the way of Hungary a cast of Norwegian hawks, and six horse loads of scarlet cloth, of fine linen of reams, and of Aris tapestry, representing the battles of the great Alexander. After much delay, the effect of distance rather than of art, Bajazet agreed to accept a ransom of two hundred thousand ducats for the Count of Nevers and the surviving princes and barons, the Marshal Boussicault, a famous warrior, was of the number of the fortunate, but the Admiral of France had been slain in battle, and the constable, with the sire de Cousy, died in the prison of Bursa. This heavy demand, which was doubled by incidental costs, fell chiefly on the Duke of Burgundy, or rather, on his Flemish subjects, who were bound by the feudal laws to contribute for the knighthood and captivity of the eldest son of their lord. For the faithful discharge of the debt, some merchants of Genoa gave security to the amount of five times the sum, a lesson to those warlike times, that commerce and credit are the links of the society of nations. It had been stipulated in the treaty that the French captives should swear never to bear arms against the person of their conqueror, but the ungenerous restraint was abolished by Bajazet himself. I despise, said he to the heir of Burgundy, thy oaths and thy arms. Thou art young and mayest be ambitious of effacing the disgrace or misfortune of thy first chivalry. Assemble thy powers, proclaim thy design, and be assured that Bajazet will rejoice to meet thee a second time in a field of battle. Before their departure, they were indulged in the freedom and hospitality of the court of Bursa. The French princes admired the magnificence of the Ottoman, whose hunting and hawking equipage was composed of seven thousand huntsmen and seven thousand falconers, sixty-five in their presence, and at his command, the belly of one of his chamberlains was cut open, on a complaint against him for drinking the goat's milk of a poor woman. The strangers were astonished by this act of justice, but it was the justice of a sultan who disdains to balance the weight of evidence, or to measure the degrees of guilt. 61. Return, I should not complain of the labor of this work, if my materials were always derived from such books as the Chronicle of Honest Fro Isard. Vol. 4 c. 67, 72, 74, 79 83, 85, 87, 89. Who read little, inquired much, and believed all. The original. Memoirs of the Marital de Bussy called, Part E. I. C. 2228, add. Some facts, but they are dry and deficient, if compared with the pleasant garrulity of Fro Isard. 62, Return, an accurate memoir on the life of Ingerin 7. Sire de Cousy, has been given by the Baron de Zerlauben, History. De l'Académie des Inscriptions, Tom. XXV, his rank and possessions were equally considerable in France and England, and in 1375, he led an army of adventurers into Switzerland, to recover a large patrimony which he claimed in right of his grandmother, the daughter of the Emperor Albert I of Austria. Sinner, Voyage dans la Suisse Occidentale, Tom I. P. 118-124. 63. Return, 
that military office, so respectable at present, was still more conspicuous when it was divided between two persons, Daniel, Histoire de la Milice Francoise, Tom 2 p. 5. One of these, the Marshal of the Crusade, was the famous Boussicault, who afterwards defended Constantinople, governed Genoa, invaded the coast of Asia, and died in the field of Azincourt. 631, Return, Daru, History de Venice, Vol 2 p. 104, makes the whole French army amount to 10,000 men, of whom 1,000 were knights. The curious volume of Schildberger, a German of Munich, who was taken prisoner in the battle, edit. Munich, 1813, and which V. Hammer receives as authentic, gives the whole number at 6,000. See Schildberger. Rees and Demorient. And V. Hammer, note. P. 610 M. 632, return, according to Schildberger there were only 12. French lords granted to the prayer of the Duke of Burgundy and Herr Stefan Synther and Johann von Bodum Schildberger p 13 m 64 return for this odious fact the Abbe de Verto quotes the history Anonym D Street Dennis L 16 C 10 11 Ordre de Mouth Tom. 2 p. 310. 641. Return, see Skiltberger's very graphic account of the massacre. He was led out to be slaughtered in cold blood with the rest f the Christian prisoners, amounting to 10,000. He was spared at the intercession of the son of Bajazet, with a few others, on account of their extreme youth. No one under twenty years of age was put to death. The Duke of Burgundy was obliged to be a spectator of this butchery which lasted from early in the morning till four o'clock, p.m. It ceased only at the supplication of the leaders of Bajazet's army. Schildberger p. 14 m. 65, return, Sherfadin Ali, History de Demurbeck, LVC 13. Allows badges at a round number of 12,000 officers and servants of the chase. A part of his spoils was afterwards displayed in a hunting match of Timur, L. Hounds with satin housings, 2. Leopards with collars set with jewels, 3. Grecian greyhounds, and 4. Dogs from Europe, as strong as African lions, item, L6C. 15. Bajazet was particularly fond of flying his hawks at cranes. Chalcondyles, L2P85. After his enfranchisement from an oppressive guardian, John. Palologus remained 36 years, the helpless, and, as it should seem, the careless spectator of the public ruin. 66 Love, or rather lust, was his only vigorous passion, and in the embraces of the wives and virgins of the city, the Turkish slave forgot the dishonor of the emperor of the underscore Romans underscore Andronicus. His eldest son, had formed, at Adrianople, an intimate and guilty friendship with Sazas, the son of Amurath, and the two youths conspired against the authority and lives of their parents. The presence of Amurath in Europe soon discovered and dissipated 
their rash counsels, and, after depriving Sasas of his sight, the Ottoman threatened his vassal with the treatment of an accomplice and an enemy, unless he inflicted a similar punishment on his own son. Palalagas trembled and obeyed, and a cruel precaution involved in the same sentence the childhood end. Innocence of John, the son of the criminal. But the operation was so mildly, or so unskillfully, performed, that the one retained the sight of an eye, and the other was afflicted only with the infirmity of squinting. Thus excluded from the succession, the two princes were confined in the tower of Anima, and the piety of Manuel, the second son of the reigning monarch, was rewarded with the gift of the imperial crown. But at the end of two years, the turbulence of the Latins and the levity of the Greeks produced a revolution, 661 and the two emperors were buried in the tower, from whence the two prisoners were exalted to the throne. Another period of two years afforded Palologus and Manuel the means of escape, it was contrived by the magic or subtlety of a monk, who was alternately named the angel or the devil, they fled to Scutari, their adherents armed in their cause, and the two Byzantine factions displayed the ambition and animosity with which Xar and Pompey had disputed the empire of the world. The Roman world was now contracted to a corner of Thrace, between the Propontis and the Black Sea, about fifty miles in length and thirty in breadth, a space of ground not more extensive than the lesser principalities of Germany or Italy, if the remains of Constantinople had not still represented the wealth and populousness of a kingdom. To restore the public peace, it was found necessary to divide this fragment of the empire, and while Palologus and Manuel were left in possession of the capital, almost all that lay without the walls was ceded to the blind princes, who fixed their residence at Rodisto and Esilibria. In the tranquil slumber of royalty, the passions of John Palologus survived his reason and his strength, he deprived his favorite, an heir of a blooming princess of Trebizond, and while they feeble emperor labored to consummate his nuptials, Manuel, with a hundred of the noblest Greeks, was sent on a peremptory summons to the Ottoman underscore port underscore. They served with honor in the wars of Bajazet, but a plan of fortifying Constantinople excited his jealousy, he threatened their lives, the new works were instantly demolished, and we shall bestow a praise, perhaps above the merit of Palologus, if we impute this last humiliation as the cause of his death. 66. Return, for the reigns of John Palologus and his son Manuel, from 1354 to 1402, C. Ducas, C. 915, Franza, L.I.C. 1621, and the Ist and Id books of Chalcondyles, whose proper subject is drowned in a sea of episode. 661, Return, according to von Hammer it was the power of Bajazet, Vol. I. P. 218. The earliest intelligence of that event was communicated to Manuel, who escaped with speed and secrecy from the palace of Bursa to the Byzantine throne. Bajazet affected a proud indifference at the loss of this valuable pledge, and while he 
pursued his conquests in Europe and Asia, he left the emperor to struggle with his blind cousin John of Essilibria, who, in eight years of civil war, asserted his right of primogeniture. At length, the ambition of the victorious sultan pointed to the conquest of Constantinople, but he listened to the advice of his vizier, who represented that such an enterprise might unite the powers of Christendom in a second and more formidable crusade. His epistle to the emperor was conceived in these words, by the divine clemency, our invincible scimitar has reduced to our obedience almost all Asia, with many and large countries in Europe, excepting only the city of Constantinople, for beyond the walls thou hast nothing left. Resign that city, stipulate thy reward, or tremble, for thyself and thy unhappy people, at the consequences of a rash refusal. But his ambassadors were instructed to soften their tone, and to propose a treaty, which was subscribed with submission and gratitude. A truce of ten years was purchased by an annual tribute of thirty thousand crowns of gold, the Greeks deplored the public toleration of the law of Muhammad, and Bajazet enjoyed the glory of establishing a Turkish caddy, and founding a royal mosque in the metropolis of the Eastern Church. 67 Yet this truce was soon violated by the restless sultan, in the cause of the prince of Essilibria, the lawful emperor, an army of Ottomans again threatened Constantinople, and the distress of Manuel implored the protection of the king of France. His plaintive embassy obtained much pity and some relief, and the conduct of the succor was entrusted to the Marshal Bussy called 68 whose religious chivalry was inflamed by the desire of revenging his captivity on the infidels. He sailed with four ships of war, from Aigues-Mortes to the Hellespont, forced the passage, which was guarded by 17 Turkish galleys, landed at Constantinople a supply of 600 men at arms and 1600 archers, and reviewed them in the adjacent plain, without condescending to number or array the multitude of Greeks. By his presence, the blockade was raised both by sea and land, the flying squadrons of Bajazet were driven to a more respectful distance, and several castles in Europe and Asia were stormed by the emperor and the marshal, who fought with equal valor by each other's side. But the Ottomans soon returned with an increase of numbers, and the intrepid Boussicault, after a year's struggle, resolved to evacuate a country which could no longer afford either pay or provisions for his soldiers. The marshal offered to conduct Manuel to the French court, where he might solicit in person a supply of men and money, and advised, in the meanwhile, that, to extinguish all domestic discord, he should leave his blind competitor on the throne. The proposal was embraced, the prince of Essilibria was introduced to the capital, and such was the public misery, that the lot of the exile seemed more fortunate than that of the sovereign. Instead of applauding the success of his vassal, the Turkish sultan claimed the city as his own, and on the refusal of the Emperor John, Constantinople was more closely pressed by the calamities of war and famine. Against such an enemy prayers and resistance were alike unavailing, 
and the savage would have devoured his prey, if, in the fatal moment, he had not been overthrown by another savage stronger than himself. By the victory of Timur or Tamerlane, the fall of Constantinople was delayed about fifty years, and this important, though accidental, service may justly introduce the life and character of the Mughal conqueror. 67, Return, Cantamir, p. 5053. Of the Greeks, Ducas alone, c. 13, 15, acknowledges the Turkish caddy at Constantinople. Yet, even Ducas dissembles the mosque. 68, 